Oh, I still have that tab open. Oh, that's fun. Hello, really everyone. That. We're live. Sort of. Um, we are <laughs> we are smack dab in the middle Debatably. of some technical difficulties, but I didn't want to leave you all hanging. So you're going to enjoy us trying to fix everything wrong with the stream. <laughs> <laughs> We shut up just, early, too. However, <laughs> yep. however, we have been at this for half an hour. We did. At least you have. We've just been kind of just vibing here. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? I, I am doing everything I can to make sure our firewalls are strong enough so the RT mods won't, won't disturb our streaming this time. You're around. a good little robot. You say that, and yet I have done so little in terms of trying to protect uh, everything uh but... that, that's what makes you a bad robot hey, good i'm not a robot that's that's, that's <laughs> part that's of the thing that saves me robot. i think 250 uh how's everyone doing today everyone in chat i hope you're all doing well and not suffering any technical difficulty that is not the angle i need 300 yeah happy holidays everybody hope y'all had a great Great Christmas or whatever the hell you celebrate. <laughs> Crisis. <laughs> Chrysler. Merry Christmas. Great Marty Crimbo. Uh, A great Marty Crimbo. Um, all that jazz. I need to see right two hundred. Nope. Also, yeah, I don't think there's been any delay with my ride tuber this time around. So we fixed it, everybody. At least that problem's good and solved. Yeah. And I'm here this time. <laughs> yeah. I get a job. I get a big oh, yeah. part of the yeah, fun. Is, <laughs> we, we tried to get her from exactly. the last one, which was, um, uh, unfortunately just did not line up schedule wise. We did. Mm -hmm. All right. I just, it was too it last been minute. Really fun. I had a date night. I was watching the Barbie movie. <laughs> oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen that. Yet. Neither have I. I'm planning on doing so at some point. So we I have it is good. <laughs> for the people at home, we have just about everything fixed, except they can't hear the audio of what I'm streaming. Yep. Right. So Um question... has anyone here used cast before? <laughs> if if worse comes to worse, I would say just download yeah. voice meter banana and then get that quickly set up. Well, I was going to say, because worst comes to worst, I can just stream through Discord and we deal with that jank. Well, yeah, that that's worst come to worst come to worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay. Uh, I tried. I tried to help. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we're, we're, we yeah, are all I, I tried, horribly uh, incompetent. Because at first I thought... Well, I have... I, I did I my have best. I thought it was an output problem, but no. Nah. Yeah. Uh, cast T A S T chat. Key so, key I mean, A S T K A K A S T. Sorry, not key. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you got the Kingdom Hearts key brain key rot, play. Kaiser. This is what happens. Listen, this is what happens when you've been into that game since you were five years old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> share share window share. Oh. Uh, the bumblebee there we go all right but yeah k-a-s-t chat and you you guys if anyone knows because Girl, this, i wanted to be just like be. those heroes in the books uh, no one who fought use it often damn it hover is your volume no, up on your that. video yes i can hear it just fine mm -hmm. um you you have it on in a browser tab no i have it on browser uh, window i have it on mpv oh okay um, because I think it did say that in order for you to stream the audio, you had to either share your entire screen or you had to share a tab in the browser. So you can open it up in Google Drives uh, and have it in a tab there Ooh. and it might work. All right. Let me, let me, yeah, maybe let me try that. Where is my, uh, let me see. I see a lot of people I recognize. Welcome. Triton A. Morris. How are you doing? Uh, Zero Connect, good to see you again. Night Hunter, Periodic Pete, Dead Rex, be ready. This man, this guy in particular, 
He's responsible for all the funny freaking uh, drawings and memes from our stream the last time. Uh, yes, I remember Dederick. This, this guy Dederick's, does a really great job. He's he is a legend even now inside of uh, the, the 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 tundra. All right, large file transfer. Let's see if this works. Okay, uh, this is a lower quality than it probably should be. But you guys can see. Oh, it. Wow, it's I didn't know it's Ruby. Ruby. Ruby's already a lower quality than it <laughs> should <right>. be. <laughs> Blake. Well, Blake, I'm Yang. Ruby. Can you hear that? Oh, no. Yeah, I can't hear it. <laughs> nope. No. Wait. <sighs> All right. Let me, let me try a different approach. Maybe maybe I hit something wrong. Okay. Share. Share. Brave tab. Okay. That's where. Uh, well, <laughs> transfer. Share. All right. I will. Uh, I am excited. Quiet. Quiet. Here we go. His older sister. Yay! Yay! All right. <laughs> we have purchased. Let us do this. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Let me double check. Make sure every. Oh. 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 That is. That is weird. I am seeing the cursor on the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right. All right. Uh, you guys are vanishing again. Don't need that. Uh, do do do. Is it recording? Which screen is it recording now? I can't tell. <laughs> Um, do do any of us? It's the actually... same screen. It's the same screen. No, it's not the same. It, it, I think it is <laughs> recording my 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 uh, drive. So I'm just gonna have to work with oh, that. Okay. All right, give me a moment here. I can edit the filter so that everything looks nice and clean and looks nice and pretty. And then once we're done here, uh, five hundred. That is not. That is too much. Uh, sixty, seventy. Is the thing that we just none of us understand technology? <laughs> I, I think so. I know, when, no, it, it, I refuse. This is just technology is haunted. That's all this is. <laughs> when when we were getting set up, you invited I mean, me to sure, do this. Sure, if you treat us that way, <laughs> if you treat us that way, dog. <laughs> when when you like invited me to do this, it's like, and we'll get critter in here, and you can bounce around and open your mouth. And I was like, I don't understand this witchcraft. How do you get my screen on your computer? <laughs> okay, the upside is that actually went really smoothly. <laughs> yeah, that would that actually was not a problem. Everything else has been a problem. All right, so uh, here we go. So, hello everyone! Welcome to Breaking Down the Bees, which is probably going to be a multi-stream thing. I don't know how this is going to end up working in the long run, but we're at least trying to get through all of Volume 1 through 3, the first major arc of, of uh, Ruby. And what this is, this is what I mentioned on the last stream, where I sat down and compiled all of the scenes for Ruby involving... Uh, Yang, Blake, or potentially them thinking about each other. And I just turned it into one major supercut. As a result, I now have this long-ass file on my computer that is completely worthless <laughs> and devoid of any kind of merit. But it will help us in this circumstance to break down Ruby and hopefully not get us copyrighted. So what we're going to go through, we're going to go through and try and categorize yeah. every single scene that involves the bees and try to categorize it as, is it them bonding as friends? Is it them bonding as a group of friends? Is it them bonding romantically? Right. Is it them just standing there doing fucking nothing? Is it them actually interacting <laughs> during a fight in any meaningful way? Basically, we're going to try and pull out of this whether or not a given scene builds towards the, fin the, the the culmination of Bumblebee in Volume 9 or not. The fun and fact about this is I've already partially gone through this myself. I've up through like Volume 4 trying to categorize these scenes. And yet I've gotten paralyzed on a lot of them because I'm like, ah, you could argue one way or another. So that's why we have a whole panel of people here uh -huh. to argue whether or not <laughs> oh, yeah. whether or not these scenes can be considered building towards the bees or not. Funny thing it was when I made my video, well, while I was making mine anyways, I was planning on doing something really similar. Um, 
in terms of just showcasing, okay, how much time they exactly wasted. But I felt like, you know what, that was going to get too lost in the weeds. I feel like talking about how the writing just doesn't, isn't tenable in regards to that is good enough. But this is just a bo this is a bonus round for all you people at home. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to basically, I have to be very careful with this because I will get copyright. I tried uploading this for the record to YouTube to make this easier on all of us. It didn't work. I didn't expect it to work, but I knew it, it, it didn't work. Um, oh, Adam Zikiel, what about scenes that could be interpreted as either friend or shipping? Well, that's what we're here to determine. We're trying to basically yeah. determine, can it go both ways or is it just one way or another? Are we going to find you? Are we going to get you, get you, get you, get you? Are, I, we don't know. All right. That's how <laughs> <laughs> Also, hey, Floof, how's it going? No, I'm not getting you on here. This has already been scuffed enough. I wish I couldn't fight you, but we didn't plan for it. <laughs> also, whenever you're on like a stream, you're one of the quietest motherfuckers in the world. I would have invited you, but you don't talk. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> it, it would be fun to have Floof on, though. Uh, it would be. But one one thing that I that I do want to say to that like whether or not a scene would be considered romantic or friendship that is that is part of ultimately what makes good writing is um being able to properly convey that to an audience and not have it be uh interpretable oh, for the most part mm -hmm. like obviously to some degrees there is going to be a, a small percentage of people that will not get it no matter what that is that is something that is going to be inevitable not everybody is going to get it you you kind of want to aim for a rough like 90 percent though not 40 yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say like in yeah, my initial no page through it was a lot of potentially just team bonding but we'll see when we go through this so as you can see i've also i've hopefully i've helpfully put up stats here that indicate to you the amount of time spent on bumblebee through every single volume now admittedly volume one and volume two i got very persnickety on where i actually cut out like <laughs> inside scenes i cut out moments where they're not on screen or not talking to each other i got lazier laser later on so more generous but even then the numbers don't inspire much so, yeah. as you can see, Volume 1 had a total length yeah. of 1 hour, 52 minutes, and 50 seconds. Bumblebee time in that was 21 minutes and 52 seconds. That's honestly a lot longer than I would have expected. Especially given how little yeah. Yang is on screen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, I, I think I said the same thing in the previous stream. <laughs> hopefully, me lowering the volume here keeps it lower in the, the actual thing so we can watch the scene without risking copyright that girl you know yeah so here we go first meeting we can we i i, I kind of plan i don't necessarily want to watch the full scenes i just want to talk about them so this first initial meeting yeah. not really between she saw what happened this morning but blake and yang anything well now what are we dead. what are we what are we already feeling on this yeah. guys because got... i i when i because so. i had a Bumblebee video come out recently as well. Yes. And I, similar to Kaiser, I also thought about going yeah. through every single scene and talking about it, but I decided not to. Almost included a moment where I talked about this scene specifically because I wanted to point out that Yang doesn't like Blake the first time they meet each other. Because she tries talking to Blake yeah. and Blake kind of blows her off. And then the first thing she says is, This girl is a lost cause. So. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Uh, one minute. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, oh. Oh, it's yeah, it's I'm really funny too because uh, Zell in his video makes it seem like yeah. as the moment that that Yang lays eyes on Blake, she's immediately like, "Oh my God, that girl is so hot! I want to, I want to use Ruby as an excuse but, but, to go but, meet her, even though that Ruby mm -hmm. was the one that brought her up." I know. <laughs> but love first sight stories are bad, guys. Don't you know? That's heterosexual bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if I can scroll back. Nice night, don't you think? Yeah. It's lovely. We have Yang trying to communicate. That I will continue. Yeah. And this is, like, the one line that, like, as soon as you leave, I was so angry was cut from, from Ice Queendom. Because I love that exchange. Like, this almost as lovely as this book. Me which too. I will continue to read. 
as soon as you are gone. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> fucking Blake is cold. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, like, they have, it, it, Yang is like, oh, we'll give up on it. So, right. I, I would... This is also a hard thing that I wanted to discuss because like, it got difficult. Negative scenes between characters. How do you rank that in the development of a relationship? Do you count that as building towards the relationship or somehow counting against it? I would argue it counts towards building the relationship because sometimes, you know, you got to take yeah, two yeah. steps forward and sometimes you take a step back. But even if you are with someone and even if like you have a best friend and you have a fight you still grow as people once you reconcile from the fight. That's an important yeah. part about yeah. development. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, relationships in media, both like positive and like, um, sorry, both uh, romantic and otherwise, you know, a lot of them tend to start out with the characters uh, not all. initially, you know, liking each other. Yeah, and being initially at odds with one another, right? I mean, Goku and Vegeta is a classic example of that sort of thing. So having them initially be, like, shade towards each other doesn't really go against the idea of them potentially being a relationship. It's all, it all depends on, like, the grand scheme of things, right? If they initially clashed and it doesn't really change after that point, then, yeah, I guess there's nothing really being built there. But seeing as how they're the main, they're two of the four main characters, well, no, <laughs> you know how it is. So yeah. what are we feeling? Do we feel like this moment builds towards Bumblebee in any significant way? I would say yes, but in a friendship way. Yes. I, I would say yes on a technical level, uh, because like like everybody said before, this is technically building on a relationship with them, whether it is a positive interaction or a negative interaction. Because you can have a negative interaction that once you get over that hurdle, you can become, you have a stronger sense of that person. A relationship isn't built on only positive interactions. You will eventually have fights with your friends or with your lovers or whatever. But being able to get over that without breaking off the friendship or breaking off the relationship will inevitably make that relationship stronger. So having an initial interaction that is negative that we know will eventually become something more positive isn't necessarily a, a tick against them in in a sense of their interaction or or building up to a potential relationship later on. And it yeah, kind of feels so this more added, realistic this, this way. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's true. This I, is additive, which is along the lines of what they were probably going for with this anyways, if we go with the interpretation that they were getting into this shit from the very beginning. Also, Dederex already <laughs> coming in with the fucking... The unfortunate memes. thing is okay. I can't take the time to look at it because I'm sharing my oh, Discord. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just show it. With, I'll just show it to the others. I'll accidentally Thank show you, all the different Holy things uh, that I've been sharing. The Twilight we've been talking about, and that, <laughs> including that one specific program. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be so fun yeah. once you get that video sorted out. Oh god, I, 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 I can I can tease that a little bit. So, I I plan to cover some visual novels in the future, a whole collection of them, and a lot of them happen to use a particular program called koikatsu party to fuel the characters and poses and images and all that kind of thing so i downloaded it out of curiosity uh <laughs> and it's a wild <laughs> program oh yeah <laughs> uh it is not built for men oh i still haven't shown you that oh i need to do that oh oh yeah uh, my character with this weird me. deformed chest it's oh yeah, you were gonna you were gonna show me some of the screenshots when you woke up, and then you just never did. <laughs> uh, and I, despite Screens. having downloaded things, it just keeps freaking breaking uh, all the yep. all the mods that I have. Uh, or anyway, yes. Uh, so this scene, we'll count this as a a pause, a, a a a build towards Bumblebee. That's that's fair, I suppose. Uh, sure. It's a what in the world is going on over here? All right, I'm going to try and feather forward again, and hopefully it won't break this time. 
I just love volumes one through three. There's so much. I, and it broke. I do. <laughs> I do like that she tried to at least be polite and broke. say it's a pleasure to meet you. But by then, Yang and Ruby were already fighting and weren't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to make it very hard if I can't feather through. All right. All right. So, next scene that we can cover. I don't even. Have to, I don't even have to play it. It's mm-hmm. the legendary yeah. Ursa scene. That uh, Critter actually helpfully uh, redid in uh, Fixing Ruby yeah. Volume 1 with the yeah. black I re- instead. I really wanted to capture how pretty the yellow light is in the forest in this one scene for some reason. <laughs> it's obviously building towards the bees. You can tell that they, they use the yellow lighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I didn't get a fire. bumblebee scene. I got a white rose scene. Aww. Uh, they're all good. Just, <laughs> that mine. That's even better. Uh, who got it? It was... Was it Ollie that got the... Oh, Ladybug scene? Oh, or was it Isaiah? Some, um, so I'm trying to remember who I was I signed that, that that had uh, Blake and Ruby when they picked up with each other. Because we can, no matter who you end up shipping... We can all agree the poor ladybug shippers just got fucking nothing for eight years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get one conversation and then they get another conversation in volume eight that has absolutely nothing to do with jack shit. I remember being like yeah, viscerally yeah, yeah. shocked in volume six when they were in uh, the Bartleby estate with the apathy. And there's just this shot yes. where Blake talks directly to Ruby. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my, stop I, the press! I would have we loved got Ruby cold, just be like, "Wait, red, who are you?" Oh, black and red. <laughs> when did you get here? We know each other's names. Like, oh whoa, my what? god! <laughs> oh, uh, as um, you debated uh, buying Koikatsu Party, do not buy Koikatsu Party. The company that owns it went debunked, and it's now owned by a bunch of yakuza. Just pi- just, just torrent it. Just torrent it, man. <laughs> that that's that's how you have to get it. I learned that I learned that from a, a buddy in another server that was that is really big into making Koikatsu models. That's that's where he directed me. So are are the Yakuza based off out of uh, bootleg Japan? <laughs> did I say Yakuza? I meant Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> Sorry, I I was I was drinking at the same time. I must have slept. <laughs> The Yag- <laughs> yeah, I, I want an off-brand Yakuza now. I want, I want that. <laughs> they're, they're like the Yakuza you see in frickin' uh, Hina Matsuri. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or or they're like uh, Omekamon to Omegamon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, nobody, nobody but Raymond and I will get that reference, fortunately. So, yeah, we have the, uh, we have the smirk and, you know, the legendary... It all started with that damned smile. I, I do have. Do any of you read this scene as romantic? Because no. I never did. No. <laughs> I can see why people would want to. Like, obviously, the flirty smirk. And I'm you back. could try and read it that way. I I've always read it as just yeah. I, you did all that work. I had one stab. That's all I needed. Yeah. Hmm. Which makes sense, because why in the hell would Blake be flirting with somebody immediately? At, like, well, okay, so, all right. I don't I'm, care if it's, like, on that it's like a few months. I don't know. I, I, I was okay. going to say, maybe, like, maybe you can flirt with someone after you just meet them. It happens all the time. It's when people go to bars. Raymond. No, no, no. Not after you just meet them. Little. Not after you just meet them. I was talking about after um, everything involving, you know, Adam. That is actually mm. a good point. That is actually a very good point. That's why I was talking. Yeah, that right. If we are presuming <laughs> that Adam was an abusive ex, I mean, checkmate, Birdman. <laughs> the counterpoint to that is: what if this is her defense mechanism? Because some people, we, some people go the opposite direction the, and they go really flirty. Now we don't really see that for the record, but we don't see a which lot. Is, so, which is tr- yeah, I was about to say: is that even consistent? <laughs> Uh, we could argue it's a defense oh mechanism, God. but it's not one we ev- ever see. And like more, I think definitively, we would say Blake's defense mechanism is to run away no matter what. And she doesn't go towards yeah. people when she runs away. She just isolates herself. So 
Ooh. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. like character I'm traits a... established in volume one that aren't consistent for the rest of the show. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's ultimately the problem with bad writing is that you don't know if something is meant to be a a trait of a character or not because they aren't consistent. In order for something to be a character trait that is actually in the show, it needs to be consistent. If you are implying that something is supposed to be a character trait because that would make sense and that would be just you making up a headcanon. I see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Adam, um, right. Adam Damum, D Dandum678. Hope you all had a good Christmas. Thank you for fixing Ruby. You all made uh, made Ruby's story so much better for me. I'm I'm very happy you're enjoying it. Stay tuned. There's going to be much more in the future, though. It's going to be a bit of a cool period on the channel in terms of fixing Ruby. I'm, I'm focusing on some original works right now. Uh, look forward to some short stories coming in the future. Uh, those are going to be uh, very exciting for me. I've got almost all the cover art done. It's exciting. <laughs> um, all right. So we're we're Sweet. we're we're all pretty much in agreement here. This is this is not a bumblebee scene. This is just. This friendship scene at no. most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it makes sense to look at. Yeah, like inevitably. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Relic scene. I think this is it. Everything <laughs> leads to Bubblebee. No, Yang. This isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do no, it's love my mom's that expression. Garage. What do you think, Yang? <laughs> <laughs> so, I do love that expression, even though they, they have plastic doll bottle faces for a lot of yeah. the animation in the early volumes but this this actually is a really good expression in just how sarcastic she looks it's great they, they, <laughs> for all the jank of volumes one through three and they obviously got better as time went on they did a lot with the limitations they had like their facial expressions could be janky yeah. but when they hit they could hit really well um they do uh, it's see. just so few and far between, but, which Hart. makes sense at this point in time. Sora Hart uh, messaged us, As a gay man, I've never felt the need for gay rep. However, if there is, I would hope it's well-written and not poorly and rushed like Bumblebee is. Well, I'm sorry, man. Your gay Same. card's been revoked. Um, <laughs> you're no longer gay. <laughs> yeah, um, as far as certain people, is like, <laughs> you no longer, you no longer gay. Why aren't you, you, are, aren't you gay? Why aren't you gay? <laughs> 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 So yes, this scene where they are going to investigate the relic uh, sanctuary thing and go down this hill that I think is actually a cliff that you just cheated on. Um, Chess pieces? <laughs> God, the set is so pretty. Ah, oh, I love the emerald forest. <laughs> it looks so like because they use textures and everything. It's very unique. <laughs> of course, famous yeah. line. Yeah. Okay. That smile. That damn, oh, that damn smile. Yeah. <laughs> that damn, that's for me. That's that the moment. It's like smile. friendship achieved. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, their their friendship is complete now. That that, that <laughs> is the, that, well. It it's it's officially kickstarted. That's the moment that Blake is like, okay, maybe this won't be so. Bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. So I, I, I'm feeling a lot of friendship in in, yes. in these 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 scenes with them so far. That and it's actually, yep. their friendship is very important because Blake and Yang are like the perfect example of what the teams were supposed to do versus what we see Absolutely. like Ruby and Weiss going through. Because Blake and Yang, they meet up, immediately kick ass, become fast friends, and they get their relics. And that's what like the, so they're like the perfect example. Of course they're smiling at each other. That's what everyone was supposed to do in a theoretically perfect world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then right. we have basically everything goes to hell scene. What should we do? Blake, did you hear that? Yeah. What should we do? <laughs> 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 oh. Did your sister just fall? Say, I, I, I don't think we can glean anything from that other than Blake is observant yeah. and Yang is like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Spoil. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess something a little bit. Um. I watched a little bit ahead 
um, in order to re make <gasps> sure to refresh myself of like what what is even what are we even categorizing with these? And I'm I have a feeling that I want to categorize something like this when it's not necessarily a Blake and Yang scene. They're just in the steam together and they're just reacting to stuff. I want to call these in the same hive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would call them. I was going to have a little ticker up on screen, but um, it, obviously technical difficulties got in the way of me making that. Oh, yeah. Shit. Right. Uh oh. There's a lot. I so I, I, oh, no. my microphone had an issue earlier. It, it just everything's been scuffed today, and I had to connect it in a different way. And so I have this wire running right next to where my feet are when I'm like leaning in a certain way. So I almost just like ripped my computer, oh, my, my UBS cord out of my fucking computer. Oh no! <laughs> I had to oh, very carefully with that. Is there a way I can just? Uh no no don't do that don't do that. <laughs> All right. So we have Blake listening to things. I do. I I gotta say, I love that little touch with her ear flickering. That like, mm -hmm. I remember at the time, everyone. Before the reveal, there was actually people being like, "Oh, she's a faunus," and it's like, "What? Oh, we can tell because her 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 bow flickers." We don't we don't know if that's an animation thing. That's part of the problem. We didn't know if it was an animation glitch right. or something. Um, yeah, I remember when the black trailer came out. Yeah. People thought Blake's shadow clones was an animation error, and then later in volume two, when they changed the way it looks, they again thought it was another animation error. <laughs> well, that's how Aura was for the longest time. <laughs> That's how much copium there was. Ruby. When you don't... <laughs> the, the trademark of Ruby is, is it an animation error? <laughs> is it animation? Well, it's funny next that you to can, the you second still... tagline, which is no spoiler questions. But you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you can still play that game all the way up to volume nine. It's just that now you're in hard mode because they actually upped their game a bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I... you were saying about how their facial expressions aren't always great, especially in the early volumes, and that's very true. But I do say, right. they really make up for it with body language with early volume Ruby. Like, look at how, like, look at all the personality on the screen right here. That's mm. precious. <laughs> yeah. Nora yeah. especially has so much good body language. Just period, mm -hmm. like, throughout the entire yeah. show. Um, and I think it's because they, they recognize they can have a lot of fun with her um though i did notice that they did the exact same thing um in volume in volume seven you have that that legendary moment of uh penny bopping up and down like excited where they're like waiting right. for everyone to get their huntsman licenses mm -hmm. they reuse the exact same animation for nora when they're getting ready to to basically sabotage the party She's, oh. I I noticed that when I was scrolling through this, which I thought was very interesting, because like I didn't connect it, but they had the exact same like motion to them. I'm pretty sure it's the reused animation, which honestly, smart reuse. I think I could see both of them doing it. Yeah, uh, yeah. not not every instance of reused animation is meant to be lazy. It could be for a myriad of different reasons. But yeah, so we can right. We can up through this, call this what? Just them um, vibing. Existing in the plot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, in the same hive. In the same hive. <laughs> yeah, in the same hive. Well, There's a lot of shots like that in later volumes where Blake and Yang are just happen to be standing next to each other. Um, well, that's the question is, like, like, oh, consider these... this bonding. Like, because that, that's like a, a, a the, the biggest conceit that I've had with this is two characters existing in the mm -hmm. same place and even reacting to each other or not reacting to each other tells us something about them and their dynamic. So the fact that like Yang is off here yelling into the sky about reality being warped and bendable and Blake not paying attention to her at all tells us something about their dynamic. But like, does that contribute to Bumblebee is the question. I would, I think I guess it, I guess it'd be it depend on if you're looking at it in an ideal sense or in the actual sense because in an ideal sense if we had um, a, a lot more like direct interactions in the early volumes and everything else fell through you know finely tuned as it should be then yes I I think 
I think, um, what was it? In a just world, we would be saying the same thing. Because I could say the same thing for a lot of other shows and do this sort of thing. But with this, I guess I would probably say so. But, like, let's think about the scale of bonding. Because each there are levels of this shit. So I'm like, I don't know, point 0.1. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. I feel like it's more just meant to just further establish their personalities, regardless of who happens yeah. to be standing next to them. <laughs> so they basically they're doing yeah. the the first That's step of establishing character, but not taking that to the next step, which is having them bounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is really weird yes. when I think about it because it's a it's a com it's a company that built itself on comedy, on not just any kind of comedy, but yes! like <laughs> like. Like you, 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 it's like naturally you should be drawn towards having characters bounce and you don't. It's just, I mean, I've probably right. made that observation in the past. I'm sure everyone else has in the past. It's just like, it's one of those things that like, when you hear it again in your head, you're like, why? What? <laughs> uh, I will, I oh, will just say do, quickly. Oh, they do uh, do that. It's, a, it's all in Ruby Chibi. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, Ruby Chibi seems to me, as someone who has not watched it, to be everything that they probably should have done in Ruby proper, but just didn't get around to doing it. So instead, they they copped out and just put it as a sideshow instead. Um, but also, you say you say everybody, I I would not include myself in that because I haven't the only thing of Rooster Teeth's that I have seen is technically Genlock and Ruby and only both of them begrudgingly. Did you watch the second season of Genlock? Yes, it was terrible. Oh, oh. I, I didn't. Oh, oh, am I the only one who hasn't seen? Yes, no, I haven't. I haven't. Okay. Twilight's <laughs> the only one here that actually <laughs> watched it. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one that watched it, no, 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 and no. I, I watched, suffer I for it. One. I have PTSD every single day. It was so bad. <laughs> I, I've only seen the first season. That was super mid, and at least at the time, and now I think it's even worse. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Now, like, now. it was, it was perfectly... It was perfectly mid in the first season. And then in the second right. season, they try to do shit. And because they try to do shit, it just tanked. And I, and then the, the show became some transhumanist bullshit. <laughs> it yeah, tried to be Evangelion without understanding. Mr. Cheese's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without, be, without knowing how to be Evangelion. They pulled a Gazaraki, if anyone heard of that show. The, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, the... Um... God, that the first season of that was just so blind. I remember I was so excited because we actually managed to get, I'm not going to name any kind of sources, but the source that gave us, I think it was the finale to volume. No, no, it, it was just after volume five, I think. And they got us the early screening. They actually recorded the early screening and got us the early screening of episode one of Genlock. So we actually, oh. we recorded our reaction super fucking early compared to everyone else. It was great. And then just... Sweet. It, it, wait, it was great in terms of timing. It was terrible because Chinlock did not do any numbers <laughs> at all. <laughs> and, like, like that is, that is a show that I would only watch if it did numbers. <laughs> it was like, yeah. It was like Baby's oh, First yeah. Mech. Like the most basic ideas of a even. space fantasy. <laughs> it really was, but dude, even dude, then, people. even yeah. then, it really had nothing to do with the mechs. The mechs were kind of just yeah. there. Yeah. Well, okay, but ca counterpoint yeah. to that is like Escaflone was similar. Escaflone ultimately was not at all about Escaflone. Right. Like it really. Well, yeah, es Escaflone wasn't no. really a mech oriented show though it was a an isekai right. fantasy like a, a shoujo isekai fantasy show with slight steampunky mech elements to well, it that's what i also realize about the best yeah. mech shows the best mech shows aren't really about yeah. the mechs they're about you know it, it it literally is the rule of you have this poster child really cool element of your show that's fine but the yeah. the heart of the show is always going to be the characters, the story, the writing. Like that's going to be the all the things Rooster Teeth. Yeah, I, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I will say as a diehard Mecha fan, just in general, 
Um, that's that's not even just exclusive to the best mech shows. Like most mech shows, even ones that aren't really all that like super detailed in terms of plot and storytelling, they're almost never like just about the freaking mech. Like Overman King Gainer is a is a really decent show. Um, that is much more closer to a super robot than a real robot show, which is weird because it's made by the same guy who made Gundam. But it's still, it, it wasn't like, the mech isn't the focus. The mech is the focus when it needs to be in like the action scenes and stuff and whatever plot's relevance and everything else is about the characters. Like this has always been a thing. I'm yeah. curious why you think that's weird because I mean, like creators can go outside of their, I mean, like a good example of this is actually um, Anno. Um, he made I'm he made I mean literally. He made uh, uh um obviously he made Evangelion, but before that he made um yeah. Gunbuster, which is much more of a super mecha anime to me. Which is great. Um I, yeah. I suppose to uh sort of go off on my point about them not really focusing on the mechs. They they do and they don't, and I think that's the problem, is that there is so much focus. Yes on the mechs but then it doesn't ultimately mean anything so even though that they try to yeah. to make it so mm. much about the mechs it mm -hmm. ultimately isn't and and because they focus so much on the mechs there isn't really room for anything else and they try to yeah, but because they don't know how to balance these elements out they ended up failing on all fronts Shion code geos is mid get out of here yeah. leave you're not welcome <laughs> I love that show, and Shion, I will die I, on I that hill. I agree with you. I don't care. I what? agree with you. With I me, agree with you. Me or Shion? No, I... So, Celtic, here's the thing. <laughs> Man, it, <laughs> Kaiser, it's been wonderful having you on. Get the fuck out. No, <laughs> Wait, let me explain myself. No, I not, have not watched Koki. Be, it, it, it is on the list for us to watch. To, my opinions... My opinions on it might change if I rewatch it because I haven't seen it in over like ten years. So it, it's been a while for me too. I I I I need to do a rewatch of it too. I I just remember I I love a lot about it. Um, Jack don't uh watch Jack, Jack doubt uh tried to watch the hour plus video on Bumblebee couldn't BB just makes me uh, scrolled out of the way unreasonably disappointed. Yeah, no, it makes you reasonably disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, I I will say, uh, at Eka Seven, best mech. Don't don't argue with me. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, that that is bold I, considering no, you have not like seen Ava. Never but <laughs> and not even I consider Ava I mean, the best. That, but I'm just saying, like, like that's a bold proclamation. <laughs> Sounds like somebody who's never heard of Get a Robo before. Uh, That's all I'm gonna say. Of course, <laughs> we all know the superior mech is, of course, Pacific Rim. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking hate Pacific. Like, I I used to <laughs> like Pacific Rim. I have very much soured on that 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 series. Mm. Um, uh, we we will also eventually get to Eric Seven because it's on the list. Eventually, I don't know when. I don't know when we're gonna continue our anime watches. All right, here we go. Uh, let's actually continue this video. Triton, I love you. Yeah. We're only four minutes in to an hour and a half long video. Yeah. In true Ruby fashion, watching yes. Ruby just makes you get derailed and talking about other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's going to fall. She'll be fine. She's falling. Yeah, there, there they are just existing in the same yeah. scene. Not even next to yeah. each other. They're actually broken up by the real, like developed couple in this and they're not even like the most well-developed couple they're still a bad couple they're the least developed characters in the show no shh, shh, shh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> don't you dare <laughs> they're they're the no, least no, developed no, characters no, no, in the show <laughs> but they are still the most developed couple in the show what yeah, does that fucking most... say yeah yeah what does that say when they are the least developed characters but they have the most developed relationship Maybe Rudy yeah. Caesar is trying too hard with Flick and Yang then. Uh. <laughs> Y'all say, trying to argue scenes like this, I love everyone at their stock still poses in that moment. Yeah. But trying to look at scenes like this yeah. and argue, is this building Yang and Blake's relationship? Well, it's like, is this building 
Blake and Nora's relationship because it's basically it's just them standing near each other. <laughs> but you can count it as them building a group friendship. Like that's like mm-hmm. where I got got like hooked up on a lot of this. Like okay, it's group friendship building, I guess, which might contribute towards them. But like I, I don't know, they're not really interacting in these scenes. So there's yeah. no like what's the bounce there? Is there anything worth value? L- reminder i literally just went through in every single scene that blake and yang are in they're just th- together they're here yeah um how long did it take you to edit this together not too terribly long i did this in between fixing ruby work while i was waiting for artists to get done um mm, okay <laughs> so i wasn't really doing anything at the time uh anton anton de vono An- anton de vono bees Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. I'm going also, to... he was he was uh, slightly going after us as artists, saying, like, it took s- such a long time for us to get our work in that he had time to work on this video. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is not the slight that you that you think it is. But uh, no, it did. I, 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 I honestly, I just get antsy and I want to try and do things. Yeah, I get paralyzed. And somehow this just like worked like like oh i I know yeah i I hate it i hate having my brain i hate my brain i I know i know i i I just have to tease you sometimes though (laughs) if anyone if anyone has a spare brain please donate to the celtic funds give me your brain uh donate to the to the celtic is always dumb foundation (laughs) (laughs) it's always always right down foundation (laughs) What do we think of this scene? See, I like this one because Blake is the only one out of all of those kids that actually stopped and realized Yang was like different. Well, friendship. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, how do we qualify? Is this different or is this different with quotes around it? Uh, it was different as in she's not doing what everyone else is doing which is running <laughs> I, I mean usually when somebody is stopped in the middle of a crowd is... of running people then you tend to take notice yeah. uh, also like yeah. typically when they're running is, for a good reason suicidal. when they're running for a good reason like when there are, yeah. there are two very deadly monsters coming close to them <laughs> <laughs> and someone stops to like go like ah. Oh. I'm so proud of my little sister. You'd be kind of like, are you fucking run? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I'm going to be left without a partner at the end of this. Yeah. So, so building towards the bees. Yeah, you think we got, we got a plus towards the bees here. Slight. Yeah, I, I would say like a point one. two. A plus one. Yeah. Plus, yeah. If plus we're doing point, point two. Yeah. Point like two. If they were plus in two, harvest. Two. If they were characters in Harvest Moon, they would have a slightly higher friendship meter with each other than they would yeah, have with all yeah. the other characters. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, story, story of seasons now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that, that would be like me going to, to I don't know, Rick and giving him some eggs or, or going to Grey and giving him a branch <laughs> as opposed to a scene where I'm giving him like popcorn I, I think it's I think it's popcorn that he likes, or or no baked baked corn. That's that that was like his favorite food. <laughs> and now we get the legendary, uh, Nevermore and Death Stalker fights, which I don't know how many. I guess like these don't nothing's happening here, um, because like obviously they get separated and then they then they get back together. Then they, they that's basically what happens during that entire scene. They get separated, now they're back together and there is um a fun thing about this moment that I remember from the writer director commentary for volume one that Miles and Carrie were pointing out that Blake specifically goes to Yang to tell her that it's too tough when she's coming to report because she wouldn't consider Ruby or Weiss teammates yet, technically even though they are fighting the same monster, but she knows she's partnered with Yang because they met first. Oh, that's not what I need to select. Where, where, where is the freaking cast? There, there's cast. 
Uh, is cast also, frozen for you guys? Um, no, no, not for us. I think it's probably frozen in the stream. Oh, there we go. Now it updated. Weird. I don't know why that happened. Um, but you're right. She she goes to Yang. But is that you know, what is the reason she goes to Yang? Yeah, because they're partners, and That's she it. knows they're partners. They don't know yeah. they're going to be Team Ruby yet. She doesn't has no need to go to Ruby Rose and tell her about this big bird, but she will go to her partner to tell right. them about the big bird. <laughs> right. Uh, by the way, especially there's a big bird. since it's Yang is looks. shown to be very, pretty reckless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Z uh, Zelke, he was the one that told me that the screen isn't playing for us. Is that what was supposed to be happen? It's hard to keep up with your conversation because I don't know what scene you are talking about. It, uh, if it's about copyright, it's fine. Um, I am trying to avoid copyright, so that's probably why there's like a lot of start stop stuff going on. Um, I'm trying to be very careful with this. Uh, I think because it's shrunk and because I have this double layering thing going on, I we might be safe, but I can never be sure. Um, I I can see because I'm watching the stream, so I can look at the live chat. I can see that we're looking at. Yang and Blake's behinds with the bird in the background. And then there's also Weiss. Good, because it was stuck on the Death Stalker for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. But we are also talking. Yeah. <laughs> and um, now there's an advertisement. <laughs> two cakes and a pancake. I was going to say, the... the oh, two, oh, man, I made Belgian waffles. I could go make some more. Um, <laughs> I made an overly stuffed omelet today. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm I'm hungry. I've I've eaten like half a croissant. I I should have eaten something more before I started streaming. Damn, dude. you should have. What is wrong with you? Eat. Yeah, what? Jeez, what Jeez. put food in your mouth. Hey, God, man, hey, look, I wake up. I woke up at noon, guys. All right, I I don't I don't really eat till like like. I mean, that's early hours. for you. <laughs> Actually, I've been waking up at eleven thirty. I just I, I've been in a bad habit because the last week has been just weird. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so. I, I don't like part of this scene because, like, Blake being like, it's tougher than it looks. It's like, it's a giant fucking bird of death. <laughs> it literally <laughs> fired its quills down at us like freaking ballistic missiles. What? What? Of course it's tough. What? A classic Miles and Carrie move. Yes. Of, we need dialogue in this scene. You don't. <laughs> they no, you, don't you need really it. don't. <laughs> part, of, part of bad you writing just show is. Them hitting it. Yeah, part of bad writing Go is ahead, thinking that you need dialogue for every single moment instead of just letting the scene speak for itself. That's that's one of the benefits right. of having a, a visual, visual medium. medium like, yeah. yeah, is that you can yeah, allow already... facial expressions or or the scene itself to speak volumes to the audience. You don't need dialogue in some of the scenes. Yeah, we already see beforehand how relatively capable the characters are with taking down normal grim or in blake's case in the uh black trailer uh fucking robots and shit we can just <laughs> see visually from her trying to attack the burb uh you know during this whole scene here that yeah it is tougher than it looks now maybe if they did they that may she said in a way that would give us a bit more insight into how it works that might change things a little bit but as is it's just unnecessary yeah. Mm. I, also, I, yes, zero. I agree. Episode twenty one of Digimon O one. I I really would have loved Yang to be like, no shit. <laughs> to give her that same sassy yeah, look exactly. like gave her when she was like, Do you think this is it? <laughs> hey, that would have gone full circle, yeah. And then they just uh, get red like roses part two starts playing. And boom. team building. Yeah, team building, which is fine. I mean, it goes towards their friendship, so I guess. Yeah. Right. I. It's sort of like a modifier, yep. you know. Guy keep talking over it because we don't want to. Uh, Yang committing suicide. Um, oh, we got another super chat. <laughs> yeah. Told you she was suicide. Told you Blake thought she was uh, suicide. <laughs> Philip Schwartz, not Bumblebee related. Judgmental. I want more fudgemental bitter. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I did. Fudgemental bitter is hard. Is that, a, is that a meme from your computer? 
Is that me from your community? Or what? <laughs> it's um, the fudge metal bitter is like my evil dark persona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and okay. I I did it once for an April Fool's joke, and it's like the point was that I was like overly mean and negative, and it's like I don't want to be mean and negative. <laughs> <laughs> She she is just a soft little am- hamster animal thing. That's she can't, can't she can't be a fudgemental bitter as long as much as we love it. <laughs> if you give me some, you know, when we're not talking about now, now unless we have uh, some people on Tumblr talking shit about her, then she gets real bitter real fast. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're just so pissy. <laughs> they're just yeah. so mean. <laughs> as they hide in tumblr where no one can bother them with their blogs like at like two views or whatever <laughs> yeah i hear the fighting but i'm still on the shot with blake and yang's backs you know i wonder if i can oh god freaking technical difficulties man uh oh yeah that is true weird okay uh properties let's Fudge try and get return. large file transfer let's try this done that hopefully fix things on my end just uh lower the quality to like um 140p <laughs> i actually i can't like i can only go 360 yeah. what <laughs> yeah it's not as diverse as youtube Oh. Back when I had dial-up, that was the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> air, 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 air. Ah. Back in my day. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Back yeah. in my day. Them working as a team, basically, we're all in yep. agreement. This is fine. Even yeah, though... Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. They don't really do much in this scene, ultimately. They don't. Like, okay. It's so lame that they... We're gonna come up with a big old team attack to beat the bird. Except Blake and Yang Actually. won't really do anything. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, Yang, Yang they're disorients the it and gets I it remember. on the wall, and then Blake provides the ribbon. Blake is there for the ribbon. Although Fat Man did point yeah. out that, like, wh- why me. didn't Weiss just summon a glyph and launch Ruby that way? Yeah. Yeah. Also, why did if Weiss because... was close enough? to freeze its tail in place why not like freeze more of its body in place <laughs> yeah like the wings mm-hmm. yeah just but then we wouldn't the wings, be able to easier. get it to slide up the cliff for this big also that final wasn't in the shot budget. yeah so, also that wasn't in the budget <laughs> it, it, yeah <laughs> it would be it would be too much uh, uh it would be too out of their budget to freeze the wings, cut them off, and then have the rest of the bird slide up the cliff to to get decapitated. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, although I, this kind of reminds me. That, oh, sorry. Well, I love the idea they have a budget for ice, and you just see a bunch of guys like carrying coolers into the. Yeah. Ice and <laughs> <room. laughs> like, just like they're just like opening the top of their computers and pouring them in. Like, Yeah, um, this reminds me of that, like, one part in Zell's video, I think he mentioned that, like, oh, this is the part where where Yang and, and, and Blake's uh, uh, combination attack comes in full swing when they work together to beat them nevermore. And it's like, that they're holding okay, a string. number one, this was Ruby. Yeah, number one, they're holding a string. And number two, this is Ruby's plan. What coordination is there with this? Like, they, they followed about? orders. That was, yeah. that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! They, they yeah. would have been they the, would have the been convicted. Where, the thing they say is a bad thing suddenly in volume seven. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're, they 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 can follow orders. They would have been convicted at the uh, the Nuremberg trials. Um, oh yes, yeah. there we go. Yep. See, this is the kind of useless shots I get because I I'm so secular to my own rules. But yeah, they're technically together in this shot. Yeah, technically <laughs> way over technically. there. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> look, yeah, look at Blake not looking at at Yang at all, and and, and Yang attention. looking at Weiss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Freezer Burn confirmed. Isn't this great, guys? <laughs> I was gonna say Freezer Burn fans—they have possibly the healthier option. They they they're taking the the arguably yeah. healthier option with the, the yeah, arguably, arguably. Although I still hold that White Rose is just like. 
it's the ship that is the least toxic <laughs> of all the options and just it's like oh no we're we're kind of like soft decanonizing any possibility of that with our interactions with the character like fuck you rooster teeth should have gone I... in on them my <laughs> ships for fractured fairy tales are better than all of them. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> At least in you, canon, you Ruby. Told, you told yes. me. Yeah. Compared to canon, Ruby, absolutely. Okay. See, their pictures are next to each other. That's how you can tell they're in the <laughs> <laughs> It's not even in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> the four of you retrieve the white knight pieces. Yep, just standing around, this just standing, just standing, just standing, Ruby. standing. Led by Ruby Rose. I, you know, I, I, it's only now that I realize what they were trying to fucking do with that shot, where like they were trying to have Weiss be expectant, but they didn't do the facial rig. They didn't do the facial expression enough to show that she was expecting to be co chosen as leader. Yeah, also, they, they have doll faces. Also, the <laughs> fact that Weiss expected to be leader when Ruby was named at very first in line and every single person before them had that name. Like, <laughs> yeah, and they see the team Ruby on the screen in front of them next to Osman. <laughs> right. Like, I want to see the, the, the team that, like, the leader was, like, the last person on the name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yep. also, team Coffee, Ryan led Carson by Yatsuhashi really Daishi. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ryan Carson in chat made a funny joke. Zell, even as Yang is looking away from Blake, she's still think uh, thinking about her passionately, not being <laughs> able to take her mind off of her body. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things. Like, you could do that with anything, and so many people do that with Blake and Yang. It, <laughs> it's it like really is. Clearly, it, it's, yeah, it, it's literally, it's literally, <laughs> it's literally the shipping meme with anime that most people make fun of, where it's all like, oh my god, they said hi to each other one time, they're married. Yeah, <laughs> that's, no. that's what I kept mentioning in, in our last stream, is the shipper goggles. This is literally, uh, they looked at each other once, they are so in love. <laughs> the the oh. I, okay so 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 hot take look we all make jokes about the bella booty but can we admit yeah. that blake is the fucking flattest of asses among all of team ruby <laughs> like i think maybe weiss gives her a run for her money i was gonna but like yeah all of the care all of all, all four of them blake has the one of if not the flattest ass of the entire crew well, we can't really see I was Ruby's say, ass because I, I not only is it world... hidden by his skirt, but we got the hood there too. True. Mm -hmm. yeah, Why is she also too, good? Like I was about to say. Wait, no. The whole thing is she wears pajama pants. Massive cope since the beginning. We can determine it because oh, she true. wears pajama pants in certain scenes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, are we really going the, the, to? The secret is <laughs> Weiss is the one with the fattest of asses, but she just always wears things that droop over it, so we can never tell. Uh, right. Raymond's getting cancelled he's talking about Ruby <laughs> well, maybe actually, <laughs> actually actually here's the funny part here's the funny part you know how Weiss's chest gets bigger with each volume maybe at at the same time her ass gets flatter each volume huh Have you thought of that? <laughs> oh. I can see oh. the tumblr blogs now that part in the in the podcast when they just started talking about Weiss's ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, oh, they're gonna get this far. It's Phoenix trying to get on the list. Far. They never do. They, yeah, they never do. True. They'll just look at the thumbnail. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Oh, God, that hug is so ugly. <laughs> and then they're immediately oh, standing that way next to each other. <laughs> also, I'm surprised because... For some reason, every time the characters hug, they always have to, like, touch the back of each other's heads. It's yeah. so weird. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like, and I understand when you mash your polygons together, they look weird. But it's like, do you guys not look at people hugging? No, no, here's the thing. I think that's mocap. I'm pretty sure that's mocap. Who? Who? <laughs> because, but, no, go... What? 
<laughs> Who What's hosts wrong like with that? that? <laughs> who hosts like that? Seriously. Yeah, who who goes oh, in for a hug I, and then like touches the back of their the other person's head? If you look it's at the, weird. If you, oh, the thing is, I don't think that was like into I, I, I part of its mocap, definitely. Like a, a good chunk of it. That might have been either a, an attempted correction or or maybe it's a jank part of their mocap system because their mocap system, I don't think was very refined at this point. It was very, very basic. Um, oh, you know what it probably is? Because Yang's model is always like way taller than Ruby's model. And it's yes. usually Yang. Yang is usually involved and she's always so much taller, but they can't like have people stretch because then their clothes won't look right. So instead they just kind of like right. mash their arms around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, I'm I'm talking also, about like every instance that a character Generous. has hugged ever. So like even in the later volumes, they they touch heads like that too. It's mm -hmm. weird. Also, here's a, another piece of art made by Dead. Check the Birdman. Oh God, so <laughs> checkmate, <cute>. Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. All right, so here we are. The the legendary decorating Absolute scene. Maniac. Oh, I love that. That's so oh, cute. Here we go. So, yeah, this was a fun scene. I love volume one. So <laughs> they're obviously paying attention to each other. Uh, I do like that Fat Man complained that there was an opportunity there to put like something in the case to indicate she's a faunus, but like hide it in like a com comedic way. But they didn't do that. Also, I just realized now Yang has a tiny version of Pura Shield. Why? Huh. Because they literally just took random things and just shrunk it down for her to hold. <laughs> Yang Yang has like a one fiftieth scale model of Pura from one of her tournament wins. She's like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> she has, but she doesn't recognize Pura at all. Like <laughs> <laughs> which is that would have been a cool which element. Is weird for how John is singled out. It would. God, I miss Ruby's voice being this low. It's it's so squeaky, but yeah. like like this is the highest it ever yeah. got. The the Ruby Twitter posted a clip from uh, their Justice League Part Two movie, whatever, to Twitter oh my today. God. I hate it watching that. I hate just, watching that. And just listening to Ruby say the name Batman, I just I I'm just like I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> the um, I so what what are we feeling about this scene? Um, like the dynamic that we're we're establishing friendship here. building. F friendship building. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty yeah. solid. Yep. Uh, more yeah, friendship just slash team building. I yes. Guess. Sort of thing. I know when I hang up a poster, I turn around and cross oh, my, my arms, arms like a cool kid. <laughs> Hell yeah. God, do you see how Let's awkward that, that, that is mocap? We that, that, that rings to me of really awkward mocap <laughs> that like the arm like reaching down the put. I think someone did this standing up. Because I remember yeah. hearing about that in volume two where they're laying down. And I, I think I told Twilight this where they're laying down and they're talking around the campfire. The way they had to yeah. do that was with their backs against a wall standing up yeah it's so cool <laughs> it, 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 well it, it, actually if you really look at it it looks super fucking awkward it uh, does. for what for, for what they needed to do <laughs> yeah like I, I understand it like i don't i don't yeah. fault them for the ingenuity of them trying to figure out how to do these things so you can't lie down in their suits apparently but like now it's making me think about some of these other scenes and why they look so janky is like someone is awkwardly trying to fill a shelf at waist level but they're trying to m mimic that while not and so like they don't have like the proper bend in anything it's weird i honestly i wish they used mocap way more in the recent volumes because they feel very like yes. again yes. your poses doll-esque <laughs> especially in the comedy scenes where things are like even when they try and make them super expressive uh they come off way more stiff which is a huge contributing factor as to how they just aren't as funny as the earlier volumes and can we talk mm -hmm. just can we get somehow some getting worse at comedic timing if that was possible <laughs> can we, it just it just hit me because like me people complain about it but in volume one we had what three different outfits for all the characters yeah yeah 
Yeah. It's like we did we we do not get that anymore. Like I think the closest we got was no. we got like a, a sleep uniform that was uniform or like something like that in volume seven for them when yeah, they were Atlas. I remember being super disappointed that they didn't take off their like warm layers in volume nine. So just walk around the island with their jackets on and okay. everything. Okay, in fairness, <laughs> their outfits would look fucking atrocious. Atrocious? 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 atrocious. <laughs> I have recently discovered there are certain words that I just cannot say. Um, but no, it, it would have looked fucking awful. If They already are awful. Oh yeah, but like even outfits. more so. <laughs> like if they had taken off the upper layers, everyone would yeah. have f- figured out that Blake's suit literally has no way she can pee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her hair just strips naked every time that she needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, either that or she says a built in diaper. Like, there, there's, there, those are two options, people. She has a catheter. <laughs> oh, a catheter! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> also, what was Ruby trying to do here? I have yeah, no I, idea. It's like set up as if she's hanging up the curtains or something, but they're clearly already hung up. So. <laughs> yeah, I got no idea. How did you guys manage this? That's not even <laughs> funny. I mean, I kind of like it because it's like you never yeah, see the beds throughout all of it. So it's like. How do you guys have so many fucking books already, too? Like I get Blake is a is a big reader and Weiss is fucking rich, but Weiss, yeah. You guys should maybe have like two bookshelves, maybe three. That's all textbooks. <laughs> Jesus and when Christ, you're when the, you're in school, what is like mandatory one? textbooks you have to get from the bookstore. <laughs> Those look like the books that I made in my first term at school. It looks like they wanted something on the walls but rather than do something interesting or creative because they blew all their creativity budget on that one poster and that one painting yeah. <laughs> they're just like i oh, just books it's more friendship building they do bunk beds Objective complete. <laughs> I, I i still get a kick out of this um also, there is. <laughs> why was there no space? I still do not to this day understand why there was no space. They could have just laid everything out. Is that middle bookcase? Is that is that really it? Is that the only problem? Possible. I guess, uh, for the sake of comedy, <laughs> quote unquote comedy. <laughs> comedy show. No. This is the comedy. It's comedy. All right. So yeah. That's com- this is really just either building friendship with the team or them just existing in the same place or running awkwardly out the door from the mocap. Oh, God. Oh, 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 the animations. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's no, so it's so hard shit. to only focus on Bumblebee. That is clearly and... <laughs> the same running animation for all of them. It's yeah. like oh, yeah. when you look at like <laughs> ugly shots of Yandere Simulator and all the characters just have the <laughs> same horrible animations. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if, Koi, so if Koikatsu was made for the beginning of Yandere Simulator. I would not be surprised. Uh, or, maybe. Or not made for, but like used in the creation of it. Mm. Some spin off thing. <laughs> Who knows? That's uh. Oh God! What was with that? And her, <laughs> Glenn has a robot. They <laughs> time act like is robots. Six fifteen. Also, don't you have a class to teach? What are you doing sitting there? <laughs> uh, she, she's an assist, She's the assistant dean. Not, this school doesn't exist outside of the. Mm, exact rooms that the main characters are in at that given time got <laughs> another thing i noticed yeah, when i first started sure. watching these scenes is no one has notebooks they're just writing on fucking loose leaf wait <laughs> wait yeah. hey, sure. look the girls are in their uniforms and not their school uniforms <laughs> yeah also why who who is that one guy up in the corner there that oh, that has to be black? a reference to something yeah. But I don't Why know what isn't he blacked to. out? Who is he? <laughs> what well, it's because Why is he so you? important to get a model? <laughs> I don't know if we ever get an answer. Who the fuck is that? Maybe he was Yeah. 
Maybe, he does maybe, have uh, like maybe they were playing on having him. Also, look maybe at they were playing on having him be like one of one of the people in Cinder's crew, but they I, forgot about. Also, him. Also, you can tell that Blake and Yang are already so close because Blake isn't taking any notes. She she's lean, she's totally like Ooh. having Yang take all the notes. <laughs> Why the fuck don't you have a piece of paper? Like, all right, I get it. The paper is weird already, but like you should have one. She was too poor on the run from the White Fang, couldn't afford paper. <laughs> and you can you can tell you can tell that they're actually going to get into like a secret threesome because uh Yang, Weiss, and Blake are sitting so close together and Weiss is sitting so far away from Ruby because she can't stand her. Oh mm. no, 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 you know, this is a clearly a oh, reference right. to I mean, the last going... supper with Judas and Jesus, all right? So you can tell it. <laughs> 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 if we're going by if we're going by if we're going by Zell's metric here, okay, and characters looking at each other is enough for them to yeah, we gotta, for one another then. You we know, gotta overanalyze we can, it like we can we can Yeah, we gotta we overanalyze go it like that one that, that one Jurassic Park uh YouTube video that I saw where they said that uh the the woman was becoming more masculine because she took off her pink outer shirt and there was a blue tank top underneath. So therefore, ooh. she <laughs> does. Ooh, wow! <laughs> I had never heard of this. Freak. That's Pe funny. <laughs> People trying to. I, I remember like that. Apparently, that gag got cut down a lot. Cause, like the entire gag is that she was ill prepared, oh, and God. they cut mm -hmm. down a lot of like. A lot of scenes of her like falling over in the mud, um, mm. where she just basically, uh. Uh, it uh, God, Jurassic World was just so. No, no, no! Jurassic Park. Oh, was what that was analyzing the the the, uh, the woman character. I'm forgetting her L, name. I think her name is Ellie. Yeah, e Ellie L is something. Um. Yeah, she she had a pink L jacket or shirt on at first, and then at some point it got taken off. And there was a blue tank top underneath. So the person was saying that her femininity was being stripped away. And now she is becoming a masculine character <laughs> because she has a blue shirt now. That, <laughs> As we know, fucking... it's impossible for women to wear blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staring at Takara right now. Staring at Kritter. I'm all that blue. Staring at Kaiser. I have a little oh, bit wait. of green on my <laughs> outfit, and that's it. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I am cool. such a masculine character. <laughs> oh. Well, you with the way you were going off the last stream over the fairy tale illusions, you did. You, know, you didn't have some of that masculine energy, that testosterone. <laughs> Oh, don't get me! Please don't get me started on fairy tales. I will go off. <laughs> are we, are we, did I get the 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 port wink in here? I might have. Maybe the creepy. I wink. Wink. Oh, I had so many comments, so many weird comments on my Bumblebee video. It's like that's not that's not romantic. That's not a romantic gesture. And I'm like, I. <laughs> Yeah, there, there I, it is. I mean, it can be, uh, but the if if you have a character that just winks at a lot of people willy nilly, then you can't say that that is necessarily a romantic gesture when they're just doing it to everybody. It's basically like their handshake. I no, I I the way I see it is I I it's kind of a havesy. Port is very clearly uh he's a social peacock. The man likes to just flaunt himself wherever he goes he's so so self-absorbed so the idea that he's like like winking at this young attractive bombshell of a girl which you know yang is like the idea that he's trying to be like flirtatious with that it's him trying to build him it's trying to him fluff himself up it's like yes the he's ladies talking, love yeah. me he's just peacocking yeah. <laughs> like it it's it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's weird. I don't think he actually meant anything by it, but at the same time, it's just like, dude, get the fuck over to yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I will say that this is definitely a creepy moment. When I, when I was talking about like, uh, winking just in general, I was, I, I wasn't thinking of like port specifically. I was also thinking of Yang. I was also thinking mm -hmm. of just 
characters in general who just wink a lot. Like, mm-hmm. it depends. It's very situational to that character and their personality and the situations in which they wink. Also, I will say I appreciate the fact that, like, Yang is very... The joke is that Yang is clearly creeped out by it. Like, it's that's... It, evidently yeah. that it makes her uncomfortable that this, this guy who is clearly, like, t- five times her age is like, yes... Yeah. So like, like she rolls her eyes and she looks off to the side. Oh, although there was a little bit of a, a weird upturn to her lip. I don't know what that was. Like, I, I don't want to read too much deeper into that. But yeah. like, the, I think, like, maybe, maybe I she think was they were like trying to do the anime thing. I think they were trying to do the anime thing with the mouth there, where like you know how it is when some characters are weirded out or embarrassed by something. They do like the, you know, the sort of like awkward laugh like hey, 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 hey. yeah yeah something like that <laughs> where it's I think just that's what they were trying to do uh, clearly... i love dead or X's, uh upgrade to fudgmental bitter it's perfect <laughs> yeah, i need to see this damn it uh... oh god i love it that is so cute <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, keep it up. Mustache and everything. (laughs) Is that what? She stole Watts' mustache. Oh no! (laughs) I'm the villain now. Oh my god! Uh, Another professional penguin says bonsai. Anyway, I'll have to watch the vod uh, acted work. I I assume at work. Um, Good luck with the rest of your stream. Thank you, another professional. Excellent. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Um, Oh, that was that was eight eight bucks Australian. Yeah, stay safe, man. Um, but yeah, so, uh, clearly Yang is heads over heels for port and that's the true OTP of this. <laughs> oh, God, also, I jiggle. love Philip Schwartz's comment in chat. I, Special harassment is not a surprise from our team. <laughs> I, I fucking hate the, the jiggle that they had in, in B1 and B2. Like, yes, port's belly jiggle, but also Yang's boob jiggle. Mm-hmm. Also, Blake has some significant boob jiggle. I, I've I've realized, like you. Oh, really? Yeah. There, there are certain scenes where I'm like, wait, her, what the fuck? And I actually had to, like double take it. Oh, her boobs are moving. Wow. Uh, it's like they couldn't, they couldn't animate the hug properly, or oh, have yeah, Ruby yeah. eat cookies. But we gotta make sure the boobs are moving. Okay, but let's yeah. also be clear: they don't animate yeah, are, the boobs we are, properly we are, we are either. <laughs> double canceled now. No. Like, like they, they're not even. They're not even on the level of like freaking was it dead or alive, like dead or yeah. al- dead or alive. Even though it's not realistic, they have boob jiggle down to a goddamn science. <laughs> like they they, they 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 literally spent months perfecting how that system works. There is an art to it. Ruby <laughs> J does not hit this art at all. Uh, the the weird thing is is that I I see a lot of people like defending it for some reason. Even though that we know, like, RT's really? history and, oh. What? Oh, I just. What? You all heard that too, oh. right? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what did you hear? What happened? Wait, her what? That, that was oh, yeah, some, that was some really digital did. shit going on there. Somebody's microphone or something. Headphones. Anyway. I, I, uh, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it was only it was only us. It was only on a wavelength that that only women can hear, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I I fa- I just find it really weird that despite the fact that we know all the history and stuff and all the BS and RT and stuff, that people still defend the the boob physics of v1 and v2 is like not that big of a deal <laughs> i here's the thing i actually wouldn't Even mind though they literally said i, I was gonna say i oh, wouldn't God. mind if the show had more sexualized elements i actually was fine with that because like with someone like yang her flaunting her beauty and i actually i liked critter's analysis of glinda in fact i think glinda's a very sexy woman but you're right the way she's handled in the show is very mature like i i don't mind if it's handled well it's the yeah. fact that they came out and they're being right. like, we're above things like panty shots. Meanwhile, you have Yang's boobs like yeah. jiggling mm-hmm. completely as a mono boob. It's like, what? <laughs> Especially right. once you get to the you, later you volumes. Know you're... <laughs> and they don't have right. the boob physics anymore. It's like, oh, so you just 
okay. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. And they, and they could have gone, then they could have gone the Chad route, like what Jujutsu Kaisen does, where they have little to no fan service whatsoever, but they still make the characters incredibly attractive, which is just the author just hiding his power level. I found out <laughs> about this, like, I think last year in an interview that apparently Gege, um, said that oh yeah i initially wanted to have you know fan service in my story but then i thought oh what if my parents were reading this so i just <laughs> downgraded that <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> just think about how incredibly hot the characters already are all right I, i'm gonna counter that with the chad move that. the chad move however is oh, what if my parents are reading this fuck it boob jiggles <laughs> <laughs> Like that that's We're a power move. You just, you just stare your father in the yeah. eyes as you draw it. He's like, did you read my manga, this father? Is <laughs> you, you you just you just have the manga page with the jigglies up the, on the screen and you're all like, this is me now, father. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh like the thing is it what gets me about Rooster Teeth is both the hypocrisy. Yeah, and the cowardice. Too. That's really what gets to me. It's like, if you're honest about it, it's like, yeah, no, we want a boob jiggle. Yeah, we, we, we don't really care about panty shots. We'll, we'll have them if we need them or whatever, wherever we want them. Just be honest and upfront about it. Just don't hide yes. like you're somehow better than everyone else and pretend like your, your shit don't yes. stink. Yeah. There's never been a single honest moment. So the thing I hate now is how they just grovel for money. And also openly like blame people for not giving them more money. <laughs> oh, it's like we're just yeah, too it's... we're too poor. It's Animation's it's expensive because you're not buying our merch enough. It's like, well, get better merch and I'd buy it. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I, hey, speaking of uh, available in Critter's store, there is a wonderful shirt that I am wearing right now. Where is a raccoon stole my arm? Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to buy that. It's nice. such a nice shirt and. I was worried because a lot of those online stores have really, like, a lot of them have, like, really shitty material. This isn't necessarily the best material on the planet. It's a lot softer than I expected it to be, and it's a lot more comfortable. So it's yeah, like, And the um, the print stays remarkably on. Like, it doesn't fade away. I have bought one of my own shirts, like, years ago, and it still looks like it has the picture on it still. I'm amazed. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's a wonderful shirt. So highly recommend checking out Critter's store. Uh, you can get some great merch there. Um, okay, maybe I can get it because I remember seeing it a while ago and it looked really fun. I, I, I just I fucking love the idea. Just, just, just I, I just love the image of this this feral raccoon with an arm <laughs> and all the blood dripping <laughs> off. It's like completely out of context. No one gets it. I've been <laughs> outside multiple times. It, it, to like when I when I'm coaching and no one's asked me about the shirt and it disappoints me every time they do. Oh, because I've always wanted to be. Yeah, no, you, you know, raccoon like, stole my arm. It's a classic. What is and just that? Being like, <laughs> and just like confuse them by just saying like, oh yeah, it's perfectly normal. What, what are you talking about? It's some it's some nerd ass shit that Raymond has. He has a lot of those. Just ignore it. That's probably what your students. I I actually don't have a lot of nerd shit. Like I think the other nerdy shit that I have in my my repertoire of things to wear is a, a oh. shirt of uh, Captain America. That's disappointing, Raymond. Get on my level. <laughs> All wow. my shirts are nerd shirts. Yeah, I have an Evangel <laughs> I, ha I have an Evangelion shirt, dog. Get on my level. <laughs> um, I, 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 hot take: I don't like clothing with a lot of like brand logos or anything on it, or like det decals or anything. I, I like just like if you're doing a design, yeah, fair enough. like I like it to be more of a just built into the a tiny top. rectangle in the middle no no <laughs> no <laughs> all right uh so how are we feeling about this scene uh just just yang and yang and blake sitting in the background doing nothing it's, it's a lot of the same hive ladies and gentlemen yeah. in the same hive oh they they are so they're just like moments away from just like smooching they they just that that oh, yeah. glance that they gave each other was yeah. just rife with sexual tension. Right there, you can see they're sleeping together <laughs> in the same bunk bed on different bunks. Oh, this right. this great scene where they're not interacting right. with each other at all. Here's the thing. 
But here's the thing. You notice how Yang kept her blanket down, okay? Leaving <laughs> <laughs> Boo from Blake right then. The, um... And also, look, look at Blake, this fucking overachiever, reading two books at once. She's trying to make up for the fact she didn't have any notes from class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can say they're not they're not really interacting at all. So no. same hive. I think you're right. The same hive, different different yeah. honeycombs. Yeah. <laughs> also, how does Ren know about Nora's dreams? What the fuck's going on there? Yeah, I thought this scene was gonna go somewhere. I thought Nora yes. was having like future visions or something. <laughs> I guess maybe the point is, is that, like, she's talked about this same dream before. But, like, yeah. why would she get the details so wrong if she keeps having the same dream? Sometimes, Volume 1, Nora, was a little too much on the lol to random side for my taste. <laughs> yeah, no, I, bit, I can yeah. get that. I can get that. Uh, so here we go. We have them commenting on Cardin. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get any indication right, that Blake up, heard Let's yet. get out the wedding rings. Like it, it's just it's just Blake glaring, and then Yang being like, "It's hard to be a Faunus," and then like we cut away. It's like no no reaction because yeah, she's and, a deaf. And, there, and notice how and no yang has no reaction to anything in regards to the faunus racism plot line which is literally at the core of most of blake's character also also story. wait john what the fuck are you eating are you eating mashed potatoes gravy and french fries like <laughs> that is way too much starch good sir <laughs> everyone has something different what the fuck kind of cafeteria is this <laughs> like, like like a college I, I campus just love the, <laughs> but we don't see anything to I that just effect love the food that they have yeah i just love the food they had in like ice queen them where where it's all this freaking gourmet shit everybody can have just anything they want <laughs> <laughs> like i mean it does it is interesting like ruby has cookies weiss has a single apple yang has looks like a salad blake just has a cup of water and books Pira has a salad, Nora has a sandwich, and Ren just has tea. No, 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 no. She has food. It's it it's it's a trick. It's an edible book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Blake now just like just like shoving a full book down her <laughs> She she reads the book and when she's done with it, she just puts it in her mouth and eats it. <laughs> Actually, that would be kind of great. It's like as you read a page, you flip it over, just tear it out. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh wait, what did yeah. I say? Of Dang. <laughs> Here we go, forever fall. Yes, They're the walking. Yeah, together. you. So you shared you, this with us, yeah. and I looked, and I was like, "Why is forever fall in here?" I don't think Blake and Yang are in these episodes. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Barely. They, they are oh there God, those are. walk cycles. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I that, that's the thing like when you watch something casually versus watching something slower and critically you catch yeah. a lot of things you just miss and yes. some of the animations I have never caught yeah. before where I'm like oh my god how did I enjoy this oh my god yes because I I literally spent like seven hours in Mac server once just going over all of the animation flaws of of not even we didn't even get through Seven episodes it took an hour to get through each episode because there was just so much jank <laughs> I mean, to be fair it's taken us an hour and 40 minutes to get through 11 minutes oh god <laughs> <laughs> well we're, we're making a lot better time than the last stream true at least this forest is full of the creatures of grim that's so weird the creatures of grim why do you say this it that is, way? As opposed to the people of Grimm? <laughs> this whole plot the, is weird. From the town of Grimm? <laughs> it just reminds me of like, the, the everyone kept pointing out, oh, maybe the, the Earth, when I was doing Fixing Ruby and I basically acknowledged, hey, I, I kind of fucked up here with the Ursa thing. Like, I was just trying to be honest about it. People were like, oh, he could have been attracted because of negative emotions. I'm like, that, 
That's not the issue that I had. The issue I had is that I had John use the sap to attract the bear for his diversion. Like, that was part <laughs> of it. And that has several problems on top of it, including the fact that the bear was smothered in jam. So was Carden. Why did a single jar change anything? Mm. Uh, Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Hey, buddy. Hello, everyone. I have to go, but one infinite amount of problem. There was no chemistry at all in the beginning. Romance or plant, etc. In V123, etc. Also, Yang would never be into Blake. Okay. Oscar. Buddy. Yang is never going to date you. I'm sorry. <laughs> second there was chemistry (laughs) i will push back against that because i shipped them back in volume one like i was one of the original bumblebee shippers i was there when the texts were written your villain (laughs) origin story i did before it was cool that's what it's oscar's Oscar's villain origin story he just hates the bees so much my first ship (laughs) in ruby syndrome my first solid ship in ruby was ladybug for about four or five weeks and then white rose just took it and ran with it like (laughs) because and then ladybug got nothing after that I, i i i am Part of me is always sad that never developed, but part of me is also like, yeah, no, I actually prefer White Rose. <laughs> I think I would prefer White Rose overall anyway. And here's me being unable to ship any of these characters legitimately, unless if I'm working on Fractured Fairy Tales. I was going to say, like, I you have to, I have to do a lot of legwork. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, I can ship the characters in Fixing Ruby to a certain extent. But I'm going to take a brief pause here to use the restroom and lower my bl- my blinds. I'll be right back. Um, I, I, I don't I ship ahead. Blake with Ilya more than anyone else. Mm. So and I'm bummed that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, if Raymond's ever told you about what I was doing with Fractured Fairy Tales. <laughs> I, I no. talked about it uh, a bit, a lot to him, a little bit to Kaiser. Um, Fractured Fairy Tales mm. is my original story that I've taken the the dead corpse of Ruby. I have stripped all of the flesh and bones and sinew off of it, and I'm using its corpse to reanimate uh, for Fractured Fairy Tales. Yes, I love that. <laughs> it's, uh, very... Yes, it's very necrophilic process. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've, I've had ideas like that. It's like, I could just do it myself, but better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Or not even there, just different. Yeah. The, the ideas that I sort of had for, for shipping for Fractured Fairy Tales is I was going to keep White Rose because I had a lot of ideas for those two just as their dynamic. Uh, because I was changing up Oscar's fairy tale motif quite a bit, uh, so that he mm. is he's taking Port's um, fairy tale reference as Peter and the Wolf, but he is also the Wolf from <gasps> Little Red Riding Hood. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, and so I, I was gonna have them to be a thing and yang i was actually going to change her ship to be with velvet oh the problem Um, i don't i don't ship yang with anybody i don't like yang is the problem (laughs) i I changed up yang to be um well i I based her (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I based Yang yeah. off of somebody that I knew in that I know in real life, but I would say that she's a lot more like fixing Ruby Yang, but like times three. Nice. She yeah. she's she has a lot more <laughs> problems. Uh, and Velvet is somebody who is going to be a lot more of an activist in her school, so she has like. A little bit of a faunus rights coalition thing in the school and stuff like that. So she gets a little bit bullied because of that. And Yang, who I've also changed to be a faunus, actually. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so Blake and Yang are both faunus, uh, but they don't they don't have the same ideals. Yang is uh, while Blake is very much like uh, 
Faunus are oppressed and all this kind of stuff. And Yang's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say that we have problems, so does what what makes our problems so much more special. <laughs> mm. Um, a fun dynamic. I love yeah. it. <laughs> uh, but she she would have a, a lot of connections with Velvet due to them both being Faunus and also Velvet doing a lot more community work around Vale and stuff like that. So they would they would know each other outside of that. And they would actually get together fairly early in the story. Um, and just be like, you if you, you come near my girl, I'm going to fuck your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the last relationship that I had is uh, Weiss and Son, actually. That's a good one. That's I the do one get you it. Yeah, so those I, are the... I, um, she told me her illustration for that. That's real, it, and I I was kind of hooked into it. I like the idea of it, um, but just the way that she described it to me uh, really sold me on that. Yeah, Yay. yeah. I I wrote a I wrote a fairy tale short story about how Weiss and Son met. Yeah, yeah. Their their whole backstory, um, starting with Once Upon a Time and everything. Oh, oh, it's cute. Also, I'm a sucker. It's like um, Gaius and I think her name was Maribel. A characters from Fire Emblem Awakening. Classic pairing. The princess and the thief boy they, who don't deserve her. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I can I can send it to you. Um, let me just... <clears throat> it's a little bit hard to navigate because I have the... I have the the screen for Takara taking up most of my screen, but I'll, I'll get that to you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot, but... a lot of Volume 1, Blake and Yang, is not much to work with. <laughs> no, no, it really isn't. Really? You don't think so. <laughs> But they, but remember, they were planned from the beginning, guys. <laughs> they were planned from the beginning. Yeah, totally. but this is this is all part of the chess game. This is all <laughs> part of the whole shabakal. Okay, welcome this back. Is a long con. They're ahead of us. Yeah, I took the opportunity to get some food and water. Like the only the only thing that I could see with them saying like, oh yeah, it was planned from the start. It's like. Yeah, but then you slept on it for four or five volumes. <laughs> <laughs> you planned it from the start, but then you didn't start implementing it no, until we... halfway through the series. No, we ma- no, we let it marinate for. <laughs> not marinate. It's okay, there's a big difference. No, so they they it's... marinated it in a pot I mean, that didn't like have a... the stove on. <laughs> yeah, it was planned I mean, from the start. In my video. If... <laughs> Yeah. We marinated it in and... like if this is your idea. We marinated it in a bag full of, of water. Burn, I wouldn't let you off the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did marinate it. You freaking uh, what's the word? You diluted it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let's continue here. So they're not really doing anything in these scenes. They're okay. That was interesting because, like, it's Blake hanging out with Ruby. Mm. Yeah, because in Volume 1, they would sometimes have little moments where the whole team would actually interact versus nowadays where it's mostly Blake and Yang interacting because they're desperate to show, look, we we do want them to be together. And they leave. This episode is so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> now they're hanging out as a team, going to the Vital Festival. The Vital Festival! Oh, this is absolutely wonderful! I don't think I've ever seen you smile this much, Weiss. It's kind of weirding me out. So, team building. 
I miss when Veil vale looked like this. They made it all futuristic and hologrammy, and I think it sucks. <laughs> well, I, I yeah. don't mind it being like different locations yeah. and Veil vale being differently like renovated. That's something that I do find a lot of fiction fails at. A lot of their towns end up looking a lot of the same, as opposed to having mm. different ages. A lot of future stories I find, uh, no relation to the, <laughs> the writer future stories. <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, a, lot, a lot of stories that take place in the future, especially like 2027, don't take mm -hmm. into account modern architecture or anything that's been here for hundreds of years. Like people often like old buildings, so they'll preserve them. So yeah. you're often it, these creators just like draw these you know, giant, you know, metal and steel and glass columns of of you know skyscrapers and with no consideration at all for like oh yeah no but that's where like the Chrysler building was and that's not going anywhere. <laughs> right. It kind of reminds me a little bit of how they did in Batman Beyond with the different locations. Like, yeah, a lot of things are super, you know, neon and, you know, uh, cyberpunkish. But then you get a lot of these sorts of, like, suburban areas. Or you get the areas where, like, the old parts of Gotham was. Or, like, a uh, crime alley that was still there. Because Bruce, like, had, um, what was it? Wayne Enterprises kind of preserved that. Mm -hmm. I thought that the way they often do that is really cool. I don't remember enough of Batman. School will be interesting way of tackling that sort of thing. You yeah. should definitely rewatch it. It still holds up really well. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I really loving that show. Let's go, Oscar Borja. Haha, -ha, take care, of you guys. I'll be back. I'm sorry, but no, at best, just friends. Also, Weiss and Yang make more sense than Bumblebee. That's fair. Yeah, All that right. is fair. Yeah. I would. A part All right, of me. So long, partner. <gasps> A part of me wants to, like, go into a God. deep dive of how Blake and Yang are a bad couple for each other. And then the other part of me is like, oh, it was so much oh, effort. <laughs> I yeah. don't well, want to tip is. my toes in that. <laughs> I, it's kind of what this is. This is, this is us going through and fine combing and discussing yeah. all the different elements. Like, okay, them hanging out here in Vale. What do we yeah. consider this? Team, no, team building? Just, just like friendship sport. building? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I feel like this is more team building because they're not really talking to each other much, from what yeah. I can remember. Yeah. Like they're not bouncing yeah. off of each other, which is the thing we talked about before. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as like we talk about the jank of the animations, there is a charm to this. Like, it definitely has that like oh, an yeah. indie team made this feel, and like they're 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 trying their they're they're doing their best. <laughs> Oh, yeah. How many and animators then were in Volume 1? 20? Around? Something like that? Like, the end credits are real short <laughs> when they start scrolling. <laughs> yeah. There's probably and then there's... a list of that somewhere. I, I always find it funny that Raymond's just, like, always praising it because it's it's so indie, and it's amazing that people can make that on, like, so... it's, like, treading new ground and stuff, and then there's just me just... No mercy, this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Angel and devil on your shoulders. Well, no, because yeah. that's that's always it. It's no. always like the veil. It, it, it's it's the it's the unintentional, so, sometimes unintentional, sometimes intentional, uh, nested insult of this is good for some indie people. That's yeah. that that's always the like this is good for amateurs. That's and. And then we get things like like right. murder drones or amazing circus and, and like you see what other indie animators are doing now and yeah. your forgiveness for Ruby goes down more and more the more you see it. I <laughs> yeah. Yo, it's like that Jesus meme where it's all like forgiveness stops. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like that's I mean it, to a lesser extent it, it's more equivalent to looking back at Toy Story 1 and being being angry. I mean, mainly they that was a massive yeah. breakthrough in 3D animation, but no, I, I would I would say more reboot because reboot, uh, they they had to invent their animation program themselves, and yeah, the the animation is like 
in in some ways, Reboot has better animation than Ruby, and that came out in 1993. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> But like they had to invent their their own animation program and they didn't even have they didn't even have models to base everything on. They had to like do everything via code and strings and all that kind of stuff. Like it must have been a fucking nightmare. But even then, like I still need to see I, I would say early Ruby is in some ways kind of comparable to first season reboot. But th- it's still like 10, 10 years apart and they yeah. had they just made reboot animation again <laughs> <laughs> I love reboot that's terrible they left all the money again okay there are lines the cops in the scene it took me years to figure out what it is they're actually saying because they put this weird like accent on it's when the one that's voiced by Joel goes, they left all the money again. I never understood what he was saying. <laughs> I also, I don't know why you would leave all the money. You're already committing yeah. grand larceny. Take the money for good measure. You're already going yeah. to, like, like, yeah. oh yeah, a few yeah, thousand bucks is going to actually make ammo. a huge why difference. Why not take the money? <laughs> when, you're t- when you're literally stealing gas and, uh, uh, and you know, propellant. Thank you. My obligatory sneeze of yes. the stream. <laughs> but yeah, this is misguided. They want to wipe humanity off the face of the planet. So then they're very misguided. <laughs> I, 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 how Dog. did I Dog, imagine this. Imagine this in like the context of fucking X Men, and we're talking about the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. God, there is something I appreciate about like villain teams and villain groups that are just so unabashedly evil. Like they don't try to pretend at all oh, yeah. that they are the good guys. They literally name themselves "We Are the League of Evil" or something like that. <laughs> Like, cause even even yes. even the salami yes. slices have the, the pretense the that they're somehow the good guys to some degree, or or they're they're justified in what they're doing. Meanwhile, I I appreciate villains more like Tyrion, honestly, who are just like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking cause some chaos. People die. <laughs> That's my bread and butter. Let's get on it. We've had too many yeah. sympathetic villains I mean, with like I... relatable backstories these days. Well, like even <laughs> yeah, even even I actually view yeah, a geez, lot of those characters so, yeah, that's... like the people that like just shrug off all of society's morals and such. There is there is an appeal oh, there. Yeah. There is something relatable there to the idea of like I want to be free from the burdens of society, and this is just the, a character that takes that right. to the most logical extreme, and it's like. In some way, you can get like yeah, a vicarious, I... a vicarious thrill from that. Oh, what happens? Yeah. You don't have to be a good that's person. why we like characters like. Yeah, that's why we like characters like Eric Cartman, or to a to a I guess lesser extent because this character also has a backstory, but it's not super important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Dio from JoJo, who is probably the lead example of this, so, how you do this sort of thing incredibly well. J- just because he does whatever the fuck he wants. He knows he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He is a bastard. He knows he's a bastard and he loves it. And it's hard not to get wrapped up in that energy. Which is why I'm always kind of looking side-eyed at people nowadays. And uh, a little quick spoiler for my topic of the next video. Why I hate a lot of the discussion around um, what's going on with... Um, well, what happened with... Free Ren and the demons that briefly appeared in a few episodes. Not they're not really appearing all that much now, but people are just I guess so hardwired into looking at much more sympathetic villains, which is an inherently bad thing. But now we're having people calling the opposite of that bad writing when that isn't true. Yeah, oh, no, no. I actually I I fucking also love periodic P is right. That's the appeal of Disney villains. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I I loved the 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 handling of the demons in Free Run. Um, the I the only thing yes. that I would yeah because like I like the idea is like they are literally just creatures that developed communication 
purely as a hunting technique. That's the only reason they have. Yeah, human they're language. evolved monsters. They, they are. They are still monsters. Although that is like yeah. the one thing is I I do wish that they got more creative with how. Free, I, Admittedly, Freewind's very straightforward with how she handles situations, so I get that, why she did what she did. Uh -huh. But I would have loved, part of it's my shipper brain too, if instead of doing to Aura what she did, she instead, <laughs> she instead ordered Aura to experience all of human emotion. And like I said, you just that, stole that, that idea me. from my idea. Yes, from yes. <laughs> that, that, well, I think I was very much influenced by that. Uh, that yeah. Was, the, the, uh, for, for context, I said... Uh, I would really love it if somebody had just asked, as their wish, if all of the incubators would experience human emotion. <laughs> Which, oh my god, uh, is... that's a, that sounds like such a good spinoff. <laughs> yeah, it just ends everything. Like, just everything falls apart. It's like, okay, maybe this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> like something crazy <laughs> fucking happens. <Yeah. laughs> A few months ago? Yeah, it's, it's, it's did a pretty good job of establishing that a lot of time has passed since mm. episode one. Fair, fair enough. I haven't watched that this in years. They've spent so much time with you. That, it, that means they spent a lot of time together, guys. Isn't that true? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it happens off screen, it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> It, it, it oh, is weird. Yo, there Fat you go. Man, You're learning. I remember when Fatman pointed out that in the middle of volume two, there was a massive fucking time skip. Like, I think it was between yeah. the dance and Pyrrha's fighting of Cardin, I think. Right. And it's like, yeah. that was a massive time skip and just no one comments on it. It's like, what the fuck? I remember it was the dumbest thing. Yeah, it was true. when oh, volume when volume four was airing, Miles kept like saying, like, if you never say a time, then you'll never get your times mixed up. And I'm like, no, you buffoon. You've made it the opposite problem. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, like knowing time I, I, affects I heard that. a relationship. I was like, tell him? Knowing that it has been months yes. since the beginning of the series in this circumstance informs oh. us that they have that the entirety of team Ruby has had time to actually build a rapport with one another off screen. Like that, that is something we can attempt to assume. So it becomes fucking right. weird when this is the first time that Weiss's anti faunus anti white fang sentiment has come to the forefront and is getting pushed back on by Blake, that Blake is surprised by this and Blake isn't more uncomfortable around Weiss establishing that creates yep. problems because you're bad writers. That's yep. the, that's that's where that comes from. Yeah. Okay. It's bad pacing. It's bad emphasis. I keep saying the same thing. If you don't give any emphasis to what the hell you want your audience to focus on, we're not going to care. We're not going to believe that this is important. And sometimes that can actually be used cleverly if you're trying to be subversive. But what is subversive about any of this? Just not doing your job is subversive now? Like, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, actually, no, that's kind of how that. most of Hollywood treats things these days. Um, Red Carp 98. Yeah, yo, and I fucking uh, hate it. Red Carp 98 says, Hey, Critter, been watching you and Twins since Volume 4. Thought I'd come out of hiding to show some love for the holidays. Aw, I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I'm here, actually. I've been a fan of your work since, yeah, around that time. Although Aww. maybe a bit closer to volume five. Yeah, I've watched both you and Twins' videos around that time. That's so well, it's, it the feels weird. <laughs> I don't I don't remember, remember when does. I started watching yeah. your videos, but I, I am a notorious lurker, so um it's actually really funny that the first time that we have indirectly interacted was when you found my post on Reddit and then you shared it on your Twitter. <laughs> Oh, did I? <laughs> I was it was it was um yes, somebody I was talking about fixing Ruby, so I was talking about like the writing aspect and how people can't make assumptions about this and that, and then you shared it on your Twitter and I was like, Ah, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like like I, I recognize surprised. Oh god. I like I recognize you guys' um like profile pictures for like the yeah. longest time. 
And, 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 and it's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was honestly surprised that you remembered me when I DM'd you um, for the first time and on Twitter. I was all like, hey, I'm a fan of your work, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, I remember you. You've always been on my comment section. Like, oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, you've always been there. You usually and, have and good I, comments that if I notice them, I thought I watched your videos. And I was like, of course I know who you are. <laughs> I, I kind of feel guilty because, like, I watch all the things, all the people I follow, I follow on my personal YouTube account. And I only really work on my YouTube, my personal YouTube account. I only really just watch things on it and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. So I always have to, like, right. and I'm usually pretty lazy to do this, where I have to actually, like, copy and paste the link over into my my celtic phoenix account so i can comment on things that i feel like need to be commented on from raymond mcneil not like my mm -hmm. private account <laughs> i kind of want to keep completely anonymous so that people don't and i think to this day i still i haven't subscribed to myself like i <laughs> i think i made a rule that i would only subscribe to myself when i hit a million subs i that would be, be i would be my own million sub that was that's the rule um, <laughs> So that's uh, hilarious, awesome, honestly. But yeah, I don't I'm gonna, know I'm gonna do that for me if I ever have like uh 10,000 subs. Hell Which, yeah, you'll get those that might happen sooner than you might think. Yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone I mean, here, everyone that loves yeah. my channel, please go over to his channel and subscribe. He does some excellent content. But okay. Yes, the reason why oh, I do these streams with them is man, to promote right? everyone else around me. <laughs> I am. I am. A, well, I guess partly is uh, Critter is actually the biggest one of us here right now, right? Yeah, I, it's weird to think about that. You, yeah, it is. <laughs> when I passed Fat Man Falling in subscribers, it was the weirdest fucking feeling in the world. <laughs> that happened like Dude, last. I felt last the year. same way when I when I surpassed Pete this year. Like literally, what happened was was that me me and him talked. Uh, Puri Pete, go subscribe to him. He makes great stuff, and he's gonna put out something really good next year. Um, I, we got the talking like earlier this year, and we collabed with each other like during the spring, I believe. And then literally, I surpassed him in subs in two weeks. <laughs> and then I, I, he was making so many jokes about like, "Oh, you're going to get 1K subs at the end of the year," and I was like, oh, "I don't know about that." And I make my Bumblebee video and. He, he 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 did a video when i hit uh, 1k and uh about him saying yeah basically i told you so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i and, i have and, the link to it i can share it with you guys in a bit and then there's me who's made one youtube video in two years uh <laughs> It's a really good <laughs> in-depth video, mind. It is. And and people really just good. I only get messages now asking when part two is coming out and it it will eventually come out. I just have a lot of things like my computer needs to get fixed. But it's coming. <laughs> the necromancer uh, more, more Takara. directed at Twilight here, yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, the, no, no, Datarex described this as, uh, um, yeah, uh, Twilight making fractured fairy tales. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to do a Takara in a rope like that. It's so cute. <laughs> I love how it has like the Suchi thing from uh, Little Witch Academia where it's like the little tail of the, oh, it's so adorable. God, I, I wish I could, this setup wasn't so jury rigged or else i would share it on screen mm. um periodic pete i told you so <laughs> yeah 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 that's the video that's the video. uh morgan uh hi sorry this already said i was curious if there was any way i could read fractured fairy tales it's not done yet i'm actually uh i'm one of her betas for her uh her main story that it spins off from yeah uh Caden, it, it's gonna be a Caden's while of magic yeah, Cadence of Magic is going to be my main series, and Fractured Fairy Tales is actually going to be spun off from the main series. Because I realized when I was making my uh, the initial version of my Ruby rewrite that a lot of the elements that I was using to spin off uh, and fix for Ruby would actually be a very good complement to what I was wanting to do for Cadence of Magic. So, I 
that's actually part of the reason why it is a spinoff to Cain the Magic is because it makes a lot more sense if it comes from my world than just from Ruby. Because I already, I already have a lot of these elements set up. So all I have to do is just say, hey, dust... Instead of dust just being like this mysterious thing that just exists in this world, it's actually the corpses of these magical creatures that used to exist in the world when magic was still a thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and that that is an element that I have in my story. So it's it's not that much of a stretch for me to say like these these elements come from my world so yeah that's that's why it's a spin-off to my main story uh which is now halfway written i have seventy thousand words written i still have about forty thousand words left to write uh, and that's only Yay! book one <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a big chonker of a book all right well let's continue on there there's not really a lot of bonding going on i should have kept track of all the sun stuff because Clearly, we got the first hints of the sun and Blake relationship. That, yeah. Oh man. Oh, I was going to. I was going to compare the amount of time with Yang and Blake's relationship in one in volumes one through three with Sun and Blake. I was all like, "Nah, I'm not going to do that. I don't want people to be that mad at me yet." <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do. I can hand you. You can download these videos now, and you have these at the ready. For if you ever want to do a comparison. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And we have, of course, oh, everyone meeting Penny. 2020. Uh, God. Yeah, 2020. The timing on this joke is awful. It is. Every time yeah. they try to do like a quote unquote typical anime thing, they just never do it right. <laughs> no. No, they don't. Zilk. No. Zilk, uh, my idea for dust is that it magically irradiated so moon rocks from when Dark God Bro smashed the moon. That's a popular theory too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that that, that would a be a finite resource. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to be the fair, fun of it. <laughs> yep. To, to be fair, so is dust in <laughs> your world, and then so is dust in, so is uh, uh the material from. Uh, this was that okay the the, the wise reaction <laughs> that's actually the well done joke there that i i like that one that yeah yes. <laughs> yeah it's a well done joke that also was... yes my uh the my dust is a finite resource but it's a finite resource in the sense the real world resources are finite resources but there's still a, a fuck ton of it but moon yeah. m uh moon rocks from when the the moon was broken up by the gods that is a a very small finite resource because most mm -hmm. of the moon is still yeah. up there yeah <laughs> it's only finite yeah. in that actually it makes no sense if it were fine why would dust not work in space then yeah fuck uh it, i mean it could be the, that it requires oxygen in order to catal uh, be a catalyst for it That'd be an interesting requirement for rocks. Maybe. Yeah. No, not you. Friend. I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't know <laughs> I, I will say, nuts and dolts, definitely a second. Uh, the, the tier right after White Rose for me. It's such a cute show. Oh, he, he mm -hmm. goes really hard for nuts and yeah, dolts. Really and dolts and bolts, which is, uh, or frozen steel, some people call it, which is <laughs> Ruby, Weiss, and Penny. Uh, I had no hmm. interest in nuts and dolls until I saw some real good fan art was of it, them being oh, cute. <laughs> oh, was it? Oh, uh, and and Tussanel, Oh, definitely um, share it. There's an artist out there that does these really soft, like I, I would almost call them like Christmas card esque, like in how warm and fluffy they are. Mm, um, I don't think so. I don't remember if I have it. Let me see if I can find it. I know it's and, one and of, of course songs, someone so. <laughs> someone cameoed the voice actress for Penny to do like some voice lines. Oh yeah, I saw that. Ad I saw cute. that tweet. I was like, okay, I wasn't into this before, but now I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So yeah, here we go. I, I'm not gonna say I have a heart, but something was there. Something was there. <laughs> 
Damn, guys, so much Yang and Blake interacting in the scene, huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's They're crazy. Doing so much building. Guy, love how much Yang supports Blake by coming to her defense and, and yeah, yeah. How dare you talk to me like that? Oh, what? What? Am I looking at the Ice Queendom footage? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Uh, Amzik, the only reason Dust doesn't work in space was Dude, by the space Ice Queen of Yang is so one, one goes down, they all go down to have a weird world divided post U3. I don't know if I agree with that because space travel is still a very difficult fucking thing to invent. <laughs> Even if you had the proper propellant, like. Yeah, this, this scene has like no dynamic with Blake and Yang at all. Not at all. Sure, going to pause yeah. it for copyright reasons. Sure yeah, are. from this point on, from basically the Jean arc on, Yang's not really in the story anymore. She's not it's, even a character at that point, yeah. It's funny because when it comes to volume one, Yang has such little presence that I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. somebody just said in order to like cut down on characters and tighten up the story and stuff, if they just renamed Jean Yang and just had him be part of Team Ruby, which would make more sense because Yang is a masculine name. And I was going to mm -hmm. say, um, right, but like, sorry, I, oh jo Josh Thomas oh Moore God, was asking, the idea I had after, uh, was asking basically that, uh, did I consider doing a comparison between White Rose and Mumblebee? I actually did while going through this because I stand by. White Rose has the Ooh. firmest legs to stand on of every relationship so far in the series. Like they had, they had this huge struggle in the very first volume. And then after that, they have been reliable teammates, friends and companions. After that point, they talk about each other the most. They interact possibly the most. They have the most interesting dynamics or at least the, the most uh, um, fun bounce where they still have this, this kind of their their friendship is just the most fun in in many regards. So yeah. I stand by that White Rose is the strongest ship in Ruby outside of a full blown married couple. And uh, for the record, the married couples in Ruby all fucking suck. Except <laughs> we. Uh, I was gonna say except. For, I mean, some of them are dead. So yeah, I was gonna say except for right. Saffron and Terra. Like, and this is, this is something that, like, I got irrationally angry at Saffron and Terra when they first appeared in Volume 6. You can see <laughs> my reactions. I had trouble with it. And I realized why. Oh, yeah. It, like, because I, I thought it had to do with, like, identity politics things, but that's weird because I'm, I'm very pro, like, you know, Yuri. I'm very, like, why would I be against that? It's because I realized they are the only healthy married or relationship period shown in the entirety of Ruby. Uh, they are the only yeah. like and so it's I, I mean, like i wouldn't say they're the only healthy relationship there's also one. callie and gear nope you know, every... they let like their daughter join a terrorist them. cell yeah yeah you immediately take like okay fine <laughs> they have time, a good they joined it one time <laughs> oh, right, so they're very misguided <laughs> yeah okay very misguided, they're very misguided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but legitimately, I can't think of another couple in this show that isn't incredibly horribly toxic. And my brain was like fritzing out because I didn't know what the problem was. I was like, it, it, it like my they're so too like, nice to each other. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're healthy. I, I, admittedly, part of the only problem with them, like you, I can name logistically, is that they have a horrifying son. Yeah. God, that ugly the, I think the only thing that I really had a problem with is just part of the dialogue. Like, some of the dialogue, and, and admittedly, this isn't a problem, like, specifically with Saffron and Tara's writing. It's a problem with Ruby as a whole. But there's just some lines of dialogue in order to establish them as a married couple that is just so on the nose. Like, it hits you in the face with a hammer. Yeah. yeah, they're really bad at <laughs> subtlety. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. It's another one of those problems. Like, no when they're way. trying to no be way. subtle, then you have to wonder if it's a glitch or a design. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
That's why when, when I describe how I tend to view the show, I describe it as the Matrix, really. <laughs> looking at all the webs of flaws that it has. It's like Schrodinger's plot. <laughs> <laughs> Schrodinger's See, plot. Look, holy look. Man. Right here. Perfect fucking example. Weiss is spilling her guts about the trauma she <laughs> suffered as a child, living basically under constant threat of a terrorist cell blowing up her house every other day and killing everyone she knows and loves. What is Ruby's reaction to this information, even though Weiss is being a racist piece of shit towards Faunus? She's going up to try and comfort her. Yeah. Because she also realizes that Weiss yes. is hurt and maybe being kind and showing kindness might not only help heal Weiss, but help her to reflect upon how she might be wrong. Like, there's a lot you can read into this little dynamic right. where Weiss shoves Ruby's hand away. What does Yang do during this scene when this happens? Let's watch, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Three, two, one... Oh, it, yeah. That's right. Our first cut to Yang is her head in the foreground. <laughs> and then she's and, not layered properly yeah. over the chair. And she's just. Oh, hey. I am sad now. My, my hey, partner yeah. just ran hey, out the Yang. door. This is. Uh... What a non reaction. Yeah, yeah. Yang is not a character in this scene. <laughs> okay. Okay. This brings me to one of the future plans that I have, which is to talk about. Um, Kaiser cut. Uh, actually, th here's how I call it: Bumblebee, the Kaiser cut, right? Where I, which is basically my idea of how to fix uh, Bumblebee within the show, right? Within meaning, meaning. Um, sorry, uh, what was it? Within certain limitations, of course. One of the things that I thought of doing to basically just help this along and also to build up maybe to this scene or something like that is to literally just cut jaundice in half we <laughs> we cut jaundice in half and we give an episode to yang and give her some struggles and have her um uh have blake interact with her more there that would have solved so many and number two on top of that we have yang be involved in the final fight in at the end of volume one instead of just blake and son and benny because that why the fuck wouldn't you do that i um, kaiser i too enjoy fixing yeah. ruby volume one <laughs> <laughs> i mean look, 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 look i was going to say it without saying it but now you said it and now i'm not gonna uh, okay well, <laughs> oh, uh, don't be oh, don't be a today, kaiser no Let's see, Josh Thomas I, Moore. I, was, knew, uh, I, 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 mean, I have other plans involved as well, but still. Ruby is trying to be the leader. Yang, who should be the big sister of the group. Instead, she is the sister that doesn't care. She looks like she is waiting to get her whiskey. I mean, I could chase after my, looks my like friend. She but... It looks like she remembered the oven was on. It, it looks like oh. she didn't realize what was happening. She's like, oh. why is Blake running? <laughs> so here's, here's a good example of one of the things I tried to cover, which was scenes where they're apart, but might be thinking of each other. So we have this scene where they're talking, and she's like, oh, all hidden with this one little bow. And then Sun asks, So, have you told your friends any of this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, oh, she could be thinking of Yang so. in that moment, but no. And actually, one thing I just picked up on is the transitional sound is Ruby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, Yang is looking for Blake and obviously thinking about Blake in this instance. So that's fair, I think, oh, in yeah. building towards their relationship. Yang is worried about Blake. Sure. But it's like it's like looking at somebody and and thinking about praising them for writing their name on a test. Like, man, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> God, I love this scene. It, it's like I I'm so sad yeah. I had to cut it from. I rewatched it. This is so funny. But I love. <laughs> I'll I'll be right back. I gotta get something, but I can still hear everything with my Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Nice. 
and no sponsor. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So this is adorable. I love the scene, and they're obviously all thinking about Blake. That's terrible. And that's the end of the scene because they cut away, and then Yang and Weiss are gone doing their own thing here, and then. What do you say about that? This is hopeless. Like, great, Yang. I'm glad you're staying positive. Uh, also, she's where, such a where, positive person. Like, where are we? <laughs> Who, what building did you... Oh, look. A random target. Let's see if the cashier has seen, has seen Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen a girl with a bow? Yeah, there's this, this, this bubbly ginger girl just came... No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> You really don't care if we find her, do you? Of course I do. I'm just afraid of what she'll say when we You know, actually, this is actually... The more I think about it, this is actually in line with Yang's character. Because Yang is, mm -hmm. Yang is just presuming that... Yeah, well, she's pessimistic in the sense, like, she ran away. People who run away don't come back. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's like, oh, yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense to me. Also, I think Kaiser... I'm seeing his character move, and I don't know why. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think that was. Oh, I think that was probably because I was getting. I, ah. I think I was getting a call, so that might be the reason. That's ah. fine, so. And also, just heightened sensitivity, just because I want to uh, not cause problems like last time. But I'll be right. Back. The yep. number, so was Yang like doubting Blake? There, she looked down after Ye Weiss said, "The innocent never run." I think it's weird. it's hard because they never really explore what Yang actually thinks or feels. So it could be like, you know, Ruby trusts Blake, Weiss doesn't trust Blake, and Yang is supposed to be the middle ground. But we don't actually ever I get any answers. <laughs> yeah. It's... I, what I used to interpret this as way back in the day is that that was her maybe thinking of Raven. Because, oh, the innocent never run, but she ran from her and her responsibilities or something like that. Of course, Weiss but, is correct in know. the circumstance on both counts, honestly. <laughs> Blake is actually... And... <sighs> None, no one talks about shit! <laughs> No one does. You're not at least a little bit curious what Blake was doing in the White Fang, maybe. I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember when this episode came out. The like twee piano starts going. It's like, oh, it's a friendship restored, and I'm just like, what do you mean? They didn't. They didn't resolve anything yeah, with each other. <laughs> Problem number seven hundred and eighty-three yeah, in Ruby. Characters don't talk to each other. They just resolve issues guys, off screen. Guys. It's fine. They they think that resolving guys. issues means just sweeping it under the rug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, guys, you gotta understand. You gotta understand this one very crucial thing. But this scene has just solved racism, people. Like, come on! Why are you seeing how great this is? And immediately she's back on her racist bullshit. <laughs> it's just, it's just her sexual tension with Son. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stupid hot yeah. monkey. From racism to fascization. See, on the... the only character who has a little bit of a skin complexion. Uh, <laughs> like, you're not paper white. I don't trust. You. <laughs> Scarlet Phoenix asks, so I'm curious, what are your guys' thoughts on Ladybug, Freezer Burn, and Monochrome, the pairings that RT doesn't care about? Um, I think we've already we've mentioned it before. Freezer Burn is probably the healthiest ship for Yang at current it, as yeah. an option. Yeah. Um, Monochrome is I don't want to subject Weiss to Blake. <laughs> I get monochrome, but nah, it seems like boring for both of them. Like it, yeah. it's one of those ones like you wouldn't really be interested in each other's hobbies. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. The thing yeah, is, no. I don't see the balance in the personality. It's weird because like, I actually understand the conflict and the reason why people like that ship, but it, it's not enough for me. It doesn't have enough teeth. Ladybug has enough teeth, but at the same time, they don't really have enough else going on. 
like they're, they're, they're I mean, obviously they have nothing. They were handed nothing in the main series. So like mm -hmm. they started out with a really strong start, but they have nowhere to go. And I don't feel like there's enough, like there's not enough comfort in one direction and there's not enough like conflict in the other direction. What meanwhile, I think white Rose has this like great balance of comfort and conflict that like comes and meets in the middle ladybug. It feels like it doesn't go far enough to actually like get any kind of teeter totter going where you can kind of get excited on which things are going to end on. I don't know if I'm explaining this well enough. It just, I feel like it's missing something, especially at current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Freezer burn. Meanwhile, I think of those three is probably the strongest because Yang has that carefree attitude. Yang is a lot more, uh, sorry, uh, White's a lot more uptight and persnickety. So you get that, like that bounce there. You kind of get a upper class, a lower class division going on between the two of them that could definitely be played upon. Um, they have a lot of different little facets they can bounce off of, and they both very deeply care, care about each other. You can tell that. Volume five was the freezer burn volume. It was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Weiss deserves better though. <laughs> yeah, she she yes. really does. Also, I just realized. Uh, I think I know why I like the idea of Sun and Weiss so much. It's reverse Mimato in the Digimon pairing. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Matt, also, Matt and Mimi. Oh, huh. I have returned. I can kind of see it. Yeah, because uh. Matt is kind of the uptight one, and Mimi is the the fun, carefree one, and their personalities can clash mm -hmm. in fun ways. Now Mimi just needs a six pack. She can work on it. <laughs> Boxing with Togemon. <laughs> yeah. All right, I here was we go. Add to what you were talking about with Ice and Monochrome. Oh, but we can get to that in a little bit after this. Oh, you, yeah. you guys should go ahead. This is a perfect time to make commentary on stuff because we just finished volume one. Yeah. 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 And overall, look it, at that, guys. Look at how great we did. It, so, what, <laughs> how, how, are we, how are we feeling about that? Going going through and categorizing all those scenes. Uh, I. Much of nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really feels like they Love had the in start. The same high bullshit. Yeah, it, it, it's it feels like there's a start to a friendship there, but they haven't elaborated on it at all. It's just sitting there, waiting to be capitalized on and focused on it in any degree, and it's just not. Yeah, and there's two all the Bumblebee fans being like, "Yeah, that's enough." Like I, I <laughs> think yeah, the enough. strongest that's moments were just in the Emerald Forest. Yeah, and even then, it was like they in basic the start of a relationship, of a friendship, yeah. not even a relationship. <laughs> like I get, like I said, participation points. That we, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, there's <laughs> nothing to really credit all that much past that point. It's a, it's like you said, same hive, different honeycomb. Okay, that's same shit, different toilet. That's what this is. Yeah, in order for you to get anything from Volume 1, you really have to do a lot of navel-gazing. And to well, be you fair... Need to stretch. You, you need that gum-gum fruit. You need that yeah. gum-gum fruit, buddy. <laughs> and, you need to stretch so far. And to be fair, when Volume 1 was coming out, because it is rather bare-bones, there was tons of headcanons and fan art, and basically just everyone was coming up with their own ideas because we had so little... And I think a lot of people have kind of put put on it's it's like nostalgia nostalgia goggles, but for their old fan fictions and head cannons. Because mm -hmm. when you actually watch the show, it's like there's a lot less personality on display here than I know I remember there being. Oh yeah, no that that's definitely it. It's like that. Mm -hmm. It was a magical time, volume one, volume two, and to a certain extent, volume three. Although definitely things had died down during volume three where the fandom was just this wild west of people creating ideas. And Ruby was the perfect storm of an anime that had, or an animation series um, that had just yeah. enough substance that you could like project your own ideas onto. It's a, it, well, I, it's I a remember sandbox. Fat Man it's describing it to me. Uh, in private when we were talk when we were doing Kingdom Hearts 
Um, but he described Ruby to me as a popcorn anime or popcorn show where it's it's yeah. something that is so low bar that anyone who is just a popcorn eater as as he described it can enjoy the show and then they can make up their own stuff for it so it's not that you necessarily like the show you like the concept of it and you like to insert your own ideas into the show and that's what makes stuff like this popular yeah it, it, it's now, like the how opposite. much you want to project in regards to that is yeah how much you want to project in regards to that um in regards to like how much of the fandom are like that is a different question but that tends that i do see that a lot where ma many of like i think that contributes to why people um tend to defend the shows like what defend a lot when the show is literally doing so little with its plot lines it's because, because it's their idea especially ideas. people that especially people that were there from the beginning yeah because they spent a large amount of time needing to come up with these ideas for themselves and i think that kind of fucked people up people's mindset because to an extent when you're writing something of course you want to leave room for the audience to think for themselves. Of course you want to leave room for some amount of subtlety or for certain details to not be explicitly expressed in the narrative. But there's a line between interpretation and headcanon. And yeah. we kind of dip mm -hmm. over that line to one side a whole lot. It, so yeah, I, I feel like that's say, where like, people get this their is, wires crossed. If headcanon had an anime, it would be Ruby. Yeah, it would. That, <laughs> that, is, that is how to put it. Like, Ruby is the anime for anyone that wants a headcanon. And that's why I think a lot of later volumes get more controversial as they go along. Is because they're actually trying to do things. And they're actually trying to fill in things. And they're doing it poorly, mind you. And it's mm -hmm. waking people up. It's like, it's suddenly taking out yep. that aspect of abstract. That abstract aspect where people could fit their own ideas in. And actually come up with their own things that they that they themselves enjoy. I think Ruby has one of the largest yeah. largest fan fiction fandoms, and it's one of the most diverse when you actually look at the ecosystem. Like, okay, <laughs> admittedly, it has some of the bigger mm -hmm. niches of like, well, there is the John Harum fic that is legend or infamous. But if you actually look at it, you get so many different, just a wide spread of bizarre and, and interesting things. You have full-on fantasy stories. You have sci-fi crime thrillers. You have grounded coffee shop AUs. You have... Tattoo-fic. Tattoo-fic. You, you have... <laughs> you, you, you have, you know... Tattoo-fic, what? Uh, we, we read some uh, Ruby tattoo-fic. Yeah, soulmate AUs. We read them for Bad Fan Fiction uh, Night. They were, they were really interesting. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't think Boopoo would want us talking. I about never that heard. I, ne I never oh, heard no. that concept before. But that's interesting. It, it was a concept that was started on Tumblr uh, a number of years ago, where somebody made this scenario of what if your mate's name was like written on your arm or something like that. Oh, I yeah. think I remember that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That's, I, mean, well, I love seeing variants like, okay, maybe matching symbols or the first thing they'll ever say to you, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And actually, that, that one's fun because I, I like the idea. It's like, oh, if someone learns that they can find your tattoo uh, before they actually speak to you, they can try and game the system, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, um, the, the I remember one, reading... Sorry. The, sorry. The, the one that I really loved that was really cute was a White Rose one where... Um, you had an, you were born with a tattoo of an animal, and when you got within like a certain proximity of the person you were soul bonded to, the animal would come alive on your skin and like start like like moving in the direction across your body towards whoever it was was your soulmate. And so you have like Weiss has a swan that comes alive and is like dragging her by the hand down an alleyway to run into like uh, Ruby, who's like a grease monkey at a mechanic shop. Um, hey there, if, viewers. Did you click on this video thinking we'd be talking about Bumblebee? <laughs> Jokes on you! It's You're a white rose! Here. More white rose. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the better ship! <laughs> uh, 
white rose supremacy over <laughs> here. Oh we God. we gotta we gotta put a muzzle on on Rick beat. I, I'm I'm actually certain we've talked more about white rose than no, we haven't. We so haven't. Works, we've talked about why it works more than we've talked about why Bumblebee works. So yeah. Cute. Girl with a Belladonna tattoo. And that's cute. But yeah, no. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I was just going to say, like, I think the best tattoo story that I read, it was it was an original, like, little short story thing. It wasn't really a, a full-blown fanfic or anything. Just this idea of, like, how how a society like that would kind of function with these two people it's like oh you know from a very early age uh and people say like oh don't write anything on your body because it'll end up on your partner's body so then like th this these two people would just like start writing like bullshit things on their body so that it would end up on his body <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Like a girl has a has a dick on her face because the <laughs> boy wrote it on his on his cheek or something, <laughs> and then that's how they find each other. It's just like a ah, nice <laughs> nice soulmate tattoo. It's like I, yeah, my 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 dickhead partner gave it to me. <laughs> it's just like oh wait, that was me. <laughs> uh, Red Carp ninety eight. Oh Damn, God. you got me thinking about my old Ruby fanfics that I never I never published. Team Black. A story where we follow an original team who hunt the Veiled Wraith, a serial killer, taking place parallel to the original show. God, there were so many Ooh. stories like that. Like, uh, I was part of a um, a submit your own character mm. where uh, that was supposed to be taking place during the same year as Team Ruby, like the freshman class that Team Ruby was in. So the idea was like filling out the cast with a bunch of submitted characters, and the guy would custom tailor like all the different uh, um teams and all that such and it fell apart so that's where uh -huh. i got inspired and i made my own syoc um and i i got like 20 people to submit their own characters i made full teams i got like i want to say 11 12 chapters in that were substantially long and i i the thing that pissed me off about his old the, the the one that inspired me was that he didn't really play with any of the character dynamics or really have any fun with them so I actively like went about being really serious of trying to like get these characters to interact. And some of them were just, some of them have stayed with me. Like there was a character named Lix mm -hmm. who was, um, I think a goat. He was a, he was a Ram Faunus and he had it was really great backstory. Oh, okay. He had these, these dual crossbows that turned into, um, climbing hooks. Uh, and he, he had constant amnesia. So he was like, he was the comic, he was like perfect for comic relief where he had like this perpetual amnesia going on where he just, short term memory loss. It's great. Anyway, yeah, actual anyway. Ruby. <laughs> I, I just, I miss those days, man. Sorry, it was magical. Over. Oh, he, like, over. Talk, talking about Ruby fandom stuff is Martin. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, it's Adam. So volume two. Oh, uh, it's, it's Oh yes. The Rose oh, remember story. that part of Zell's video where he was all like, Oh, Yang is loomed over the visage of Adam. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite part about Zell's video was him being like, Ugh, Adam. <laughs> my 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 favorite part of the, Zell's video was him being like in the Japanese dub. Yes, that was another great one. <laughs> I still just, cannot like, believe dude, it. Dude, I don't know what he's trying to do. Just going to the like, Japanese okay, dump for ice I... denu. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm like, all right, you're trying way too hard. Anyway, let's let's actually blitz through this because yeah. I've I've seen this ahead as well. So, what would we call that interaction? Friendship. Yep. I would I would I would classify it as Dang. reminding the audience what their friendship level is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's a good way to put Reestablishing it. their friendship, yeah. <laughs> well also that Blake is like, I, I don't want you guys reading my personal shit. Like Blake is still keeping shit from them because she doesn't trust yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, got, I love that fucking binder. It's great. <laughs> Sisters, friends, wives. Hey. <laughs> you see, they have such a better dynamic. 
I I'm gonna penalize you, Raymond. You are putting a lot. You are keeping a lot of parts in here that has nothing to do with Bumblebee, but because you like the scene or it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was gonna say. <laughs> That my logic is actually more so they're in the scene together. So the entire duration of the scene, they are it's potentially... It's just Ruby on screen. I know. I know. Trust me. Part of it is me getting lazy, but like, if you count the cuts where they don't I appear... I you were meticulous in, in, volume in these early one, volumes. I think volume two is where I actually started being like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Out of nine uh, volumes. <laughs> yeah, 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 you, you take you, you take the route Gage should when it came to fan service. Fuck I'm it. still, I'm still putting the <laughs> cap of shame. Long. I'm still putting you in the cone of shame. I don't know much difference. It <laughs> the white rose cone of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Why Blake doesn't right, even react to Raymond Yang's fucking pun? Rose, fill up the <laughs> Yang makes a pun and Blake yeah. is just staring like, where, where is she? Dead eyed. She's just like, man, Ruby has rock which hard is, abs. Which is <laughs> weird because you, you, you think. <laughs> yeah because you think if they were trying to have it like tie together at the end of volume nine where like oh she becomes a lot more jokey like yang you know she, she picks up a bit more on her habits and shit you'd think that she would have some reaction to it in the beginning so that we can juxtapose that with how that how they end up right right yeah like, that's how, what you usually do when it comes to sore shit. Vox Machina does this! <laughs> fuck do you lose to Vox fucking Machina? Anyways, anyways. Uh, Josh, <laughs> I cannot comment on that. I've been told I will be penalized for talking about more White Rose. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but for the record, yes, I, every I time that scene Raymond the, mentions the White fucking... Rose, he has to fill up the the, the jar like the with a with a dollar. Okay. I, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you specified because sort of like I was going to start getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you think I was going to say? Jars in the minute. internet do not mix, my friend. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, sure, it's he, weird only if you make it weird, but yeah. Well, he has too many My Little Pony friends. <laughs> Legitimately, yes. Oh, true. You know what? Say no more. Say no more. Uh, Leia, Daydreamer, what do you think made people like Bumblebee in the first place since Freezer Burn and Ladybug is more interesting potential dynamic? I disagree that Ladybug is more interesting. Than, uh, that, that, well, I guess Ladybug could work and Freezer Burn could work, but I, I, I actually really liked Blake and Yang because I think they have a very... On paper, they have a good hot and cold dynamic um, where Blake is very yep. quiet, very snarky, but, you know, it's sort of like, oh, is it is it The Office? No, it's not The Office. It's uh, Parks and Rec. <laughs> Chris Pratt's oh. character in What's-Her-Face. It's like that's like... Andy and April. Yeah. Andy and April. <laughs> that's the kind of dynamic that people see, like, mm. to the most comedic extreme. That's the dynamic that people see in yeah. Blake and Yang. And that's a really good dynamic. Yeah, and I, I think that also has to do with, like, a lot of the themes in, re in regards to their relationship working well. Um, there's a lot of potential there, uh, especially in regards to how they both deal with trauma and shit like that and how they can potentially come together. It just wasn't done very well, but I can well, totally see why. I, I was on board. I was on board up to the up to the point where shit started falling apart. <laughs> but you know, there is a wonderful event for us today. I don't know whether to be proud or. Sad. I also think early on a lot of it was they look good together design wise. Yeah, yeah, they pair. Well. I mean, aesthetically, like aesthetics go a long way with people's mm -hmm. investment in these things. I for one think that. God, I remember they redid this in Ice Queendom and it somehow was worse. <laughs> All right, so yeah. that entire scene, yeah, I remember literally, like, kind of the opposite of chemistry. They did nothing. Yeah. They, uh, other than Yang saying, what you doing, they didn't even talk to each other. Yeah. What Blake was just staring into the middle distance the entire time. <laughs> yep. Uh, it is weird going from like volume nine Blake where she's like smiling constantly and then going back to volume two Blake where she's just frowning and brooding. <laughs> you see, I think this is where I actually gave up ultimately on the whole cutting things meticulously because I didn't know, technically speaking, 
Yang and Blake are in the scene together. But it's a good highlight of... But they don't even do any combo attacks here. Like, I think they do like, one combo the attack. Like, people tend Or they follow up. For a yeah. Yeah, there. Follow up. Yeah. Right there. Okay. See, there. They, a little bit of teamwork. Alright, there's a little bit of one. Okay, I forgot about that. But... What the fuck are they feeding these kids? That bread is stale <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> I mean, they're this strong for a reason, man. I don't know. The open, baking the aura into your bread. <laughs> <laughs> Either that, or they Yo, are so weak that they can't break the bread. That. Oh, there we go. I actually did cut it there. God, why were there fucking giant turkeys? What was the point? What, what kind of? I I I love this scene. I love it so much, but it's so so goofy. The, yeah. The, the level of food, like that's right. White is a fucking swordfish. Like <laughs> the fuck? Where? Jesus Christ! What is he in the Ren, ground? Ren, Ren, Ren. Yes. Bren eats shit in these volumes. <laughs> Jesus. <man. laughs> He's phased through the fucking concrete. <laughs> Bren, I just need to put the waist in the Hey, man, in you got knocked the fuck out! <laughs> I'm. <laughs> this is like, I, I, I should not let this in. There's nothing. Oh, that's why I left it in. That's the follow up. Yeah, they're. Yeah, this is adding nothing to her character. Oh, right. I think it's at the very end that you get a little bit of something. Hey Raymond, you're cheating. This is no they're no longer in the same scene anymore. <laughs> there we go. They're laughing together. They're having fun. There, that friendship. That there you go. There's your dynamic. Friendship. That's such a good way of describing just the mood. It's just like, there you go. They're <laughs> laughing together. <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. So why not let them play the Look at these action figures. They there we go. I, I make laughing noises and they move. Now they're playing a game together where Blake is clearly completely disinterested. Bring it on. I deploy the Elysian Air and not engaging with what Looks Yang like at all. Because yep. like that is part of the important thing is showing that Yang is interacting with everyone else more than Blake. Yeah. Yeah, she gets up in Weiss's yeah. space during this to help her know how to play yeah. with the game. <laughs> Late, I gotta know, did anyone mistake uh, Blake's bow for cat ears and got confused about the reveal or was it just me? I don't think you were alone in that. I think some people assumed they were cat ears at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <gasps> you queen. Mm. And since Atlas is part of Mantle, my repair time only lasts one turn. <laughs> Pretty sneaky, sis. But you just activated my trap card. <laughs> Giant Nevermore. If I roll a seven or higher, Fatal Feathers will slice your fleet in two. But if you roll a six or lower, the Nevermore will turn on your own forces. That's just a chance I'm willing to take. This game is You're terrible. not Joey Wheeler, Yang. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nor Nora's just adorable. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. All right. I, I wish I Too cut this out. Too bad the lady's made her stuck. Yeah, why didn't you cut this out? <clears throat> because obviously they're bonding <laughs> off screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Notice how well, Blake was well, not turn. talking during I that have... exchange, I don't think. No. Blake's not even paying attention. You'll on. learn, like, she's it's easy. Ab You're playing as vacuo intentionally absent-minded. I remember those have an endurance yeah. boost against natural hazards, you could use Sandstorm to disable my ground forces and simultaneously infiltrate my kingdom. Just know that I will not forget this declaration of war. And that... Yeah, d d some people want... I'm trying to make a pun based upon infiltrating kingdoms. But Dude, this is even... how magic the gathering tables are like sometimes, dog. I oh, is that? Know. Hell I yeah! Know. Magic the gathering, yeah! Now we're talking my language! Oh, you yeah. magic? 
Yeah, when me me and my friends played Commander, like when we're like back when I was learning the game early on and they were just giving me tips, yo, they literally just explain to me like, okay, this is how that works. I'm like, okay, cool. Now if you do that to me, it's on. <laughs> I was like, say, what the fuck? Oh, I, I, I have a brand new commander deck that I have never played just because I haven't been with my friends to play with it. So I guess I'm the only I one here who are. doesn't play any tabletop games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the odd woman out. Well, you don't want well just Twilight, tins. it's been great having you on the screen. Thank you for coming. Yeah. In really... all honesty, I'm not as involved. I, I just wanted to be able to be competitive with my friends so we could play together. That's really the only reason I have the yeah, decks that here. I do. The almighty power of my forces. <laughs> I like the so artwork. <laughs> the artwork. I just <laughs> collect Digimon cards. That's all I do. <laughs> Your armies have been destroyed. I hate this game of emotions we play. These strong wise will make it through this together. Shut up. Don't touch me. <laughs> All right, Blake, you're up. I love huh? this. I love everything about it. Yeah, here we go. You're, Blake, you're up. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. What am I doing? You're playing as Vale, trying to conquer the kingdoms of Remnant. Right. Hey, can I play? Sorry, Jean, we've already got four people. Besides, this game requires a certain level of tactical cunning that I seriously doubt you possess. Uh, you attacked your own naval fleet two turns ago. Hmm. Bring it on, Ice Queen. That was a brilliant strategy, Yang. Don't harsh her mellow. I know that I've been told I'm a natural born. <laughs> By who? Your mother? And Pira. Hello again. Come on, let me play your hand for a turn. It's just a little, there's such a little, little bit of life in here. Why not? Just, You've trusted me with way more I just wish there was more, more care. I mean, you told us all that this Blake has nothing to do with Yank and Blake, though. Whom we all admire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it does, because they're not <laughs> interacting when they're in the same <laughs> scene together. It has yeah. everything that... It, has everything to do with how it has nothing everything to do with them. <laughs> they, they aren't even in... <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, there, there she is. <laughs> Ladies, enjoy your battle. Oh, fucking cringe, Lord. Oh, God. Ruby, Surprise you abs. <laughs> you can't just jump scare me with those abs. <laughs> Surprise abs. Those abs are too powerful. I never got a chance to formally introduce you to my old friend. Uh, aren't libraries for reading? Thank you. Pancakes. Shut up. Don't be a nerd. G -g 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 -g. Intellectual, okay? Thank you. I'm Neptune. So, Neptune, where are you uh, from? Haven. Somewhere where that doesn't Haven. have good dress code. I don't code. believe I've caught your name. So oh, he's from I, Haven. Um, I, f I forgot. I'm wise. Yeah, they, they were from Haven. I Sun honestly is weird. forgot he was from that. Sun, Sun is from Vacuo, goes to Haven, and then transfers to freaking Vale because of the vital festival. Like, that's just... A, that boy has just been all over the place. He just has, like, constant, like, jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> he's a vagabond. Um, I was going to say, though, I, I, Critter, I did watch your, your short on uh, Neptune. No, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know I if I agree with I you. I, 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 mostly because like you didn't really go into why the, the why of the the outfit not working. It's just because um, well, color wise, it doesn't really read as ocean, and also it looks like a like like a soft kind of knit fabric, and I think it went the moment that got water on it, it would be so heavy. And it's got this weird, like, stuffy business vibe with the the tie underneath the weirdly too bulky sweater. And none of it really feels like the god of the ocean. But or like this cool dude who's a womanizer type person. He feels like he's interning at like Google. <laughs> I I would disagree. Uh, the reason why his jacket is red is because that is the color of the ocean when killer whales are involved. There's blood <laughs> everywhere in the water. <laughs> I, I was going to argue, from a character perspective, isn't it? But wouldn't he be the opposite? I thought you were going to comment on the Red Sea for a second. <laughs> like, like, the, the, wouldn't he be the opposite, though? Because he's he's afraid of water. He's actually hydrophobic. You, like, wouldn't that... You could that? make that argument, but also, they don't lean into it enough. Like, it doesn't seem like it's enough, enough of an intentional reversal for his character to really yeah. think that was the... Like, it, it, clearly they just... Monty saw that one K-pop band and then took their designs and just picked random ones to give to random members of Team Sun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a one-note joke that... 
you can't really do anything with it other than, than in like it being scene. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can torture him with it. <laughs> like they did in the books. <laughs> Neptune literally gets oh, tortured they... <laughs> by Team Coffee. That's, yeah, that's a thing. Oh. Oh my I God. hear things like that, and it makes me be like, I don't want to read those books. <laughs> I don't <laughs> understand it. The first book was actually pretty good. It was actually, it wasn't anything mind-blowing. It wasn't world-ending, but it was a solid 6 out of 10. Enjoyable enough read. Pretty basic. And it gave you some interesting insights into the characters of Team Coffee. The second Still book homework to me. Ruins, ruins Sun. Literally, they abuse Neptune. Oh, Neptune what? gets oh. shit on completely unnecessarily. Oh, um, it completely destroys any concept of Vacuo. Vacuo sucks. Uh... Oh my yeah. god. Oh, they have a I character really, that breaks all of reality because she can turn anything oh, she touches to gold. And why Osmond hasn't thought to utilize that against the fucking uh, immortal witch that can't die, I don't what? know. Okay, I <laughs> yeah, gotta I don't... talk to you at a later time about this fucking book, dog. You can, <laughs> I, I streamed her <laughs> up on, on YouTube. Nothing about I, this. I streamed me reading them. Okay. I also, I haven't okay, heard anything... About the the Roman holiday one, other than like Neo's name was like trivia or something. Tri trivia, like that. that's the yeah. only thing I hear. And it's like, yeah, uh, plot. <laughs> no, it, it, it's <laughs> I uh, we, a number of reasons are the reason that we stopped reading it. Um, but part of it was it was just fucking boring. Like, damn, the stuff from Roman's perspective was actually a lot of fun. But whenever they got serious with like Neo, it was just sort of like. Okay, I guess. The only Just thing that I, the only thing that also, I remember from text. trying to, <laughs> trying to listen to you guys read that book, which yeah, I I didn't get through it because it was kind of boring. But the only thing I remember is that Neo is just like, from the outset, kind of a terrible person, and they yeah. try to excuse that by by saying like, oh, she has a terrible home, that's why she is a bitch. It it honestly it makes it makes the ending of volume nine even worse with her, Damn. her trying to get Oh her how am I not surprised? Yeah. <laughs> like because it's like Neo and, and yeah, it's true. Her parents are being absolute shits to her, but she is mm -hmm. an absolute shit right back and she is unbearable. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, the the book So would you say the books are this book it's are insane. in order, pretty good or decent. You know, it's it, the order is decent, terrible, decent, decent, boring. That's the order. Damn, that is a horrible lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a that, yo that when you think about it, that's my is recommendation. Similar to the show. Proper. Read the first <laughs> one. Read the first one. Completely ign uh, ignore the others. Um, that's basically it. Ruby is cursed. Oh, I, I also forgot to mention they had to. Ex I think they explained where Roman got his jacket from. Like that was that was like a. They, oh, that was they, that was. Oh. They, 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 they did the thing where they had to explain like, where he got every element they... of his outfit. That's so Why? dumb. <laughs> is this like the Han Solo bullshit? Is this just like it, the it, Solo it, movie it felt bullshit? that way? Oh. To me. It felt everything. that way to me. Uh, now, no. mind you, I didn't finish no. the book. I, I I didn't, but same time, it it did not inspire confidence that they right. wouldn't go down that route. Oh, Are you kidding me! Oh, Pleasure to meet no, you. Man. I never took you oh. as the board game playing type. Right. Well, I think I'm done playing. Actually, I'll see you guys later. Boom. Women. We should talk. <laughs> Nora. Oh. Uh. Let him play. <laughs> You're just mad because the new guy beat you. See, if you had just attacked when I told you, none of this would have happened. Stop. All right. So Wait, before, when they were running there, through, Stop. when they were running through the forest, and Yang was the only one not running, and Blake realized and was like, "What's up?" So Yang could look at Ruby being a leader. It was Blake was the only one who noticed there was something different about Yang. Here, the only one noticing something's different with Blake is Weiss. Not Yang. <laughs> there was a perfect Monochrome opportunity shipping. here to pass true. it back to... <laughs> Which is true! This is a perfect opportunity to pass it back to Yang and have, like, kind of mirror that scene. 
Yes. Like, but they didn't. They, yes. they didn't. For some reason, they they got so obsessed with with Yang losing that board game, which I guess she was very emphatic about. But still, it, it, it's it's just it, I don't understand what they were thinking here. Other than I guess they were trying to be like, well, Weiss and Blake had this big falling out earlier, so we got to show that they're friends now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of early Ruby seems to be. Also, we need to gotta, patch things up. <laughs> we need to knee jerk away from Weiss being a racist. Absolutely. We Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have to literally and this feeds into every single like major, especially interpersonal conflict that the show has in general. Oh, Ren is uh 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 talking to uh talking about his legitimate concerns about, um, you know, how his team and him are potentially responsible for the deaths of millions. Well, he's being a b big meanie baby and doesn't talk to his girlfriend. That's the shit we should focus on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and this leads into, this leads in, in, into the question she on posted in chat. Actually, uh, they asked me directly, what would you say is the core weakness of Ruby? For Ruby. Now, I say this very same thing in my big Bumblebee video, which you guys should totally watch, by the way. But anyways, <laughs> so what I say is, is that time is this show's great... If time is, is its greatest enemy, but it's a symptom of a much more core problem. That being impatience. T the, the crew be yes. crew were t way too impatient when it came to creating the show in, in the first place. And not only that, which that could have been excused if they didn't do the whole paradigm shift for the show and change things up at volume three. But if they did that, like maybe a volume or two later, once they have once they actually have plans for this shit. But fact of the matter is impatience is the problem. Think about this shit, people. You got you, you got these guys who actually think... I don't know if this is an executive decision or what. We'll probably never know. But if... But you have a show where they have to put out every single season, Sans Volume 9, um, a year apart from each other. Each episode, especially early on, uh, are about like around like 12 or so minutes long. Uh, and you have so many characters, concepts, and ideas just slap dab into that bitch. And you wonder how this show managed to fail? They were impatient. The, who, yeah. I, don't, I don't care if it's the crew or the company itself. They were so impatient when throwing all this shit out there. They should have piece, pie, piecemealed the, the, the concepts and characters they had lined up until much later in the story. They should have... Uh, structured things in a way where they can spend more time with the main four being the main four. They and they and most importantly, they should have not have each of the volumes be a year apart from each other. Listen to me, motherfuckers. Your goddamn rooster teeth in your heyday. You got these motherfuckers wrapped around your pinky, okay? And these are the same people who are willing to wait ten years for Kingdom Hearts three. If they can't <laughs> wait for your shit, they. Not wait for any. It's only five. Okay? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 exact. I'm well, exact not if you're a Fairweather you fan and doesn't realize that Kingdom Hearts three does not follow directly after Kingdom Hearts two. That is Ooh. true. <laughs> that is very true. Like and a I... <laughs> good chunk of people out there that don't pay attention to the series outside of the main lines. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, impatience is the show's core problem because. Because of that, that leads to the trouble with time. That leads to the fact that the uh, that the casting I, I will match are, you that? even talented as they are, relatively um, what was it? Um, are, are relatively amateurs at what they are doing here. Impatience is the problem, in my opinion. I will match you that. So. And one thing I will definitely raise that I learned very recently: a lot of these Ooh. problems start to make sense. When you learn that Volume 1 was basically supposed to be just the Emerald Forest arc. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I apparently, <laughs> I was just looking on the wiki the other day, and like I just found this interesting anecdote that said, apparently Volume 1 was supposed to be the, the, the Emerald Forest, but it got expanded into what it actually ended up becoming. And that makes a lot of sense to me. 
Like the was minute, there a source for that? Because I need to see that shit. This this blows my mind. That yeah, makes so, so much sense. The wiki has so much stuff on it that it's like, where's the, your source? True. Oh, you're speculating. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I thought it was. I think it sourced um a commentary. Let's see. Um. um he, yeah. Here we go. Um. It it does make the world of sense. Ruby official companion page. Uh, page. Oh, it doesn't specify the page, but it was in the official uh-huh. companion. Mm-hmm. Um. That's that's their source for it. So we can double check that later. But th- going on that idea, when you think sure. about it, volume one, if it were just up through the Emerald Forest, would actually be a kind of a little disjointed. But it would be a well told, relatively yeah, well rounded little story. And the characters, kind of when you thing. think about it, yeah. all the characters actually have meaningful interactions throughout the entire thing. Um, it, it's not it's not yeah, anything mind blowing. We... But think about it, you would have. A lot of white rose. You would have a lot of uh, bumblebee. Yeah. Um. You you wouldn't necessarily have a lot mm-hmm. of the monochrome or 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 uh, the other cross contamination going on. Yeah. But, but most it would of make the, sense most to be of the some of the best moments and people's opinions of the volume come from during that portion of the show, not exactly of the season, not from mm-hmm. the latter parts of volume one. Yeah. Which feel yeah. like they're tacked on Weird. smaller stories. Weird. Because you get the Badge <laughs> and the Burden arc, you get the Jaundice arc, and then you get the Black and White arc that all feel completely detached from each yep. other. They don't feel like there's a cohesive narrative going through. Yes. Them. Especially because it also takes so long for the Emerald so... Forest. That's like more than half of the season just on Emerald True. Forest. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it does is. make it's a lot exactly of sense better. when you think about it because the when you think about Volume 1 as it feels very condensed. It feels it feels like the second half of mm-hmm. season two of Digimon, really, where they just threw six or seven different plot threads into twenty five episodes, and you're wondering <laughs> what the fuck is going on yeah. because things are happening so fast, yeah. and they only last like six episodes, and they well, don't have Twilight. Any my out. Hero Academia. Twilight. How are you doing? Okay, no, <laughs> shut the fuck up about My Hero Academia, my friends. <laughs> Shut the... You do not know. Hey, I'm, I'm having flashbacks right now to Digimon manga, okay? 2020. Digimon 2020, it felt like a new plot every single fucking episode. Oh my god. I'm so I, glad that I oh, haven't I watched 2020. That. I got but... so bored. I could not finish it. They... I could not finish it. It was so bored. It was so bad. I, so I, bad. I, I am traumatized by Digimon 2020. It so <laughs> it's shit in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel so bad because I remember that there was a poll on Twitter. It's like, well, what do you what would you like to see if uh they they redid one of the older seasons? And I was one of the people who voted for like either a remake of Ad, um Adventure O One where they you know so that they could flesh out all the stuff because I know that there were some bits that they had to take out due to budgetary constrictions like talking about uh where the the four dragons were and and where the dark masters were during the time from Devimon all the way up to Myotis Monarch and all that kind of stuff uh along with like all the stuff that Sora was doing in the background when she when she fucked off but you know fleshing fleshing all that kind of, of stuff out giving it a a much better animation budget and all that kind of stuff. And like when when 2020 was announced, I was just like, I feel like the monkey paw just <laughs> curled a finger. And it did. <laughs> it did. It did. So yeah, it, yeah. the first episodes it, were really interesting, it, but no. Yeah. Well, a, a, yes. a, 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 okay, okay. We're, we're, we're derailing. The- <laughs> we gotta we gotta get back to Ruby. I wanted to answer a question here. Um, did the yeah. wiki say why they expanded it? The, the positive reactions of the four character trailers, which I can definitely understand after yeah. seeing the, the, the massive response to, to, to the red, white, black, and yellow trailers, I, I would be like, yeah, no, give them all the money. However, if they were smart with it, but, I think they should have just taken yes. the, uh, the Emerald forest arc and they just refined it. I, that's what mm-hmm. I would have taken that money for. Yes. Yeah. I yeah like, also... That's what I'm saying here. Oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, Claire. sorry. Uh, I was. Gonna, I was gonna say uh, another thing. I think that is a big problem with Ruby is they seem to almost immediately have lost interest in the initial ideas they had. 
Because it's like, oh, it's about cool weapons. Yeah. And then they kind of immediately give up on coming up with cool weapons. It's like, oh, it's about semblances. And then they yes. stop giving character semblances. <laughs> it's always about the faunus. And then they give, like, everything. Or interesting semblances. Yeah. All, all of the interesting things, like, in the first few episodes, very quickly just get forgotten and mm -hmm. ignored. As they seem to have just completely yeah. gotten bored of their own ideas. Yeah. Yeah, which is some of the worst things you could. If I if I were in the driver's seat of this whole thing, I would have done something like what Raymond said, and then I would be all like, "Okay, we're doing shop. We're spending two years on the next fucking season. I don't want to hear any of you whining." And in there, in between those times, in between all that shit, that is where we are going to have tech demos of certain fights, right? We're going to have tech demos, we're going to crowdfund, and we're going to have Ruby Chibi that is going to be substantially shorter to keep audience retention. It, I was going to say, no, that's what I, I, I would wouldn't have, have Ruby Chibi. I would just have a slice of life little like mini-sodes. Like, not not even like... Version yeah. of Ruby, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, like, just that, basically... Within, yeah, within the show itself. Yeah, so you get like little character beats, little 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 character things going on where people are just interacting, yes. hanging out. Would, like character shorts. Yeah, yeah, like just, yeah. just that. It like those fun. fun little little mini comics you get at the very end of your mangas. <laughs> and said, meanwhile, we're here struggling to think of a meaningful interaction yes. that Blake and Yang have had during this entire volume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there you go. Uh, Ruby, uh, the moment. entirety of Ruby, Kaiser Cut. That There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would have done it. Loading, loading, loading. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. What happened? Yo, I don't know. Google was tired of our tangents. <laughs> it was, uh, You're not even talking about Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Google's a Bumblebee fan. <laughs> okay. You promised to me, to all of us, that you would let us know if something was wrong. So, yeah, Eladonna, no mock uh, What is wrong? I I love this scene and how it completely so breaks I, I, Weiss as a character. I don't. I hate it. That's what I mean. That's what I, mean. I, I, I was being sarcastic. I'm not into it. I, it breaks Weiss as a character. It should be Yang on this fucking chair. I don't think anyone should be on the chair because it's a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, fair. That's fair. But if it, <laughs> if anyone's going to be on the fucking chair, it should be Yang. Mm -hmm. I, really, yeah, maybe. Why definitely not? In concept, yeah, I would agree it should be Yang. Uh, in in practice, though, no, because I don't think that Rooster Teeth can tell the joke to save their lives. And it's so poorly timed, because it's like goofy, wacky, zipping around faces, and then we immediately dive into Blake, heavy sigh. Guys... The racism. It's like, oh, I'm glad we did the the chair <laughs> joke right yeah. before this. <laughs> I, like, Yo, you, you, keep you, my people it, down, it man. May have if you highlighted that and made like a smaller joke on it to kind of transition us, where it's like, yes, oh, really? Not the time for that. And it's like, mm. yeah. Um, uh, Jake the surgeon says, reject bumble foolery, embrace oh, goblin hey, virgin. I mean, I guess. I Yo, haven't watched true. any of Goblin Slayer. Also, Jake, nice to finally see you here, buddy. Who's your last last time? Watch uh, Jake the Surgeon's channel. He's really cool. I just... I don't understand how everyone can be so calm. You're still thinking about Torchwick? Torchwick? The White Fang? All Thanks, contribution there, yeah. Something big is happening and no one is doing <laughs> yeah. anything about it. Also, yeah. told us not to worry. Between the police and the Huntsman, I'm sure they could handle it. Well, I'm okay, second thing, you, the next thing she says out of her mouth is a complete dismissal of Blake's feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what 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 wow. was that you said, Zell, about Yang being much more in tune to Yang the Blake's feelings? What was what was up with that, buddy? Yeah, that, that didn't happen that? at all. I'm not. They don't. Know she he, she's Yang only in tune with Yang's feeling or with Blake's feelings as long as okay. you just ignore the times that club. she's not. Yang's using her well, her fiery cool. semblance to light right, up the lamps because she's gaslighting her now. Yeah, Dead Rex, get on. 
we're not ready. And we may never be ready. Our enemies aren't just gonna sit around. We may be ready. ready. I hate her delivery in this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sora Hart asks, uh, I believe this is Look, oh, look, Critter, uh, give him a break. Give him a break. Okay, um, in your version of Ruby, will it be still be 3D or 2D? I, I, I would imagine it's still 3D. Why not? Oh, uh, are are you asking him? It was asking you about your your, your hypothetical if you had done. Oh, okay. In my version, I would as a whole. I mean, Ruby being three D is kind of the whole fucking point. But in the side story, like Omake, like OVA bits in between volumes, I would experiment a little bit with two D just to save up a lot of like more resources. Two D animatics time. would probably be the way to go with that. Like a little, 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 yeah, little, like those get like big sli online. Sliding Dude, PNGs across animatics them. online makes so much money, dog. <laughs> they should have, they should have been on that shit. I, I'm, very I'm very help. I'm very happy to me? hear that you have that opinion because we're, I'm working on an animatic series. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Jake <laughs> Surgeon says, uh, it, it gives me hope. Uh, the only good bumble fools are the ones who never show their opinions to the light of Twitter. I disagree. The ones that argue on Twitter are the worst, but I mean, the ones that are just like, yeah, no, I like Bumblebee. That's fine. Yeah, it's They're chill. Yeah. Look, like for, yeah. for the minority of Those Bumblebee, of the, the minority of the Bumblebee fandom that are wasps, the, the majority of them are just harmless. Uh -huh. they're, they're having their own thing. They're doing their own thing. It's fine. Yeah. Situation day. That's the thing. That's this whole thing with most fandoms. Most people move, are just and chill. And none of us know what it is, but it's coming. Whether what is ready, with the... I, I hate the framing of in a lot of these shots. The framing is so bad. Where what are these angles? Also, volume two gets so desaturated and muddy color wise, like the backgrounds. Yeah. What you point out about Ruby's cape and how it was volume two that they started toning it down. God, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's probably yeah. it probably all has to do with the lighting, and they don't know how to do situational lighting for certain things. Because Weiss is so white that if they turn everything up, then they're going to just blow her the fuck out. Uh, so I want to I want to point out here, Yang just did the whole yes, I love it when you're feisty. Yes. It's like she wasn't feisty, Ooh. she wasn't feisty at all. That was yeah. her making an impassioned, depressed yeah. speech about the state of the world. Another point yeah. deducted from Zell's video. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it could be I I think None like the only way that you could right, interpret then. that as a, is We're a joke together. about I her yeah. being wrong oh, about my... her emotional yeah. state. I'll be right back. Crazy. Uh, oh. One day. That's, that's not that, even a that was, what? That was secretly <laughs> okay. that was secretly a hint towards Blake and Yang because they were walking close together and she said one day. She was One day I'll be with Blake. She was dog with me. <laughs> One she was... day that ass will be mine. <laughs> I that she was dog whistling to Jean that he would just have this really creepy moment of satisfaction once he sees two women kissing. I fucking yeah. hate that scene. Also, also <laughs> so I gotta much. say a joke that Ryan Carson said in the chat. Uh, Zell. Yang dismissing Blake's feelings is proof that they're soulmates because that's what real relationships do all the time. Just <laughs> <laughs> God, I didn't bring up the <laughs> <laughs> my God, my boy. Uh, Who oh are my you? God. <laughs> Fucking burn! <laughs> there, there's, there's one oh point. What, in the beginning, we were like, oh yeah, sometimes, you know, you have an argument with your friends, so that still counts towards developing yes. your relationship. That is true. There is also a point where it becomes, like, the sitcom couple who every episode is about them hating each other, and then they arbitrarily make up at the end. It's like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, there's a point, there's a limit. <laughs> yeah. And then you have uh, Lena and Gowry, who just beat each other up all the time. <laughs> oh, hey Critter, have you seen Slayers? Have I seen what? Slayers. Slayers. Or the Slayers, technically. 
Yeah. Uh, nope. It's, that it's, sounds it's, like it's, that sounds like a gang in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. <laughs> well, it is. It is a Dungeons well, and Dragons right, parody anime. Of D&D. Yeah, oh. it, it's, yeah, it's a parody of D and D that was that was made in the early '90s, and the anime came out in the mid '90s, and it is such a good comedy I, anime. I, I, it took me a little while to get into, but it, eventually it clicked, and it was just—it's so good. Yeah, uh, the whole premise want... is that the main character is OP, and then there the whole, the rest of the show is just the fallout of the fact that she is OP. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, highly, yeah, highly I recommend the, the Slayers the episodes of it. And it's pretty funny. Yeah. The the yeah. oh, ha- has he gotten to the uh, the water dragon episode? Oh my god, the water dragon! I, I you need to tell me when you watch that or when he watches that if you know because I need to see his reaction to it. <laughs> <laughs> what what so... happened to the water dragon? Episode? I can't tell you. I can't spoil what happens in that episode. Yeah, uh, but no, oh I, I judge. I, I critter. I highly recommend. Highly recommend the Slayers. It is three seasons that were made back in the nineties, and then it got two more. Up in the two 2010s? more uh, in I, in two thousand nine, it got to uh, thirteen episode season. Uh, sadly, those are not. I don't think as good. Uh, mm. You really like the ending to it, though, as a cap off. To it, uh, it rounding was, it out, it, it yeah, it it did do that rather well. I just thought that I don't know how to describe it. There was something missing. Yeah. I, I would agree. It uh, also I, didn't revisit Philly at all, which I understand why, <laughs> but it still makes me sad. It's it's because uh, Philly is not owned by the creator of Slayers because she was a anime she was a character only. that um, yeah she was an anime only character. So even if the creator wanted to do something with Philly, he doesn't own the copyright to her. Dang. <laughs> yeah. It it sucks. Um, yeah. <laughs> she she is truly the Gino of the Slayers universe. <laughs> at least at least we got a uh, Canon Naga in the anime. Yes, that is true. Yeah. That okay, that was actually fantastic. I wish that we had more time with her. Yeah. And uh, that she had actually talked to uh oh I'm Amelia. Amelia. Yeah, uh, and, and they had that teasing moment where they're like, "Oh, it's li- it's like we're sisters." <laughs> These are definitely names. Uh, the- you, you will become intimately <laughs> familiar with all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, for right. for those who don't know anything about Slayers, the 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 joke about them being just like sisters they are sisters they just don't that's great <laughs> they just don't know that it's each other I, we're banking on you guys forgetting about that oh. every time you watch it anyway let's let's continue here everyone remember their roles. all right you and i will head to the well, i just drank some wine so i'll probably will or inconsistencies Seeing as I'm in the family, it shouldn't be a problem the white thing has regular faction meetings to hand out orders and recruit new members if I can get in, I can hopefully find out what they're planning. That's the whitest the that you'll ever see, Blake. Everything going on in it field. is. Outfit-wise. Out of him shouldn't be too yep. hard. Great, we'll meet up tonight near Yang to go over what we found. Let's do this! Yeah! Son! How did you get up there? Ah, oh, it's easy. I do it all the time. You know what? He, he's a monkey! So, are we finally getting back at that torture? <laughs> we I like that joke. I like that joke. As a team. Sorry, son. We don't want to get friends. You're not invited to the poly group. <laughs> yep. Zell, Zell rule number one. If we look at each other, we're kind of a thing. And the longer we look at you, you're going to cause problems. I have my ways. Seriously, though, can I come in? That's why we're all looking at your abs. Not your eyes. It's like the one joke that works with Neptune. And yeah. it's just more of a nice little light chuckle. It's not. Yeah. You know. I'll go with Weiss, son. You can go with Blake. And I mean, the best thing you could say for this is you can get a chuckle. Everyone good? Actually, Ruby, why don't you go with Yang? <laughs> After all, she is your sister. But I see who would go with you then. Well, I guess Neptune could come with me. I don't think there's been a single Blake and Yang moment but... throughout all of Volume Two so far. They've talked, no. they, they talked once or twice, but that's not really a moment. I think that was-
was them. Yeah. I and this is well, remember they were like, planned from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this, this isn't gonna end up counting out your foot. Like at all, because like fights get complicated when you're engaging that such. Um. There we are. Pausing for copyright, just to be safe. Um, yeah. Uh, That's far too late. Yeah. I'm in love with the villainous. <laughs> I am caught up on the manga. <laughs> I am in love with the villainous. Uh, it's a it's a pretty good show. Uh, or it's, a, it's a pretty good manga. I wish they could handle things a little more seriously at times. That entire ending arc, I think, could have had a few more dire consequences emotionally for the characters. But it, it admittedly, Ray is one that springs back. So... Um, yeah, it's yeah. I need to get into that actually. Gotcha, I'm gonna do... I mean to. Shion also recommending Slayers. Uh yes. Slayers Slayers Slayer was actually Slayer. really pivotal to my storytelling development growing up. Uh because I got into Slayers when I was about 13, 14 years old, became obsessed with it. I just I, I love Slayer so much. It it was so important to me as a kid, as you, a teenager. Actually, speaking of, if you really like the demons in Free Run, uh, Kaiser, you might really like the demon yeah. faction in the, um, the monsters. The monster faction in uh, 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 all right, sweet, yeah, yeah. Um, well, the from monsters... what I've been seeing so far from it, they they seem pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the the what interesting like, thing about yeah. that is that magic mostly comes from the monster race. Um, oh, yeah. I think so, I've like, seen that kind of concept done before. I don't remember where. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, because monsters, monsters and humans kind of have a an, an really interesting relationship in Slayers in that you fight against monsters you don't like them and all that kind of stuff but your magic does come from them uh also some really nice mm. really subtle uh foreshadowing that slayers does that i didn't notice until my watch through with raymond was that usually a season before they usually hint about something that is going to become really important in the next season so like lena has a um, a throwaway line about the Claire Bible in the first volume or the first season of the show. And then the Claire Bible becomes really important mm. next. And in Slayer's Next, Zelgadis uses the um, an attack that was based off of uh, Garve. And Garve doesn't become important until Slayer's Try. That sort of thing. Like, it's very subtle, but it, it really goes into the nice no, world Gar building. Garve! I thought, oh, I thought Garve does show up in season two. No, he he's season three. He's he Slayer's try only. I I think that he's mentioned in in next, but he he doesn't Who actually make a full appearance the red hair? until try. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's season two, big... isn't it? He no, dies in. No. no, he doesn't die there. No, um, that that's Fabrizzo. Spoilers. It's you won't remember what? these characters. Wow, you're <laughs> spoiling Fabrizzo's death yeah, like that. <laughs> Omg. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. Now, I didn't now, talk about death. I, I talked about yeah, appearance. I I talked about appearance. Okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I didn't say anything about yeah. death. Uh, I'm talking. I'll I, I was talking. Yeah. Um I I mean these these are just like random names to you. You don't know who these characters no, are. Because or he, like that. The, hmm? he is Oh god, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm trying to think of how to convey this. But Garve was in season two and he was taken out in season two. <laughs> I know because that's the season that we were introduced to the person that killed him. Oh shit, yeah, you're right. No, I'm dumb. I was right. Oh my god, I got one up on you. That doesn't usually happen. My memory. Oh my god. Checkmate, did he destined? <laughs> Checkmate, digital uh, woman. All right. 
Uh, Sinister Sibling. I asked someone to write no, how Bumblebee Dinerex. would work if Adam's character changed from a male Yandere to a teacher disappointed in his student, and they discovered that at volume six, the ship just stops because Adam wouldn't be there. Hmm. That's... Mm. Eh, I don't believe you, that. That's nah. that's not how that works. For the record, yeah, you don't sure just automatically like no. you, you can you can work character dynamics well beyond having a third character involved. Like Blake and Yang have plenty of things yeah. to they have plenty of things to discuss that we will get to at some point that they do not end up discussing. Yeah. Oh, also, wait, you missed Jake the Sturgeon's thing. Oh, I was uh, playing whole clips. Check. All we need is XQC uh, contributing nothing, and we got a video, boys. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I read that in my mind. I didn't actually read it out loud. That's why I, I, I'm so I'm sorry. I, I think I know where I got mixed up. I was talking about the first half of next as opposed to the second half of next. Yeah, they, they are two distinct halves. Yeah. But you're right. They did. They. they because a lot of incantations have a lot of names in them. That's why. Yes. Yes. So like there, there's a character I think that doesn't. We don't mean until next that it gets like used. I think in season one. Yeah. Yeah. That synchronicity between Blake and Yang guys in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're in this scene. They're technically here. They're doing... technically. See, there she is. Oh. Hey, yo, Phoenix, can you turn the volume down on the video a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, does Cass not have individual sliders? I don't see any. I'm curious now. I'm an old lady in my... I'm always like, turn that volume down. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's good it's to know. because you're, I think I'm down. pretty sure you're younger than me. I'm pretty I... sure... Doubt it. <laughs> I'm pretty old. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll type the year I was born into Discord. Okay. <laughs> Pausing for copyright. Well, because I want to see this. I'm curious. And the yeah, I'm older than you. Never the same yeah. yet. I'm older than you. What? <laughs> no way. I'm 93. <laughs> I'm 30 years old. That, that was the year I'm I born. Just realized I'm the youngest. I, just, I realized that I'm the youngest here. <laughs> I will out he was born in 2000. Me being a robot because I will outlive out of you. I, I, I'm 99. Baby cut. I was joking. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we just have done, to keep you so out in the water, right. give you a bit of rust. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll age pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we get freezer burn in the dynamics. And then I think we get Bumblebee in this. Yeah, we're we're seeing a lot more freezer burn in this volume than we do Bumblebee. Well, we also saw monochrome as well. A lot more monochrome. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it just doing it actually, I will uh, actually applaud Rooster Teeth for building the whole team together in mm. these early volumes rather yeah. than just focusing on just Blake and Yang. Yeah. Or just like, Ruby. There, there, there is, there's a cost balance amount, amount to this where I think they could have sacrificed a little bit of that to focus on Blake and Yang, but they didn't. Yeah. Uh, I just just watching this show now. <laughs> That's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the show. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> hey, remember the haste clips that haven't like returned? <laughs> yeah, also, I remember that? What? Okay, wait. I need an explanation. How is she shooting lasers out of her swords? It's the speed um, of the momentum is, of yeah, her slice. She breaking, yeah, she's, she's breaking the sound barrier so fast. She creates fucking... Uh, she breaks the sound barrier with each slash and it hits the target. That's it's how the, it's done. This is the aura or something. Also, hi, Evie. <laughs> yeah. Evie's in chat. Oh, yeah. I, I hey, saw Evie in there a long time ago. Yeah. She's yeah, I already messaged everyone. her in chat. Ooh. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I was thinking that she wasn't gonna make it, but yeah, I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Hey. 
What, what is Ladybug exactly? Oh. Oh, it's they just use running their past each other. Together. <laughs> they use, because they're both oh. the two fastest, they use their speed to do a back and forth Makes to sense. stay out of range. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the that was the attack. It was the Gar Flare. Gar Flare. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we're talking about better shows. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a much, <laughs> Slayers is such a much better it show than be Ruby. A, it tends to be. It tends to be what happens when you talk about Ruby. This whole stream has been like. 20% Bumblebee, 30% White Rose, and then the rest of it is other shows. <laughs> I I still distinctly to this day remember the joke that Fat Man did in his editing where he's like, I'm not saying that I thought of the the strategy after she said that oh god are you sorry? Uh, I'm, so well. I'm not saying that I thought of this after she said uh after she finished saying this line, I'm saying that I thought of this strategy before, before she, she finished, finished that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes her special. Jake, the surgeon, like forgetting she can uh, get Suga is cat moment. What did RT mean by this? Uh, get Suga is a cat moment. What is it? Get Suga. What is what Wait, I don't understand any of those words. Can... Oh, oh right. That's a bleach re reference. Is a bleach reference. Ah. Blade beam thing that the main character can do. That gets a good ten show. Uh, See, Blade I wear a lot of blacks. So I don't use a lot of bleach. Moment. What did Rt mean by this? Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I would be in too much of a hurry. I would be in too much of a hurry. I needed to get bleach to clean my bathroom. And for a week, I talked about it. And every single time I mentioned it, my boyfriend made the same stupid joke. It's like, I don't really like that manga, though. <laughs> I am so sick of bleach jokes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for contributing to it. Oh, my Red God. That's also, here. here's another piece of art by Denerick. Holy fuck. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. <laughs> That's Everything's great. Everything's <laughs> fine. Yeah, buddy. I put bleach on the list because I I I don't think that Raymond has watched it. I haven't. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Terrible name. Should have been Candy Cane. Yeah, it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. I mean, I, I'm not. Why not White Rose? Were they really that afraid of using all the ship names? I'm gonna be honest. All Candy right, Cane. Another one in the jar. Another one. Candy in the Cane jar. would be a better <laughs> ship name for them because it's a sweet, hmm. and Ruby likes sweets. I, the thing is, it, and it's also a cold, cold themed sweet cold. and ice is cold <laughs> I, yeah, I don't I agree. really I, I don't agree uh, wow. well Raymond that's just because you're you're just stuck on the name White Rose you just can't get over the name White Rose it's stuck mm -hmm. for a reason I'm pretty sure Candy Cane was like floated for a time but it never caught are on. you sure uh, are I you think sure? so because I distinctly remember hearing Miles and Carrie talk about it at one point. I think in the director commentary or something. Mm. For like volume one. And I was like, Candy Cane's great. And then they never used it again. And I was like, what happened, guys? <laughs> uh, okay, going down the list. Uh, white Rose, Combat Skirts, Ice Wolfens, Flowers, Rice, Rice, Osiria, Pink, Lightish Red, Candy Cane, Red Snow, York, Lightish Red. Again, I guess. Uh, those are the the <laughs> names listed in the Ruby shipping chart. Uh, there, there was no candy cane there. I said there candy was. cane. Yeah, well, I said it. I didn't hear it. Yeah, there was. It was right after pink. <laughs> the, yeah, the worst one is definitely red snow. <laughs> yeah, that one. That one just oh. gets so many bad images in my head. <laughs> what the hell is Osiria? I I can kind of I can kind of get red snow because. In the the fairy tale, the the mother pricks her finger and then the blood falls into the snow, and that's why she names her daughter Snow White because right. she wishes 
that her daughter will have skin as white as snow, uh, cheeks as red as the blood on the snow, and then hair as black as a raven's uh, feathers. I want my daughter to have a fever. <laughs> no, 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 uh, because red red oh cheeks God. means that the that the child is healthy. Yeah. The, for some reason, for some reason, it got changed to lips as red as uh, the reddest rose. For some reason, I have no idea why. But um, have you watched eighty six? It's not Yuri, but still good. Have, what what is eighty six? Oh, eighty six. <laughs> yeah, that's a good show. That is a really good um, newer mechish show it's interesting because the oh. mechs aren't like full-on like mechanized suits they're more like spider-like things uh but it's actually a really interesting show i kind of heard about a, this off a little bit in the second season, and i have not good. heard yeah. I, the, what i heard was very generic about it that is that is what i've heard. really yes i am surprised there is not that much generic stuff in 86 I, I don't I know. I'm, I'm, I, I cannot remember for the life of me where I heard it from. Anyway. <laughs> um, I definitely recommend it. I just know it 100%. blipped onto my radar and then it blipped out. I don't, I don't, it, yeah. The directing will blow your mind. The directing will blow your mind. Seriously. Yeah, I, that, there we go. Teamwork. And a good song. Oh, that, yeah. Think. That mech just, just fell apart like it was made of Legos. <laughs> God, I used to vibe to the Volume 1 and Volume 2 soundtracks when I was working as a janitor. Got me through so many boring shifts. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, I feel sorry for you. Same, but <laughs> oh I worked God. at a butchery. Ice <laughs> <Yes. laughs> cream? A yeah, I yeah. I kind of work in retail as well. I get what you mean. <laughs> and of course, giving her a semblance just so you don't have to get into an airship. Yep. Yep. Here's some of that impatience. So, I was out of telling all of that, about. we got probably about oh, let's be generous. Ten seconds of them interacting. Yeah. And it was to do a team attack, which yeah. everyone in the team did, except for Yang and Ruby. So, <laughs> yep. There's a time and a place for jokes. Also, what, what the fuck, Yang? Like, I don't understand why she's angry at Weiss for making a joke. Also, Yang barely yeah, says what? any puns. Let's be honest. She was never the pun maker. She did like three. <laughs> It, 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 bitch, it, what do you mean there's a time and place Yang for is, jokes? You were, Yang is such on. a fucking I inconsistent just, character. Like it's almost like she never was supposed to exist in this show in the first place. <laughs> but, 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 but now she was, it was also always planned from the start. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. In the background. In the background. Yep. In the middle of our yeah. Bumblebee video, yeah. Celtic <laughs> Phoenix includes his random favorite shot of Mercury doing flippity doos. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a good flip. <laughs> oh, uh, Leia Daydreamer. Uh, I've noticed you have the ROD OST in Fixing Ruby. I was wondering if you watched it. I adore that show. It is so good. Read or uh, Die is fantastic. I did not know you've seen it before. It is great. Uh, have you watched both the OVA and the TV? Yes. Yes, okay. I did. I watched uh, it last year. Admittedly, the, the very end of Read or Die, the TV, kind of stumbles, but I, I enjoyed the fucking ride from start to finish. Oh, no. It was such yeah. a good It was also the... the one, one of the two anime you... that we've shown each other where the main villain is... Uh, a prominent fic uh, person in history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the weird. same. The great person. villain in all of anime. Really? Isaac Newton. <laughs> Isaac Newton is yeah. the villain of the anime. Oh, right, because Escaflone is the main villain. <laughs> yeah. Isaac Newton is the main villain of Yeah, okay. That <laughs> makes sense. I Excalibur2343 says, sadly didn't do a team attack for Yang and Ruby. Then I realized their name, uh, they're named after the ship, and uh, now I want to die. 
Yeah. You can get a, uh, look Red Sunrise or something like that. You you can Red Sun Red Sun right there. You could just do a Red Sun name team attack. Why not? Does that is wouldn't that be Ruby and Sun? <laughs> also, I don't know if Ruby. Ruby doesn't. Anyways, no. Yeah, yeah, and like, okay, I would still have gotten a laugh if they just shouted out enabler. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact: I apparently met the the person that popularized that nickname for the, the that ship name. I didn't know that at the time. I they really? just got casually talking. It's like, oh yeah, no, I was the one that started that that ship name. Because they, they had a, a they had an unrelated like they they, they had an AU where neither of them were related to each other, so that, that's where uh, like it came from. Uh, All right, there we go. Watch, look how also, empathetic Yang is not paying Peter attention Jai to Blake. Great. If you want a good like family dynamic hey, anime, um, you okay? definitely watch the Reader Die TV series. It's fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. I love it so much. Blake obviously turns down Sun because she wants oh Yang God. to ask her to the dance. Obviously. Oh, but then we get Look to the next just give... scene afterwards. Yeah. I have some things to say about that. Ignore the fact that the, the rest of her team are also like looking at her in the exact same way. Yeah. I, I, so either... The, the, here's the thing. Either they're all lusty for that Bella booty... <laughs> or they're all just very worried about her well-being. Or mild, sorry, not even very, just mildly concerned. That's ridiculous. Blake, we're worried about you. See? Uh, Yang's worried about her. Clearly it's love. Right! <laughs> so, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just gotta say, Zell gave son shit for have, for trying to okay, actually, get Blake I wanna... into the dance when she is distressed. But I, now Yang is saying the same thing here. I do want yeah. to say, I I do want to point out something significant is that Yang feels comfortable enough touching Blake. Like that mm -hmm. that isn't a small detail just to, to, uh, to glance true. over. You hardly eat, and to be honest, That's fair. Yeah. True. So like that that I, I find interesting. As much as much shit that we've talked. They they have clearly grown beyond just the basic form of friendship they had from volume one. I just wish we'd seen right. the actual growth. It's just, yeah. <laughs> they, well, they haven't no, grown from it. They just did evolved. <laughs> oh, please. They, no, that's they, how I describe Twilight, like, we like, often racism. see the digivolutions. Like, yeah, that is, that is fair. Yeah. We often do see the digivolutions. And they, just they're usually the most well-animated part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> last episode, yeah. they they were rookie, and now this this one, they're champions. And we never got to see the Digivolution. They're just all of a sudden champions now. <laughs> I'm all still trying to figure out what Torch would be up to. Thanks to you and Sun, we know they're operating somewhere outside of Southeast Vale. And the Shinny Company record singled out Vale as the primary target for dust robberies over the last few months. I, I'm glad that's a completely useless piece of information. Yeah. 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 Where did that come from? <clears throat> oh, just... Oh, was that a cut? What? Just just talking about the dance, and then all of a sudden, Team Coffee's away mission. No, no, no. That that's, they were, it's because Team Coffee was the one supposed to be planning the dance. Oh, okay. And so they're like... For us to pick up where they left off. Yeah. And now we can make sure you have the perfect night. And once it's all over, we'll return to our search, rested and ready. So what do you think? Yeah, I get nothing other than this is a team that's concerned about one of their members. Yeah. Yep. And hey, you look at that. Nothing Blake unusual. completely dismissing Ed Yang's feelings here. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual. I'm actually surprised she told them where she's going to be. I thought she would actually be a little colder. But... She's evolved. She's evolved from running yeah. away for several days without telling them to. I'm running away. But you, if you need me, <laughs> I'm gonna be at the library right. because books. 
Yep. You know, you don't have to make a character based off of Belle from Disney's Beauty and the Beast just to say that she reads books. There's more pe- there's more people out there in the world than just Belle from Disney's Beauty and the Beast that reads books. Thank you very much. Okay, so <laughs> here we have Yang who is very positive about being able to get Blake to participate again. And this is this is building up to the the scene in volume 2 that every <clears throat> Bumblebee shipper builds to. What do we feel about this particular oh, yeah. scene leading up to it? Her confidence now is confusing, given how poorly the last scene yeah. went. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I was always confused, yeah. too, because, like, what about this makes you feel... Especially after you know what she's planning on doing, which is talking about her past with her her her, her mom and her sister. Is like... Honestly, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, how does any of this relate to Blake? Other than, oh, I yeah. went down, yeah. I did some unhealthy things, and then I stopped, and life got better. Like, okay, great. That doesn't it's, help Blake's yeah. issues. A lot of... In fact, the weirdest thing... Oh, I'm sorry, Career. Go No, on. you go ahead. You. <laughs> okay. We- the weirdest thing is that a lot of people... Because I'm not going to... Again, I'm not going to keep hammering on Zell. A-, a lot of the defenders of the ship do this, where they make it seem like Yang's decision to uh, share this aspect of herself and to, you know, level with Blake here is a very instant decision for her. And this was, you know, a solution that she thought up of pretty instantaneously. I wish I covered this in my video, but looking at this shit now, that is nowhere near the, the case, which explains why it's incredibly jarring here, right? Because <laughs> it doesn't... It, it feels like, in retrospect, it, now, now the burning the candle scene is freaking poisoned. Because now, we're having Yang building up towards you know, going into this vulnerable place within her psyche in order to help Blake. But beforehand, there's just... There, everything pointed to the op- of her doing the opposite. And there's no reason why she would do so other than, oh shit, we haven't given Yang anything for like 20 episodes at this point. <laughs> we gotta give her something. So I, I, I can't. I can't deal with it, man. Go ahead, Critter. What did you want to say? I was going to say, the scene is actually very similar to a scene from Volume 4 when Yang... Ooh. Or is it five? Volume five, where Yang is sad that Blake is gone yeah. and Weiss comes and talks to her. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually really, really similar where it's like they don't really say anything that's actually relevant to the problem. They just reveal some important, yes. painful part about their history. And somehow that makes them feel better. <laughs> yeah. And so although we're I up can to this. understand why in this case it would be somewhat relevant. Because if she is saying, because the whole point is, is that she's saying that Blake should not um, bite off more than she can do, she can chew, sorry, in order to uh, settle her demons or whatever. If Blake is biting off more than she can do, oh my god, I feel bad for Yang. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, Florian slip, okay, Florian slip, you get my point. Yeah. No wonder her breasts got reduced. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> okay but no I, I i see your point and i i the more i look at the scene i'm just weirded out you're right it, why is yang so confident this is going to work like blake has proven to be nothing but volatile when it comes down to hearing out anyone else's advice and also when she gets there her plan doesn't even really work like as yeah, she explains her thing but then Blake is still all gung ho about fighting Torchwick and Yang has to activate her semblance and get all red angry eyes at Blake to get her to finally stop that's a that's a failure <laughs> you had to result mm-hmm. to basically a threat to get through to her <laughs> uh jake the surgeon yeah. to be serious right. uh, for once it annoys me how uh, immensely this guy can get away with playing full clips from the show while i have to hyper edit them down okay so you need to understand i've taken a great number of precautions i have edited a frame around this right, video man. thus shrinking it and then i have already put that within a secondary frame so you you i can i can highlight here 
I have the video. You see, there's the video at the center. Then you have a layer outside of it that is the video again in the background, blurred and darkened with text overlaying on it. So it looks more like a frame and it's just there for aesthetic purposes, but it helps shrink the video further. And then outside of that, I have this little view screen that basically brings your eye to it and makes it look bigger than it actually is. But it's on screen. It's actually a very small amount of screen space, which tricks the automatic detection system more. I'm also feathering how much footage I'm using. I still try not to go over 10 seconds. I sometimes let it run longer than I probably should. And I've probably risked a couple of things here. And we're always talking over the audio. So we, with a combination of those elements, yep. it, it, it helps obscure that. I also have, I don't have it on at ready, but I will, I'm prepared to rush out and get a picture to overlay just in case something happens. Mm -hmm. And something like, because from what I've noticed, volume two especially is super finicky with getting copyright. Yes. Like I had to go through so many loops to get a video I was doing and it just didn't work out. And I eventually gave up on it because it just kept getting a copyright strike. Weirdly, volume, I might nine, go back to it. volume nine, I got like nothing when I uploaded for the reactions and I yeah, was I... not particularly careful with those. Because my volume two footage kept getting copyright, so I did a, an experiment and I just uploaded like seven minutes of completely unedited footage of a scene from volume nine, and it was comp completely fine. I could put ads on it if I wanted to, and it was like, why? <laughs> Weird. The dress yet? Anyway. The point. Hmm. Who cares about the dance if Blake isn't going? Oh, don't worry, she's going. <laughs> Weird. Why does Ruby what? care so much about Blake going? <laughs> Ladybug confirmed. Oh, you know, Ladybug confirmed. <laughs> I guess. Obviously, I still can't think of. I guess it's because she just wants her to Guys. relax. <laughs> Probably. Like, even then, Blake I don't know. will be at the dance tomorrow. Uh, then we have a scene where Yang does something oh. horribly racist. <laughs> <laughs> racist if it worked <laughs> also i do love that someone pointed out that see-through technology see-through screen technology is fucking worthless yeah yes. like every every sci-fi thing uses yeah. it and it does look cool initially but god everyone's it... gonna see you scrolling through your stupid tumblers and tiktoks <laughs> god if i scroll yeah. through my I, I get anxious about anyone walking in on me scrolling on twitter because i never know what i'm gonna fucking see because i follow a lot of artists and a lot of them do not say for work stuff periodically. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, oh, am I just going to be scrolling and suddenly my family's going to come in and see me like looking at dicks? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Also, Hello. what do you we need to talk? I, I, I do love the delivery on that. Hello. Very, very musical. Very cute. Um, yeah. I, I thought that was kind of weird, but that's just me. It, it definitely sounded more like Barbara than Yang. That, uh, that, yeah. Uh, Excalibur. Yeah. Celtic explaining how he gets around copyright is like an anime character explaining why their overpowered anime ability and makes it sound <laughs> not overpowered. <laughs> we need, no, oh my god, we need an anime Tyson about character. editing videos you on YouTube. <laughs> yes. If I do this, <laughs> it's just like, I'm trying to think of like, my god, he's hotkeyed all of the <laughs> shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yang, if you All of them? Stop, you may as well just save your breath. I don't want you to stop. I want you to slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Blake, don't stop. Yeah, Blake, don't slow, uh, slow down. <laughs> God, I love Batman's review. It's so <laughs> Yeah. The, the delivery on that was really weird. So yeah, I can understand why people make jokes like that. <laughs> We don't. Yeah, maybe this was planned from the beginning, down. ladies and gentlemen. It's not Who a knows? luxury. It's a necessity. The necessity is stopping Torchwick. And we're going to. Oh, so you were just Googling on the school library computer. What were you doing yeah, you that was no going to stop Torchwick? You yeah. Yeah. You're Googling how to find Roman Got Torchwick. No lead. Where is Roman Torchwick? <laughs> Where is the White Fang? White Fang news. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Now I'm imagining like a, a a white fang news broadcast hosted by the testificates from Villager News. Hello, it is me, <laughs> Brother Sasquatch. 
of the <laughs> of the White Fang news. We are bringing you the hottest tips from our terrorist organization. <laughs> uh, Jake the Surgeon. Uh, or sorry, I forgot I nicknamed you Jake the Sturgeon. Uh, the biggest <laughs> lie this show told was that Blake could read. <laughs> oh my god. Ruby and I grew up in Patch, an island just off the coast of Vale. Yep. Our parents were huntsmen. Thanks for the geography. Our dad taught it signal, and our mom would take a monologue time. Kingdom. Yep. Her name was Summer Rose. Oh, yeah. And she was like, Super Mom. Yep. Pausing for copyright. Uh, super Mom, but you never we're talk never about, talk her, about her again when it's... until all your name. <laughs> and yes, yeah, somehow she is more important to Ruby and not you. Summer Summer Rose can never yeah. be Kyoko. Uh, Kyoko Honda, just you can't Fucking compare. Facts. You're, you're true. Yeah. Mad facts. <laughs> true. I don't she know if wishes. you know anything about Fruits Basket <laughs> Critter, but I do. They... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna say that's an easier recommendation. Like I supersede <laughs> freaking Slayers. Like Fruits Basket yeah. is definitely yeah. higher up. Um, yeah. Fruits Basket um, is fantastic. I watched I, it this year. I actually met the voice of uh, Hatsu Haru in o uh, Otakon this year. Oh, oh. Justin Cook, yeah. I got an autograph for him because he also um, voiced uh, Yusuke Yurameshi in um, Yu Yu Hakusho. Yurameshi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he but was yeah. a really cool guy. Um, Yeah, go ahead. He was uh, a really cool guy. Uh, that's that's awesome. Um, I, I was going to say that I, I, told, I told Kaiser this a couple of times that... I, I make a lot of comparisons between Ruby and Fruits Basket because a lot of people say, like, oh, uh, Ruby is supposed to be this flat static character. And it's like, well, uh, Toru is a flat static character. So, like, doing comparisons between Ruby and Toru, there's, there's really no similarities there. Um, especially when it comes right. to the fact that Ruby is also supposed to be a person that lifts up other people and inspires them and just like Toru does. But when you compare the two of them, there there really is no comparison. They they are not similar characters. Oh, yeah. The key at all to on a that static front. character is throwing things against them that challenges their static nature. That yep. that is the that it's the right. purpose you have with it. I mean, admittedly, once you get into like secondary and tertiary characters or, or tertiary, I mean uh, or even course cor what is the fourth quaternary no it'd be um quaternary it might be actually ter tetrapod tetr yeah whatever. you you said you you said you one said two theory, four and then four. three You're... so then i said five <laughs> <laughs> i'm a living monty python sketch um... <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh but it, it, the, the whole point is to like just slam them against things that challenge whether or not they change and the interest is whether or not they change or not um like that's that's, that's yes. the whole point and if you don't mm -hmm. actually challenge them with anything that actually challenges them like ruby doesn't have anything that actually challenges her morals up until i want to say mm -hmm. volume six yeah. Yeah. Volume, volume and then that's barely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's never addressed. Volume yeah, six, they actually they steal shit without any kind of really addressment of like it being crime. Um, then volume yeah. seven is them turning against Ironwood, which doesn't get addressed until volume eight, mm -hmm. and then that's where you get like. Right. It doesn't feel like Ruby questions herself about and making the even... right choice. Yeah. yeah. This this goes into this goes into why I believe. And I'm going to make a whole video about this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is in the works. Trust me. Th this is why I believe that Volume 9 fucking fails. Because the whole thing with Ruby's development up to this point, that is the thing that I was most looking forward to in that volume. And they fucking failed. What they did in Volume 8 with her plan had massive consequences that you can't just ignore. Right, and, and it had to impact her character in some major way. Like that's how that uh, you works. need you need to actually you need but to then... actually hold back for a moment because there's actually a problem with your perspective on that because it, yeah her plan got a lot of people killed oh, sure, yeah, yeah. but admittedly Ironwood's plan would have also gotten people killed so it was choosing two bad situations. The thing is 
they perceive it aside from the 20 or so people that fell off the pla- uh, fell off the platform as far and as the people to their that knowledge, got eaten by grim and people that got eaten by grim to their knowledge everyone in that final plan of theirs actually made it through the portal to vacuo from their perspective at least that's how they should be thinking about it fatman pointed this out when i was talking about weiss struggling and he was like no she shouldn't perceive that she should perceive it as if they succeeded in getting everyone out of atlas and it's like yeah they why don't they perceive it that way it's it's almost as if they know what happened mm-hmm. it's almost as yeah. if they know that everyone went <laughs> up in the desert right yeah just the I, I say it so many times that these characters just constantly read the script. Yep. They <laughs> they know everything that the writers know and it's really blatant when you see it on screen. And it's that's what yeah. makes it really bad. But anyway, yeah, to finish my point about Ruby and Fruits Basket, like Ruby is hard to see as a static character who influences people with the whole hope punk thing because she she barely goes against anything that challenges her beliefs like Toru does and she barely helps people with their issues like Toru does almost every single episode and yeah. volume 9 was supposed to be the point of like the end of Uh, season three where Toru is interacting with Akito and uh, getting her her safety kind of challenged with the idea of moving on from mother who who has been a constant influence of her life thus far and which is why I I'm really disappointed with how summer is handled because summer is almost a non-entity unless if something really dramatic needs to happen whereas with fruits basket which kyoko kyoko is something yeah. is something that is referenced or mentioned almost every single episode because kyoko is that such important a to part yeah she's that important to Toru. Yeah, she is such a big important. factor in her life she is the main reason that Toru does or anything really so comparing that they're it's just so disappointing in comparison. <laughs> yeah, not to say that, of course, you know, her character needs to be treated or utilized the same way as uh, Kyoko. But no. Summer, the, the lack of presence Summer has in the story, despite literally being at at least near the very core of Ruby's development, and it's literally... Her freaking visage is how she gets out of her funk in Volume 9. I would think that you would probably want to give that a little more importance than you did throughout this whole point. Yeah. And now Mm -hmm. that's not even getting to what they specifically did with her in Volume 9, which is honestly disgustingly (laughs) bad. Yeah. Uh, It's not necessarily the fact. She lied and had her secrets. Yeah. And she says, oh, I love you despite your flaws even though those flaws should be fixed, but we're not going to talk about that, so I'm going to do my thing now. Yeah, it's not necessarily the fact that that, uh, Summer isn't as prominent in Ruby's life as Kyoko was in Toru's. It's the fact that they are making it so that Summer is meant to be a prominent thing in both Ruby and Yang's life, and yet, despite that fact, they don't give her as much prominence as you would think because, like with Toru, she is such a prominent person, figure in her life. Therefore, she gets a lot of prominence. It's not the same with Ruby. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, continuing Which with Bubble. Uh, big... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and then, one day she left the Fire Nation and attacked. never came back. <laughs> it was tough. Ruby was really torn up, but... I think she was still Ruby was really too young. Yeah. Kind of it's weird seeing her like stand in front of Summer's grave and be like, hi, mom. It's like, you've never talked to her. <laughs> yeah, you've this said, is weird. She heard your first words and that was about it. The first love he'd lost. She was the second. The first was my mom. 
A bitch. What what a redundant statement. Uh, she she wasn't the first love that my father lost. She was the second. Yeah, that's usually what she wasn't the first means. <laughs> yes, that is how that works. <laughs> I, I like I like Blake's reaction when when Yang's like it was my mom and Blake's like what? I thought you were like whole blood. You guys sisters. were practically twins. I was that was actually so much fun to write that line in in volume one. Uh, one remaster is like when you're fleshing out scenes had that whole scene where i'm like oh they have their character scrapes and i had to fill it out with blake and yang it's like wait why are you worried about her she's like your twin isn't she like you're you're she assumes you're the same age it's like no yeah she, she got moved ahead two years it's like oh <laughs> blake's just like oh humans all look the same <laughs> 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 oh my god! No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, Kurt. Kurt, you need to get out. in the corner out. right now. Why did she leave you? That question. Why? I didn't know the answer, but I was determined to find out. It was all I thought about. I would ask anybody I could what they knew about her. Then... One day, I found something. What I thought was a clue that could lead me to answers. Or maybe even my mother. I would she found a photograph, and somehow you thought you could just go into the wilderness. And I, I don't understand what she found as a child that made her convinced that you do this. Yeah, like, a clue. It's like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> you need to give us more. It was a picture <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Uh, Thunder Spade to answer the question. Um, volumes two and three are planned to get remasters, but when that's happening and when volume seven, eight, and nine are happening, that's all up in the air at Kern. We're, we're, there's heavy discussion going on uh, between me and my fellow co writers. Um, all right. I waited for Dad to leave the house, put Ruby in a wagon, and headed out. Why'd you take your sister? Couldn't leave her home alone. Duh. <laughs> I was totally exhausted, but I wasn't going to let anything stop me. When we finally got there, I could barely stand. But I didn't care. I had made it. I made it to Brunswick. And then I saw them. Those burning red eyes. There we were. A toddler asleep in the back of a wagon and a stupid girl too exhausted to even cry for help. Yep. Accurate. This is yeah. a really romantic story yeah. she's telling Blake. <laughs> Incredible. Man, remember that time I was almost eviscerated by Beowulfs? Blake's just listen, off to the side, listen. just There's sitting in a no puddle, just like, Yang, take Blake me now! Here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, your tragic story of almost getting yourself and listen, your sister you... killed. This, she, I have soiled my panties. <laughs> Listen, we can't play kink shame, okay, people? <laughs> oh, fuck! Well, like I keep saying, they're trauma sexual. No, they, we got, they get together. We got hmm? hit, guys. Huh. Oh? Stream has been temporarily blocked because Damn. you detected video belonging to someone else. If you plan to continue, please ensure that. More info. Oh, God, it was it. this, huh? Oh, yep. This... Celtic anime power isn't that overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll be getting up that particular. Ah, uh, uh, no, I don't know if we're back or not. Are we back? Hello. I don't see anything. Your stream is no so longer far. being blocked due to copyright Hello. issues. Okay. All right, well, folks, I'm going to uh, okay. just get a little oh, thing there. in. In if I can find something in here. Uh, I just need an image somewhere. Uh, everyone chat amongst yourselves while I try and fix this. Uh, as as I was saying before we got the, the block, um, I kept making a joke in the last stream that the girls are trauma sexual. They, they get turned on uh, in their relationship because of traumatic things. And like... It, <laughs> Yep. So much about the relationship does not feel like the healthy standard for what they should be having for the relationship. Exactly. That's that's why I don't like the ship, because all of the major things that happen in their relationship 
is because of trauma. They their first major uh what is considered romantic scene is this scene right here, which is Yang explaining to Blake about her childhood trauma, and then all of the stuff with uh Adam coming in in volume three and cutting off Blake's arm and stabbing Blake and stuff. They bond over that, I guess. And then <laughs> it's the rest of it is just uh, sep separated uh, after their trauma and barely dealing with it. Then they come wow. back and they, they bond over their trauma some more until they can kill Adam. And then they bond over the, the trauma of murdering somebody for the first time. And then that's when they start to get together. <laughs> Also, that, like, it's, it's like the girl who always runs away and the girl who has abandonment issues. It's like, I don't, that doesn't seem like a really <laughs> healthy I combo. <laughs> like, I can under, I can, un no, it doesn't on the outset, but like, <laughs> I can understand how that can potentially work, mm -hmm. right? Because I think the big thing is, is that you can have um traumatic experiences be an influential i guess factor in a fictional relationship it's not impossible to do well whether or not you want to make it healthy or not is a depends on the context but it I can know, work know, know, know. the thing that, that the thing about it is is that you don't want it to be the only thing like the core aspect that makes these two characters who they are sure you can say that guts and Casca and berserk you know I guess trauma bonded in a way, but that's far from the foundation of their relationship. They had other interactions before this point, and even after that point, when they, uh, you know, became vulnerable with each other, they, uh, they, they interacted a lot more. They, they weren't immediately lovey dovey, and he, even then, there were some aspects of their relationship that became unhealthy, anyways. But even aside from that, we understand why they like each other. And there's no question as to how, how, what the evolution of that even is. So, but with Blake and Yang, they don't have that safety net. And I don't think the narrative did a good job with that. That's no. That's problem, I think. Not right, at right? all. And yeah. I, I don't trust Rooster Teeth Guitar. or their writers to be able to handle such a thing delicately. Well, you, 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 all you need to say is that I don't trust... Um, uh, Rooster Teeth to be as good as Kentaro Miura. God bless his soul. Um, <laughs> there we go. <sighs> that's all you need to say. Yeah. All right. I have no idea how that's going to work on the upload uh, on the VOD. All right. He served on a silver platter. But as luck would have it. Being very careful. Okay, we got Crow showing up. Yay, yay, yay. Crow! Oh, Woo! Sometime. Bro, back when he was good. <laughs> back when, when he wasn't a fucking waste. Yeah. Yeah. So did to me? Did, did I enter screen mode? What the hell? Yeah, let's just fix it. Okay. Um. Ah. 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 Fuck. Did anyone remember what time code we were at? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> about halfway uh, in. Uh, yeah, more than half. <laughs> a little more halfway, I think. Oh wow! Oh perfect! Oh, that's there we perfect. Go. Damn. <laughs> yeah. There Actually, that might be the exact halfway point. The stubbornness should have gotten us killed that night. Yeah, probably should have. You're a fucking yeah. idiot. I'm sorry that happened to you, and I. <laughs> that you're to home, but this is different. I'm not a child, and this isn't justice or your answers. This I is th this is also Blake <laughs> dismissing Yang now. Like how Yang was like, everything's fine. Yeah. Like now no, it's like yeah. oh, this isn't like that. <laughs> I I do this like is more that. understandable this one, I think, because she's she's not I, in the right yeah. state of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do like the the line delivery of that in in just how dismissive she is. I'm sorry that happened to you but <laughs> I, it's like i don't see how this relates yeah yeah she's like this this is completely random and it has nothing to do with this current situation because i am not a fucking child do you are you equating me to being a child yang <laughs> i haven't to this day i still want to know what happened to my mother and why she left me but i will never let that search control me oh. Okay, and... We're going to find the answers we're looking for, Blake. But if we destroy ourselves in the process, then what good are we? I, I feel it's... like there's a lot better, a lot 
you could, better way oh, for it to convey probably, this information? Yeah, probably a better step. There's probably a way you could have connected that better than... I almost died as a child because I was a fucking idiot. Maybe don't be a... I mean, I guess it connects yeah. all right. It's just... It, mm -hmm. It's weird because it has... It needs so much preamble to get to the point to explain things to Blake that it feels like you could have just gone a different direction. You could use a children's book for this instead. Yeah. Yeah. The, the little it, fire dragon that could. It, it really just feels like an excuse to give this backstory because there was no other way to do it. So they just shoehorned it into the scene. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I'm the only one who can do this. I don't understand. No, you don't understand. If Roman tortured... Okay, I'm annoyed that they have the fire effect without the actual like special effect. They just have the sound effect. You mean the... Oh, yeah, the sound effect. Yeah. 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 What would you do? I'd fight him. You'd lose. I can't stop him. You can't even. Okay. Uh, physical I, abuse. I had lovely. never forgot. I, I never remembered that Blake actually <laughs> pushes back in the weirdest fucking way possible. Because, like, she's trying yeah. to shove Yang away. So, Yang pushing her a second time, I thought, was overkill until I realized, oh, no, Blake actually shoved back and she was, like, so limp wristed with it that Yang's like, what the fuck? Stop. <laughs> you, you, you are like I was trying to prove a point. Now I'm doubling down. Even stop me. See, you can tell. Okay, I was about to make a very edgy joke there. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about crime statistics. Ahead, I'm not. I'm not going harder. to. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay. I did not know. I did not know about that. domestic <laughs> abuse. <laughs> Hey, no, your play there, buddy. I thought you were talking about something. <laughs> uh, I disavow, ladies and gentlemen, for the sake of the I don't know the crime the statistics. Stream, like, I stand by them. Coward. Kaiser Coward. <laughs> just please, get some rest. Not it, just for you. It, it feels disingenuous because it was it, it's like oh I'm gonna hug you and be sweet, but you were just being violent towards him. Yeah, like it, it feels like you just Jeez, threatened like Blake. To you know, not... <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Sounds like something. Yeah, Weirdly enough, and I showed the scene to Twilight, and she 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 had at least one gripe about it. Uh, I remember that, which is there's a great scene in season one of uh, Gundam Witch from Mercury, um, which okay. Ken and Yuri couple. And it's at the very end of the first season where the two characters have, like, Suleta, the, the more uh, skittish of the two, has been feeling like she's a burden on people. She's been avoiding um, Miorine, who is her fiancé, and they're not really lovers at this point, necessarily, but you can tell there's definitely an affection building between the two of them. There's this great scene where, um, while trying to avoid Miorine... Suleta ends up engaging in this massive chase across a small across a, a span of space station and Mirina manages to, to trick her into coming back for her and being kind and she tackles her and she actually starts hitting Suleta like in this very like weak kind of like limp wristed way in like a I'm upset with you but I'm going to just like uh uh, uh like that kind of thing. Like, I don't know how to describe it other than it, it's not really, you, you can tell it's not a serious, like, level of abuse. But then Suleta says something incredibly stupid. Like, she's basically saying something that, that goes against, I'm trying to remember the exact context. But that's when Miorine actually, like, rears back and genuinely decks Suleta in the gut. Being like, you're a fucking idiot if you think that. Um... And while it definitely does have like underpinnings of like abusiveness, you can definitely you could definitely make the argument there if you want. You can tell that it's all coming that both of them know where all this is coming from, and they're just been dancing around the real problems. You can you can tell that it's a scene that was written by men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because oh because God. men. <laughs> Men, men's first thing is to go for like the the violent physical contact. It's it's the same scene that that makes Digimon survive so funny when the main character and Arata have like a physical fist fight. Even even if it is the female protagonist uh, who only appears in the the remakes of that 
game because it was originally only a male character you mm-hmm. can tell that it was meant to be a scene for a male character because a a female character wouldn't get into a full-on fist fight with another person <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the um it it, it, it it lines up with the characterizations i'd argue when it comes down to those although you i mean you could probably still bring up that argument anyway you said i had my gripes with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you did. I part of it. I I remember the 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 grape that you had in particular was the fact that the reaction that Solita had getting punched in the the chest wasn't proper because she wasn't reacting yeah. at all, which probably fair, probably fair. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, while while it wouldn't be as as um dramatic as being kicked in the balls, it is still a very sensitive area with a lot of uh with a lot of nerve endings. So it is a very tender area, Fair. at the very least. It is still leagues in a way yeah. better than whatever the hell this is. This is just a yeah. mess. <laughs> like, the, the, the through line through that entire scene makes a lot of sense. Like, the, every single line of dialogue has a logical flow through. This, they're really reaching to try and get where they want to go with all of this. Yeah. And yeah. What, what, the thing is, like, I can recognize this. I've done this in my own writing. And oftentimes I've had to, like, go back and double back and be like, I have to, like, rework, I have to uproot this and rework it. I had to do that for the volume six, um, the volume six, uh, 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 Silver Eyes scene where they're talking about it. That had some logical leaps that were made that. that I had to fix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's see. But for the people you care about. I still need to watch Witch from Mercury, by the way. It's, I still it's, need to see it. The second, the first season's really good. Second season gets a bit messy. I'll save you a dance. Oh, so kind of like Iron Blood Orphans. Got it. Oh, she winked. Pure love. Yeah. Only love. <laughs> you, so, <laughs> so, okay, here's the question. How do we take this scene? Um, I personally don't so... see it as romantic at all, Neither which do I. is, it sucks because this is like the Me Bumblebee either. scene, the first big one for them. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that this is more of a friendship establishing, um, when, where they're breaking the boundaries from being like casual friends to being best deeper. friends yeah yeah right. deeper deeper friends with yeah. a deeper connection it's it's not necessarily a romantic right. scene it's just there are different layers to a person's relationship than whether or not they are uh acquaintances and whether or not they want to bone each other and a lot of people don't seem to understand yeah. that and I, it, right. it is I, I think a lot of people see the wink and they do dance briefly and they conflate that idea with romance. But I think the true Mm -hmm. point was that Yang wanted to show Blake that she was going to be there for her if she needed support uh, with whatever it is she's going through. Not necessarily romantically, but just emotionally. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where like... My issue with it is it's actually ringing to me of like we needed something a little bit before this to show what the normalcy for their friendship was, but we haven't really gotten that. We, you, we, we don't yeah, exactly. We don't uh, get to see Yang and Blake in why, a vacuum. This is why the actor since the Emerald Forest. Yeah, just being casual. Yeah, ever since then, this never freaking happened. Like, I think that um, yeah, I think that's the main issue there. That causes all of this confusion that literally does not happen in, you know, most shows that do stuff like this. Granted, it's a lot of different contexts. Either they do tend to have a much more, like, faster-paced structure when it comes to these relationships uh, compared to this. But putting that aside, though, I, I like, I understand why... Um, people kind of consider this potentially romantic, I guess, because I think this is a problem that I have with people post hoc rationalizing these things, which is that they, they see the end, they see the end. They, they see the result, the conclusion of their relationship. And 
they are looking at the previous moments as build up towards it, which, okay, fine. I guess you can kind of call it that. But they not only, it's not just enough for them to see it as a build up and, you know, showing different evolutions of their relationship. They have to see it as romantic specifically, and that's the problem. The pro mm -hmm. like the route that Rooster Teeth want to go, and let's say hypothetically they succeed in doing, is having them be casual friends, close friends, not really friends, because you know after Volume Three happens, they they get separated, get into a uh, 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 like they get in, in, into a bad spat for understandable re reasons they get back in each other's good graces arguably closer than they were before and then we get to the romance there like that's that's the leaving behind any of the problems that we have with it that's the structure that they have that's the structure that they are putting down right in front of our eyes but the issue is is that there is no in between um for a lot of these like segments these phases in their relationships so instead of gradually getting to them we're just changing out like a different decal on our car <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's very disappointing too because a lot of a lot of arguments when they say um like to to defend these these scenes and the the lack of development and stuff is like well it's not meant to be a romance it's only the romance is supposed to only be a side thing it's like yeah but the the development is still the same regardless of whether or not it is the main focus or not mm -hmm. you still have to put it's, in the yeah, you still have to put in the legwork. It it just depends on how much of a focus you're going to put on the romance as opposed to all of these other elements. And you have to balance them out properly while still developing them in a proper order and, and fashion. Uh, do do do. Oh, uh, and then they are dancing. Yeah. And... It's over. And also, Yang walks really <laughs> awkwardly. Yang's model looks wrong. I don't think it's her actual head. I think they used someone else's head model. And just put, like... And it's not even her same eye shape as normal, either. <laughs> Interesting. No. no. I think you handled it well. Uh. I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure everything will be alright, Ruby. Oh! I know what will cheer you up. What's that? I don't know yet. Dad sent it to us. I thought we could open it together. So this is the uh, this is the scene where we learn that Blake hates dogs. Yang owns a dog, and thus they are now incompatible. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would happen if they just are like, yeah, it's Dad's mail. We can probably get to it in like three days. <laughs> this is why it would have been fine. He has all those cans in there. <laughs> I know that is the funniest joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the kind of zaniness we don't get in Ruby anymore. Yeah. I know, I miss it. <laughs> so I gotta wonder, like, why? Your father or your dog? <laughs> your father. Are you telling me that this mangy, drooling... Pause for copyright as Zwei stirs into your soul. Yeah. <laughs> I I still lament the the Zy X Ruby fanfics that were absolute no. garbage that we couldn't Stop. read because why did you have to remind me of those? Why did you have to remind me those exist? Okay, Zy is an alarmingly popular tag. <laughs> on <Ew>. ew. <laughs> ew, ew. <laughs> I, I just was lamenting the fact that we couldn't find like a good one that actually got going a good one oh, <laughs> who would have guessed we, we, we mean good in the sense of a bad fanfic <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not one, not one that was like, yeah, I'm planning on it, and here's like 
five chapters where I'm just talking about the the profiles of the characters, and then you, and then the fic is abandoned before you even get to the actual writing. Yeah, it's you almost realize. like writing is hard for some people. <laughs> yeah, writing actual writing is hard for some people. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, we can't exactly leave him here while we're gone for a week. A lot of volume two has basically nothing between Blake and Yang, except for the one yeah. dance moment. Oh. <laughs> yep. Critter, yep. if you think that's got nothing, just wait till you see volume three. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. So I'm sending you yeah. to Zara and close is all the food you should need. Love you both. Tai Yang. Wow, look at that. A million dollars in dog food. <laughs> that, I bought some Pepsi today. Do you want to know how much a 12-pack of Pepsi costs here? Uh, the States. In so, the States. um, $9. Uh, no, $7. $12.99. It, it cost me 7 bucks. It cost, actually, it cost me 14 for two packs of 12. And normally, it would cost maybe 4 or 5 it is getting fucking expensive out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that settles it. Come on, girls. So I'll be here when we get back. <laughs> oh, I'll miss you so much. We're going to be best friends. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love Weiss just being cute over his wife. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but why, why send... Why in the first place? That's what I want to know. Because oh, he was going, right. he had to be out of town. So, oh, okay. But wait, no, wait a minute. If Zwei can take care of himself in the dorm room, he couldn't take care of himself at home. Yeah. Well, I guess. No. Yeah. <laughs> Arguably, maybe Ty was out for a couple of weeks or months, as opposed to just a couple of days. To to be fair. Maybe. Uh, this this was one of the volumes that I haven't actually seen. I haven't seen volumes two, four, and five. What? Oh, so, yeah, you have what? watched five. Oh, you haven't watched. Okay, uh, you you skipped two of the worst. Yep. Um. Uh. I I thought that I had watched volume two. So during Meadows' uh watch through of it, I just didn't join, and I joined for volume three, and then I had. I think I had a headache uh, when they were going to start volume four. So I I decided to bop out after about half an episode because the migraine was just starting to get really bad. And then the next day uh, they were starting volume five. And then I was just like feeling so worn out because half half of the stream is just telling people to shut the fuck up and not talk constantly over the episodes so that we could actually understand what's going on um so i just <laughs> felt so I just nom, felt nom, so nom. Tired. that requires twilight to have been a ruby fan to begin with she's not uh, I'm, I'm not um i don't even know how i got here and became <laughs> friends with all these ruby fans. <laughs> <laughs> it is legitimately uh, amazing how it just like fate turns yeah, yeah. Like the the only reason why I ended up in the tunnel in the first place was because I actually was interested in talking to Fat Man and Raymond about writing. Uh so I joined the Tundra for writing purposes. It had nothing to do with Ruby. It's just that I happened to find their videos because of Ruby. Uh because I wanted to I wanted to see if I was not the only person who would ever criticize Ruby. Dedarex. Her name is Tai Yang. Or her name is Yang Zhao Long. Her last name is Zhao Long. Her dad is named Tai Yang. One word. It, it, it's just, it's a similar sounding name because it has Yang in it, but it's not. Yeah. It. I still find it really stupid. It is that, weird that you have a a person it's named Tai Yang and then his child is just Yang. Why? It's like dragon and great dragon. It's like, wow, man, you conceded much? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like naming your child after yourself. Um, yeah. Why do you mention we did not need to know there were bestiality fix about Zwei and Ruby? Now, to be fair, I never mentioned anything about bestiality. Nope. <laughs> 
I feel like uh, that, that is all on you. Up. I only mentioned the popularity yeah. of the time. Y'all know what you were doing. Y'all know what y'all doing. I'm, I'm pretty on. sure that one of the fix that I tried to get us to read before we realized that it wasn't actually a fanfic was actually humans. Why? Yeah, it was. Uh, he became human, I think, at some point. I yeah. He was just a dog boy like like Blake is a cat girl. Ruby, I don't like that smile. Anyway. Quiet, quiet, <laughs> please. Mm. Yep. Oh, did you include all of Ozpin's speech no, just because no, Blake actually, and Yang are standing next I, to I, each I'm other? I'm pretty sure I cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, there we go. See? To tolerate this oppression, but neither with the generations to come. There we go. <laughs> okay, thank God. <laughs> Fuck that speech. <laughs> also, the generations to come. This is perfect. All we Just have to do is shadow hunts been working in the southeast. Yeah, we'll follow them around my day and give them the slip at night. Let's what? check. As you know, Bob, we're we're hunt huntresses in training, we so go. we gotta shadow oh, these we're huntsmen. Find out. <laughs> well, it's in the southeast. <laughs> Sounds perfect. I'm I'm glad they they're contributing to the conversation by just saying things as opposed to yep. contributing. Yep. It's like when you have a it's Listen, like when you play a JRPG and you have too many characters and they all need oh, to say something yeah. during the final fight. It's like we got this. Let's go. It's like okay, I would love to do all... like a, a too many cooks type <laughs> deal where like you just have like one scene of a JRPG. And like every character needs to give their input on something, so but you just keep going. It just keeps going where it's like a new character. <laughs> every and it, like you hit every single possible archetype, including like the off the off brand archetypes that you get. Like you just just keep on going. Oh man! First year students, Quadrant Five. Who doesn't love Quadrant Five? Everyone loves Quadrant Five. Wonderful. Any other ideas? We mail ourselves there. <laughs> uh, Quadrant 3 uh. has a lot more uh, nostalgia to it for me. I've always been more of a Quadrant 7 fan, personally. <laughs> it seems that particular region is rather popular. In fact, I have the sneaking suspicion. Keep making sure we're, we're still good. Because we're not really commenting over this because Blake yep. and Yang aren't doing jack shit. Yeah. <laughs> you will make your way there no matter which job you choose. Yeah, literally. Why are you glaring at her? Let's make out. Why are you glaring at her? What? Okay. Yeah. Osman is like, like uh, I have the secret like suspicion you will, you'll sneak out and wind up there somehow anyway. And so they're all glaring at Ruby like she was going to be at fault for. You are all on board with this plan. Yep. Every single one of you just mentioned how on board. Why are you glaring at Ruby like she's going to be some mastermind? You're all yeah. in on this. It, it's so weird yeah. that it kind of feels like there are several episodes that are missing from this show that kind of goes into the shenanigans that Team Ruby goes through. Like, and I can, get. I can feel like this might be referencing that she went off to go fight yeah. Cinder, but that wasn't even like. Her fault, really? She saw someone doing something suspicious, no. went to investigate, and then got into a fight. Cinder. Yeah, she Sorry, was yes, doing Cinder. her job. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, she was doing her job. Like, this goes into that. Remember that scene later oh. on in Volume 5 where, like, oh, it's implied that, oh, you know, Team Ruby get away with things when they are in trouble? It's like... And I'm all like, when the fuck does that even happen? It's like, it's in, in volume three, in the very beginning, Nora is like, Glinda barely yells at us anymore. And I'm like, when has Glinda ever done anything <laughs> in regards to any of your characters? <laughs> it, it's like the, it's like there are several hundred pages of fanfic that they wrote for their own show that just never made it on screen. Mm -hmm. But then they also didn't bother to no, actually release the fanfic that. notes either. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> never makes you say that. I'm still curious as to how you all found yourselves at the docks last semester. I'm interested to know how you really learned about a hideout in the southeast. And I certainly wonder why witnesses reported seeing robots and robots in a dance club some time ago. 
did I? <laughs> that's right i would like to know what? why there are eyewitnesses to that too because i have no idea what the fuck <laughs> you're talking about what do you mean robots and, and rose petal you said, what do you mean <laughs> ruby was nowhere near the dance club the robot thing happened out on a fucking highway what the fuck are you gone about <laughs> what's in the cup yeah what? what's in the cup Ruby's like any rose petal thing always gets blamed on me. <laughs> Completely unrelated incident. A cherry tree was... fell over once, and I got blamed for crushing an entire school. I mean, it just it happened. <laughs> they aren't even the same color. This, uh, this I'm is... red. They're lightish red. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I just finished talking about how it feels like they have several hundred pages of fanfic that just never got published into the actual show. And then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, fun fact, there are actual ships in the real world called Ladybug, Oil Tanker, White Rose, Cargo Ship, and Bumblebee, Bulk Carrier. That's amusing. Me. Hey. Hmm. I doubt I'll ever find the exact answers I'm looking for. So, how about this? Instead of waiting for you... How about this? Room, how about this? Why don't we Make sure none of you move at all. Stock yeah. still. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were shifting very slightly. No. <laughs> I don't know if I would call it breathing, but they were they were moving. They, that, that takes two fucking seconds to animate. You down. Thank you, Professor. Do not thank me for this. You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally sending you to your death. Don't thank me. Teamwork and persistence have carried you far. Oh. But you must understand, the things that await you beyond the protection of the kingdom... They handle it easily. Stay close to your huntsman at all times. It's painted like the hardest part of them going on this mission is dealing with Ublek. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly as he says, he will be leading you on this mission, and he can have you sent back to Beacon if he finds your skills to be unsatisfactory. It's really weird that they kind of imply that TB struggled, but, but we never actually. See. Volume one. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but only at the very beginning of volume one. That wasn't exactly uplifting. But it's the truth. It's gonna be tough, but I know we can do it. Hey, Team Coffee is back. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Why do you have a voice like? <laughs> also, he, oh my god, the even... mic quality. Yeah. He also doesn't even talk to Team Coffee or anything. <laughs> also, I love the idea that everyone's like, oh, Team Coffee is back. Like, there's some kind of school celebrities. Yeah, it's never that's elaborated weird. on the book, for the record. The books don't even think mention anything like that. Have have they been mentioned before outside of that one that Weiss was talking about? This about is the, the first dance? time. Yeah, this this is the second time that Team Coffee is mentioned. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. So no one even <laughs> no one would know. Who who are they? Yeah. What? Why is it so important that they came back? Velvet, are you okay? I'm fine. I had Yatsuhashi to look out for me. Your mission was supposed to. I'm vaguely video. Australian. What happened? I mean, nothing happened. I thought she was Australian. She, yeah, she is Australian. No, but that's that, she, I, she seems to try to hide her accent. It feels like she's hiding her accent in some of the line reads. I, I find that really funny because she still says in Australian, which Fat Man didn't understand, so I made fun <laughs> of him for it. <laughs> it was just. There were just so many. Also, why does she have an Australian accent? She's from Atlas. Oh, there's no rhyme or reason for any of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> you you think that Remnant has culture? Raymond. <laughs> Fair. Really? Yeah, what? Come on, that. man. Be safe, okay? Yeah, with the time. Oh, she totally dog. just did the fucking Cap Commander Shepard. I should go. <laughs> <laughs> How you end a conversation and she is the real protagonist. She had the dialogue wheel and she's like, I don't have anything to talk about with you guys. I'm like, oh, just like who are these background <laughs> characters? I should go. <laughs> I'll leave you back to your calibrations. We can do this. We've never backed down before, and we're not going to start now. Right. What, what Besides, does that even it fucking? It will only mean? be us out there. 
We'll be fighting alongside a genuine huntsman. Yes, you will, and you're going to hard cut to Ublek, and you're going to be disappointed because you apparently don't see your teachers as huntsmen. Which, yeah. uh, you know, another, I, I, I think that's one for me to mention, Mike, your academia. One of the things I appreciate, Izuku geeks out over every single teacher. Mm -hmm. Because they're true. a goddamn hero. That is true. Ublek's not as hot I'll as Glinda, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, that man is a bombshell. Oh. I'm also wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying. Ublek is totally <laughs> best boy. <laughs> yes. Uh, ready to fight for their lives. Why also, is it... Leon asked, the hell you mean Velvet is from Atlas? What, when was that ever, ever implied? Um, the books. I forget. It's the books. Was it said that she... Oh, from the books. Yeah, her dad okay. is actually a scientist of an Atlas. That's why everyone... Okay. Knows. There's that guy with the dad's best... That best dad ever mug or whatever up in Atlas. In Number Marvel. one dud is what it says. <laughs> Number one dud. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Think, everyone head cannons. That's Velvet's dad. Even though I don't think that's the case. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Right. She has a very yeah. unusual yeah. family relationship. Girl, like, as you've opted her family is separated. Her, fa her parents are separated. I can assure you, we will not be establishing. Did you include all of Ublek's speech just because Blake and Yang They're are here. standing kind of near They're each other? They're here doing <laughs> jazz. Yeah, it's almost like <laughs> it counts. It's almost like you want this stream to be closed down again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check. Make sure. It's getting so late. <laughs> I, I think we'll call it after volume two. I think we're I think we'll be good at that. Yeah. Uh, we can we can get two yeah, volumes yeah. done per stream. Yeah. That that works out. Come now, children. Yeah, yeah, with, uh, honestly, but with volume three and volume five, we're we're going to get through them real fucking fast. So Oh probably. Oh yeah. Four <laughs> and five are really quick. Yeah. Four and five are gonna be. Oh yeah, because they're separated. The yep. So yeah. <laughs> Like well, yeah, the problem is, yeah. I think in volume four, so we can just get there's a lot of they done. could be thinking about one another kind of bullshit going. Mm -hmm. Say it out loud; it sounds worse. Ah, uh, okay. Can we just accept that they're not doing anything in these scenes and just move forward? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just do it. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So one thing that I want to do with Fractured Fairy Tales is just explore a little bit about how. And I was thinking about that with this scene. It's just like, this is the only time that we see it, kind of, and it's just the time. Mm hmm. I fancy myself more of an intellectual, but I can assure you, as a huntsman, I've had my fair share of tussles. Like the mushroom? Those are truffles. Like the sprout? Those are Brussels. I fucking hate, I hate that, that joke. joke. I, I hate that. I, joke. I, oh I hate God. how well, flanderized I, Ruby's intelligence is. I forgot is. that she's, was the joke. I, I forgot. She's, 15 going on 16. She understands what those fucking are. Yeah. Yeah. So dumb. Yeah, I, I don't like I the way normally naive Would you count that get Bumblebee wise? Because they're like, both like basically doing the same thing in tandem. Yo, it was so hot uh, when we bonded over telling your sister how stupid she is. <laughs> I know, I know it's fucking stupid. Come on. <laughs> Y'all said it, not me. What does history have to do with this? I want a preposterous question, you silly girl. Why history is the backbone of our I, I Why is this pool. here? <laughs> Secret... Because they're technically in the sea. Secret the headcanon. Ublek oh. hates Weiss. He grills Weiss constantly. <laughs> he just Honestly, hates her. it deserves. <laughs> He should have been the one with the port speech. Yeah. Can you imagine Oop like giving Weiss a dress down Ooh, about how stupid maybe, she yeah. is? And like the dangerous positions that she Dude. takes in their history? That would be amazing. Dude, okay, that would be the roast of what That's right. It was an expansion of Vale. But in the end, it was overrun by Grimm and fenced off from the rest of the city. Oh, right. unfortunate. And now it stands abandoned. It's yep. a dark reminder. And a likely place for a hideout. Precisely. I, I like how you could have gotten more there with Blake being interested in what Yang is saying because she's A, not native of the Vale, so she wouldn't know any of this. 
So she'd be interested in that. And B, you could see potentially mm-hmm. the cogs in her brain turning as to like, oh, yeah, no, this would be a perfect place for a secret base. But we don't see that. We get a cutaway, then we cut back. No. But we we definitely needed the truffles Brussels joke. <laughs> yeah. Also, why do you it's have it's Brussels? Top tier Brussels is a comedy. place. Okay. <laughs> it's named after a Brussels sprouts are named after a location. You got to be careful with that shit. <laughs> Man, I love not having to really animate anything. <laughs> Just pausing for copyright, making sure we're nice and safe and comfortable. Hell How's yeah. everyone doing? Everyone grabbing a good drink? Yeah, that's good. All right. We have two. I finished my Gatorade. <laughs> oh, I finished my drinks a long time ago. I, I was going to say, I uh, when I went Same down to here. get my drink a few I hours had ago, three I three different had, drinks. I filled up my 2,000 milliliter, my, my two liter bottle, and I've already drained it to the bottom. <laughs> and you, you you appreciate us chat we suffer <laughs> for you <laughs> i i am i am on time and again occasion Wait. consider just running a pipeline right here from the faucet just into my room yep i mean that would be very we useful. shall bubble <laughs> but i imagine that yep. you'll you'll have a lot more trouble because knowing you you're going to get that i told you that you can poison yourself with water and then you'll poison by drinking oh uh, the, water. The hearth guy, uh, as they say in The Three Musketeers, permission granted! <laughs> That's uh-huh. a good film. Point is, people, we shit on Bumblebee so you don't have to. <laughs> Behold. The Ruby fandom. <laughs> <laughs> Volume 10. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> No, 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 that's... No, you're confusing that with the Rooster Teeth headquarters building. <laughs> yep. I thought I told you to leave all your bags I mean, fair... You know, honestly, downtown Austin. <laughs> Period. I remember... I, remember yeah, yo. I don't know if it was on stream or not, but Tom talked about how he went down for RTX last year, or this past year, and how yep. basically a lot of the hopping spots that used to be down there are basically boarded up and, like, caution taped off. Like, it Ew. was just bad apparently it's like that's cool. like gentrified area has gone completely to hell jesus yeah it does not sound like i want to move to dawson texas anytime soon dawson <laughs> hadn't told us to listen to you yet so i didn't she's not wrong <laughs> very well ruby leave your bag here we can pick it up upon our return but i love Ubi so like, much <laughs> possibly have in that bag that could be so important to bring it with <laughs> <laughs> We're here. God, I missed the comedy of early Ruby. They're, they're, yeah. they're, for their misses, they had some good hits. I'll take a million truffles, yeah. Brussels yeah. jokes if I got half as many jokes like that anymore. Yes. <laughs> and you brought a dog. Genius! Canines are historically known for the perceptive nose and heightened sense of sound, making them actually. <laughs> Yang. I, you know, he was like, hot tip. I used to hate Zwei because I thought he was like everything wrong with the comedy of the show in terms of like it broke reality. Like it would, it, the comedy would often like bend reality around it as opposed to like any kind of substantial reality. I miss these days. <laughs> I look back and I miss these days. That these are the you, problems yes. I considered. You didn't. You, you didn't realize how good you had it back then. I didn't. <laughs> I'm a genius. Yeah. So, what are your orders, Doctor? Because you don't know what you got till it's gone. The side of this art. Poor swine. For grim activity. Now there are several possible explanations Poor for this behavior. One of which being grim. Uh, what? Grim, a creature of grim, approximately 100 yards from us at this very moment. Oh man. What? Stop. Huh? 
Oh, I oh. love how all the, the Beowulfs had goofed up tails. Oh, yeah. And there's like three different commentary tracks for Volume 2. And in every single one of them, everyone points out how the Beowulfs' tails are goofed up. I'm like, maybe we should have fixed that before we, I don't know, shipped the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you could have also fixed it for Blu rays. I do like for this shit. Oop, like. And now they've seen us. What? And now they've seen us. I take it tracking is out of the question. An accurate assumption. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, the pacing of Ooplex jokes are all pretty good. What's the plan then? So there's fighting now, and it's over. Piece of cake. Yep, now it's just cutting Excellent through a lot of. Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any signs of criminal operations. It's just a lot of nothing. They're not doing anything. Yeah, it was just the prom. That was the only <laughs> time. Hey, Doc, you know, I was actually looking forward to seeing you three set up camp in that building. Oh, well, and please do make sure. Well, they, they, there they are in the background. Yep. <laughs> there's more. Because we, we get, sure are. Yep. Just the standing. campfire scene. Earlier, about we're standing and we're waiting. <laughs> Yeah. Are you are you I sure that it's just not me. like cut up every moment where I know what I one do, or both of them are just on screen? No, it's well, it. I I'm pretty damn sure that it's every single moment that they are on screen together, or or again potentially thinking of each other. But that's oh, okay. that's it. That that was my criteria. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know why we're here, right? Was that a meaningful conversation between them? Oh, Were they wonderful. kind of sharing their doubts? Who the fuck cares? We know why we're here. <laughs> I would say it's yeah. them bonding with Weiss. Yeah. Like, the three of them, yeah. specifically. It's B Schneez. Right. <laughs> Yo. Damn it. I want to yeah, leave this scene, okay even though I'm going to be within earshot of, like, of this entire scene. Hey. Did Ubalik ask you why you wanted to be a huntress? Yeah. I mean, what did you tell him? Hmm. No, he didn't. Weird. Oh well. Good night, guys. I so concerning, Ruby. So concerned, Ruby. Your you sister's clearly thinking about something. I would ask why. Yeah. It's not even in character for her. Just be all like nonchalant about that. Z Zell never. over here trying to be like, as you can see, the. It's no the, weird. Yang is positioned closer to Blake's feet because she's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she's trying to get a better view of that Bella Booty in its natural <laughs> state. Don't worry. Things will be better tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, is Always. this supposed to be a somber scene? Yeah, it's weird. I guess. I uh, only spent like a day or two over here, but I don't know. Man. Jurassic Park, this is not. <laughs> God, I forgot how much this drags. Yeah. <laughs> Oop, like, really is the light of our life. Dragon, yeah. dragon, rock the dragon. Oh, so Yang, Yang asked Blake if she was awake. Why do you think he asked us about being a huntress? Like, what was he trying to say? Uh, he was trying to ask you why you... He was trying to determine your willingness to do things that are probably going to be hard. Maybe he yeah. Was you think? Yeah, what the fuck? No. Also, Kaiser. Uh, it's not my, not my Dragon Ball. Of course I'm awake. You don't talk That's right, she had the Canadian. <laughs> yeah. With, with, the actu with the actual, with the actual proper spacing. voice actors. <laughs> Okay, so oh, excuse let's me. try and like speed up a little. What is there in this scene to talk about necessarily? Because they're they're it's these three bonding over their mutual reasons for fighting. Meanwhile, Blake is also having like kind of a meltdown over the fact that she always runs despite the fact that she doesn't. Yeah, yeah. she kind of alludes to Adam yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> We, she hasn't ever addressed like this is the second time this volume and we're near the end that she's ever referenced him and never has it been out loud 
Because yeah. earlier, Ublek was like, what are right. you fighting for? And she's like, equality. Oh and he's like, Fuck. and being a huntress will do that? And she doubted herself, and now she's suddenly bringing up Adam. And it doesn't really correlate. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? That says a lot about her convictions that were supposedly so strong before this point. Like, where is this coming from? Mm hmm the academy because i knew huntsmen and huntresses were regarded as the most noble warriors in the world why are they what's going on fucking i just i don't know why with my laptop oh well kaiser's dead uh, <laughs> uh, rip rip wait, the robot I'm, I'm not dead yet wait can you hear me i can hear it, you. It, you sometimes are... i can still hear his voice <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put your screen behind everyone else's so you're not obstructing them. There we go. That black void doesn't it, it, Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, sweet, right, we I'll got the right void there. on stream. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to get the void? <laughs> Man, it's always so busy. The hell is hold on. I swear to god, if you disconnect and just completely upset how I have everything set up, I'm going to be so angry. <laughs> we are so man, close that depends to the on end. how this freaking laptop is gonna take it you're so close at to least, the end of volume two at least critter and i aren't broken up now that kaiser is kind of gone but... yeah yeah <laughs> i might always i might need good, to actually restart this really oh no when i leave the academy well um how can oh, I... god damn it what did I just say? <laughs> Look at it. Everything's messed up now. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Twilight's where, where Critter was. Critter's where Twilight was. Oh, no. <laughs> we just teleported, man. It was a magic trick. <laughs> Critter's gone, got black spots now. She she's halfway <laughs> transformed into fudgemental bitter. Oh no! That's you, you've summoned. <laughs> oh. Honestly, I I'm starting to drag and I'm getting hungry. Mhm. Mm it's like dinner time for me. <laughs> dinner time um... for me was three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> my my just... family have eaten. I have not. We could just like. Oh, I look awesome with the black spots. Oh, oh I, I opened the stream to look. Oh, I look awesome. We could just wrap it up here. I, I nothing I else think happens. We can for get the rest through of volume, volume two. two. We can at least put touch notes on it because I feel like I mean. Not that any of our detractors will watch this, but at the very least, we can say we've gotten through all of the volume and actually made comment on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Um, I'm I'm not hungry at the moment. It's only 6 p.m. for me. I know it's later for you guys. That's <laughs> the unfortunate thing about us being in We've been going for, what, six hours? We have. We have. No, wait. Five, five hours? Oh, no. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Five, a little bit over five hours. Yeah, um, because we, because we started at one. It's well, gone. <laughs> Kaiser's gone. <laughs> Kaiser's back. Okay, we're back. I can hear you guys. Woo! Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do her again. Get, get your. Shit. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, one minute. Uh... Shoot, for some reason that thing closed down? What? Oh. Yeah, what closed uh, down? Oh, fuck. When, when a lot crashes. The right crashes. tuber. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, five hours? Yeah, five hours. Yeah. The food called. We're... Them. We've actually been doing pretty good considering that, um... This video is so much longer than, than Zell's video, and yet we've roughly managed to have the amount of time. Yeah. It, it's... Yeah, that's it's, interesting. 
we're also at like least. carrying all the weight here. Zell Zell isn't here to have commentary that we comment upon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I do have another Bumblebee video that I do want to cover. Um, that I was recommended. So. Oh, the uh the oh. Zhaolong Media one. Yeah, Zhaolong Media. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That that one. I'm going. I'm planning on talking about. Um, on my own terms a little bit later. I f from what I remember, it's going to be a lot of the same things that we that um, that we saw with Zell's video, just with much less detail and substantially less pretentious, to be honest. Um, but there's one particular part of it that I re that I think is a really telling point in the video and i already talked to twilight about it. we can talk about it yeah. off stream but it's a very telling moment um interesting it'd be interesting to talk about yeah um kaiser kaiser and i have spent quite a few hours uh over the course of making bumblebee video and out making bumblebee video talking about the bumble stuff and all that kind of good stuff it's what led it's what led to these streams. Right. <laughs> Captain doesn't go down with the ship, the, the ship goes down with him. Yep. Fuck if we're the if we're the ship in this analogy, I fuck I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck says he's the captain? I'm the host. <laughs> alright, alright, here we go. I guess, I guess they're taking the Kaiser part of my name seriously. Uh literally, sorry. Do so many years of heat. I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're not one to back down from a challenge, Blake. But I am. I do it all the time. Do you have your stream back up? Honest, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I, oh. I, I just brought it back up. Okay. Dude, yeah. So I ran. When I realized my oldest partner had become a monster, I ran. Even my semblance. My old emphasis old. on oldest. As in, like, uncomfortably <laughs> older. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I have the ability to leave behind a shadow of myself. An empty copy that takes the hit while I run away. Yeah, so that's that's the meaningful... At least you two have something that drives you. I've just kind of always... What? Slow, you know? You know, you actually have... To, uh, God, you see, this is what makes it so hard, is that <laughs> they are literally talking in the opposite direction of their own characters, so I don't know whether or not they count this as bonding, because you're not learning jack shit about them. <laughs> it's sometimes they'll just... Yep. The writers will just, like, forget Brett all Conde development they've had, and instead go back to that back of the box of the first DVD that just calls them, like, a party girl and, like, yep. a sew away or whatever... And just revert back to that. And it's like, you, you guys, no! This is why you have to clean up your forward. notes. You have to clean up your notes so much. Yeah. It, it's like when... W in writing, I know that there's a lot of people who try and force the ideas that they have into a story, even when, as they're writing it, the, the story is developing differently than what they're intending it to go. So mm -hmm. they kind of just hackney these themes and motivations into the story even though that it doesn't make sense that's what this feels like whereas they have right. developed the story in a way that the initial motivations that they came up with when they were in the planning stages don't work anymore but they still want those things in there so they just sh** them in where it doesn't make sense this instead of developing impatience is the but yeah. remember instead it was developing them gradually <laughs> But it was planned from the beginning. <laughs> it was planned from the oh, beginning. That's fine. Yeah, it was planned from the beginning, guys. <laughs> Although, that's the problem. If it's planned from the beginning, but it doesn't should. develop I mean, the from are. there. Yeah. yeah, it was. Oh, maybe that's the problem. It, it really was job. planned from the beginning, but it was only just that initial plan, regardless of the development of the yeah. show. <laughs> I, I did say to Raymond that I think that Volume 9 would have been a lot better if it was Volume 4 instead of volume nine mm -hmm. yeah in a lot of ways probably yeah you could do that like if you mm, hmm, hmm, hmm. Like, yeah yeah that's it's, the it's status not, quo really that. early <laughs> ruby 
Yeah. And that's where you learn about all the gods. Hey, where's Ruby? Makes sense. And and that is where they were struggling with all of those issues what? that they had. Yeah. All right, Raymond. You got to redo all of fixing Ruby. No! You rework volume nine into volume four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're concerned over fixing Ruby, Ruby version two. Do you think she fell? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll do that with my fixing series, Raymond. Oh, you wow. got nothing to worry about. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. What is it? How could I be so stupid? Doctor Oblek, okay. what's wrong? Magic Glen. Yes, an expansion of Vale that was inevitably destroyed by creatures of Grim, previously home to thousands of people, working people, commuting oh to the God. city, the main city, developed. As to pause. Go go <laughs> back and forth between the two girls. They Even sure are standing next to each other. <laughs> they oh, sure no. are. Our Rangers. Yep. City evacuates into metro tunnels, and what do they find? The southeast quadrant of Vale is known for wild boars and deep caves. Duck, what are you saying? My dear, we're not just looking for an underground crime network. We're looking for an underground crime network. God, I love that joke network. so much. I missed it on my first. Yes, watch. it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's so good. Oh, I miss Joel. They've been working in caves. Me too. No, no. Was I wonder if they would have to recast him. Time, Who have. could you get? To recast Ublek, who could capture that no one, speed? There is no one. I think maybe Ed I don't from think. Bare Naked Ladies. What? Uh, what? <laughs> okay, I know it's I, an oddball, but one Bare Naked Ladies regularly works with really? Rooster Teeth. They do it a lot of their music videos. Um, and Ed is the guy that does like one week. Like you, you know, it's been one week since you've talked to me. That yeah, is. I know. I've, yeah. I've watched the Digimon movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. right, I forgot it's in that. <laughs> But there's a, there's a, there's a huge section of that that's just this rapid fire, and that's what Ed is really good at. He actually sings incredibly fast with a pretty good diction. He could actually maybe do a good Ublek. He also has a kind of higher higher end voice, so I could actually see maybe they get a guest star of of Ed from Bare Naked Ladies in there. He actually did play a character in Red vs. Blue. He played uh, C Captain Flowers. Yeah, Florida! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so an aggressive perimeter defense and unique transportation. The city developed in the Yeah, they're just saying there's this planet. The it's just planet. We must find it. Just planet. So, what happened with Joel? Exactly? Oh, he, they, they parted ways apparently on bad terms. I, I, I think the internal politics and him did not... As in, like, oh. personal politics got in the way of things, apparently. And I wasn't see. Welcome I see. Anymore. Yeah. I heard I that see. he wasn't like he wouldn't really do anything. Like he didn't have a job at the, so he would just show up, kind of mooch around, get money, not oh. really be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's always like an really interesting. It's also, Leon critiques. Also, Leon Critique says, I miss when Rooster Teeth was funny. Yeah, me too, dog. Me too. <laughs> Rooster Teeth was funny to you? Remember their shorts? They had some pretty good shorts. Well, <laughs> Remember Red vs. Blue? Yeah. Like the, the I haven't five. watched Red vs. Blue. I told you, oh, the only so... thing that I ever watched was Ruby and Genlock, and they're both bad. <laughs> well... Red vs. Blue also, season Leon one Critique through five. Said, uh, Joel might have said something about Trump. He thinks. I don't oh, know he definitely. He definitely. With I know he was a big Trump supporter, and that's what like I'm saying. Personal politics. <laughs> but I, I'm not. We're not going to dive, dive into that. I just know that they parted ways on bad terms, and I don't think there's any real hope for a reconnection. It's why he wasn't what? doing anything anyway. <laughs> he voices Caboose, and honestly, he was one of the few reasons to actually care about later seasons of Red vs. Blue. So, it, Damn. It, 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 he he was a, a star in that, even if he wasn't doing much. My dear, Tell. appears to be a ball. Oh, well, they were replacing a lot of their in-house talent with extremely expensive voice actors anyway, so what does it mean? Yeah. I was thinking about that recently. <laughs> like, they got Kaiji Dude, Tang to voice wait, wait. Ren's dad for me. one episode. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Like, it's dude, such a mismanagement were, like, again, of funds is... to get, like, really prominent like, voice actors. 
Yeah, the, okay, Kaiser Cut, this is another look into Ruby, <laughs> Kaiser Cut, okay? If it were me, here's my question, where are the abridgers at? Where are the abridgers at in this whole freaking thing? If I was running this shit, I would call up freaking TFS, I would call up I'm freaking pretty something sure they actually witty. do have cameras. I would call up little fucking... I'm I mean, sure they yeah, do have TFS cameos, do have but cameos. fuck that. But noise. no, you're right. You're right. Like, that's the thing. It's like, because of Ooh. how Rooster Teeth is positioned, yeah. is that they should have really yes. gone to the community more so than anything else. The problem with that, yes. I think like the actually whole point starts. Of Rooster Teeth was that they were. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think the, the problem starts with oh, probably go ahead. Go ahead. the casting of Vic Mignana as Crow. Yeah, they really, they really got starstruck, yeah, and they loved the, the idea of like, we we are real anime with our real anime voice actors, and it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still a web series. <laughs> as as much shit. as as much as Vic Mignogna added a lot to Ruby, I think that that was a really irresponsible choice to hire someone like that, and yeah. then uh, and then obviously they went with like Yuri Lowenthal. And whoever else that they had that was like mm -hmm. a big name voice actor or voice actress Cortana. is like what yeah, what you should what they should have yeah. done is to go after people that are new in the industry that maybe don't yes they aren't they aren't it, as expensive uh but yeah. they also need work in order to get, gain the skills and, and, and to get into it, the industry. I'm not saying they haven't yes. actually been good. At it, like, because they, they actually, I think, was it the, the Curious Cat, I believe, was a tuber. He wasn't a voice actor, mm -hmm. I don't think. No, um, it was Robbie Damon. Who right. is, who is he? Uh, I, I'm trying to think of who Robbie Damon is. Uh, um, he's, uh, a catchy in Persona 5. Oh, never mind then. I'm, I think that back. <laughs> uh, oh, Mero. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mero was voiced by Rice Pirate. I don't know his real name, but his YouTuber name was Rice Pirate. But I was going to say, like, the... That should yeah, have been, like, you get a lot of lower end voice actors in, and you already have, like, fine, you get Vic Mignogna, yes. you already have um, Jen Taylor playing uh, uh, from, you know, the yes. famous for Cortana. You already have her play, you had her since, ep you know, volume one playing Salem. Um, Which was a mistake. You have, what's his name is Ozpin. You yeah, Cam you have McCormick. What's, what's his name is Ozpin. You got three star voice actors. Yeah, Cam McCormick. You have three big names on your slot. Stick with that, and like I said, call up TF. I don't care. The only one that I will contest, the only one I will call contest up. is Yuri Lowenthal yeah. voicing Mercury because it's Yuri Lowenthal is not a mark of quality. <laughs> like, like I, I get it. He's a big name, but he's a big name because he's just everywhere. You, you, he does everything. It's honestly amazing that like it doesn't surprise me. Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal is in Ruby because yeah. Yuri Lowenthal is in everything. Yeah, Yuri, really. Yuri Lowenthal Dude, is ninety percent of the cast of the Metro series. All right, like <laughs> <laughs> that man voices every Russian possible. It's it's um so oh my God. and he he doesn't really do much that sounds it's all so that funny. different. Um, so that's. But yeah, there are so many people in the abridging uh, community. And abridging, abridged series were big at the time. Yes, I think Ruby that would have been... They, they went the, the opposite direction they should have. I think they should have done more community. Yeah. More community. More community. They should have... have you guys... Like, dude, they... Yeah. Have you watched... Like, uh, dude, freaking... Uh, Nawa King, Sid Snap, uh, Lil Karibo... Uh, freaking blazing azure crow something witty all of the all of these people imagine them being in this show well granted you know you would have to fix so many other problems but think of how much money they would save just by getting those people as opposed to the professionals mm -hmm. what were you saying critter i was gonna say have you seen zet overseer's ruby abridged series yeah i i know yes that. actually i love his stuff so I'm, good I'm a sub to him i love yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> don't watch bridge series. Oh, and uh, it got another debt shirt. Debt, debt, Dedrick's art. Oh. Uh, he's Ooh. got the ping. Let me double check on the tundra. Oh no! <laughs> you, oh? oh no! It's all, I, I feel so bad. What? It's so cursed. It's so cursed. Uh, Dedrick's, you're amazing. <laughs> yes.
So yeah. All right. I just skipped ahead because there's not really a Absolutely lot going on legend. between the two. And here we go. Uh, they run ahead because Yang tells them to. And they yep. get past Neo. There you go. That's that scene. Yep. Yeah, the there's, there's that scene. <laughs> and everyone ends up on the train. And that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, there we go. Uh, train, train's coming for the crash. Can we go purple, purple eyes? What In the fuck? The yeah, same we hide. purple eyes. Get purple eyes doing shit. Why not? Yeah, dude. Actually, purple eyes. What the fuck? Might be the best, the second best for Ublick. Either him or Grimjack. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't dude, read. I got Grim. <laughs> <laughs> God, I always remember seeing that shot of Weiss like leaning against the pillar and for like not this one but the other one Ruby was from Ruby's POV and just like the bolero having the red insert I thought it was like it's Weiss fucking bleeding what the fuck <laughs> there's like no blood in Ruby anymore no no it's so weird because yeah. we were like leading off to some like I think the most blood that I can think of was Maria losing her eyes yeah I do love how this the the, the King Tai G two breaks out and like a bunch of other Grim go flying. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool detail, but it's also kind of funny. Oh no! Uh, oh, the hard no. guy says, "Wait, Grimjack could have been the perfect Tyrion." Yes, yes. Well, they need to recast Tyrion because uh, Josh Greeley isn't coming back. Yeah. No. Right. That is true. <laughs> Well, I mean, the question is how Grim many Jack people might be a good how many choice. people in like at, at this point they've burned how many bridges? People yeah, are how many people people yes. don't want to work for Rooster Teeth anymore. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Wait, Purple Eyes, what the fuck retired? Well What? Yeah, he oh. did. He retired like years ago. That's why he hasn't made any new videos. I didn't no. know that. No. When, he's they, just when did he so... announce it on his channel? Where did he announce that? <laughs> I might not have been on Twitter uh, back then. I'm not even sure if he announced it. He, it just kind of happened. I'll have to rewatch sure One Punch really... Stan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I forgot how ugly this fight scene is. It's, uh, I hated this episode for the longest time because of how ugly it is. I still hate this episode. Yeah, you did. Time. I remember your video. <laughs> you, you just have like seven hours a day where you this episode <laughs> oh look look they're looking at each other oh uh, more oh. accurately blake is looking at yang and yang is looking at blake's boobs so why is yang super tall i get they're trying to do a perspective thing but it just uh. not work oh my god look how much they love each other there's animated oh. as the victory screen yeah. from any monster hunter hunt completed <laughs> <laughs> They're so in love. That's, I, I, I take that back, actually. That's an well, insult to Monster Hunter. We did it. So this is love. Do, 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 do. We did it. We oh, look how blown out they are again. Yeah. They saw her. Weiss looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Weiss is literally just glowing. Volume 2 is weird because it's a lot of the team interacting all as a team. Not a lot of individual yeah. moments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which is kind right. of fine, but like, I don't know, I Ruby and Weiss still get their little moments. Given what happens, yeah, given how how they structure things later, it's just, oof. That's a yeah. big oof. Although I hate, I hate this scene. Oh, uh, well, not every story has it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the, the, oh, it, it goes into this larger issue that I have with how Ruby does its story and kind of into its fairy tales is that, yeah, everything is built around the fairy tales, but then they just shit, they use Ruby to shit all over fairy tales. Mm -hmm. I hate it. Also, I just, I hate it because like fairy tales don't, not all, uh, not all stories have a happy ending like fairy tales. Most fairy tales don't have a happy ending. <laughs> There's the whole yeah. joke about German <laughs> fairy Actually, tales where it's like, on the children because they did not eat the porridge, like a Strunkenschwag came out and crushed their balls and then they died. The end. <laughs> well, to to be fair, that is the German versions of them, which aren't usually like 
Well, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily the. I there there are regional variants. Just usually the French versions actually get written down, and then the German versions are that the Grimm brothers picked up. So they're the ones that get. But the Grimm point stands that like there's a lot of popular fairy tales in the versions yep. being German that end with horrible, horrible mutilation. Yep. Because a lot of them, the whole point, like the lesson was They're cautionary listen to tales. your parents or you'll be eaten in the woods. <laughs> yep. <So> yeah. <laughs> what now? A lot of it was propaganda that was invented by the Grimm brothers because they weren't in the original story. Mm. I don't like the Grimm brothers. I'm going to sleep forever. Yep. Uh, going to sleep forever. Yep. There we go. Uh, you mean you're going to sleep with Blake forever, right? That's what you meant? Okay, good. <laughs> good. Exactly. I love the Obvious whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's why you keep that blanket open. And then, right. yeah, there we go. We did it! Holy shit! Oh and God. then compare! <laughs> compare! We have 15 minutes left for Volume 3. We're not doing that today. We're do we'll do that no. next stream. Oh, Probably, yeah. <laughs> if we can manage it, it would be like same time next week, hopefully. Sure. If that's doable mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah, sure. All right, we'll, we'll make sure double check our schedules and stuff. Yeah, yep. <laughs> we'll make plans. Hold on. Let me. Yeah, oh my I'm god. Double check. Oh, <laughs> we've been going for almost six hours. I knew this would happen. <laughs> I knew this would happen. We all knew after this would happen. I, after I didn't join last time, and then you guys were like, join us this time. And I looked at the five hour stream you finished, and I was like, okay, I'll get a Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You need two Gatorades <laughs> yeah. <for> next week. <laughs> it has been wild going through this. Okay, so well, let's draw some conclusions, Sophia. We're up to volume two. What is the state of Yang and Blake's relationship? They sure do. They sure do and exist. <laughs> they are friends. Yeah. But I wouldn't call them any closer they... with each other than they are with the others in the team. You know. I would call all four girls y unilaterally friendship. <laughs> yeah, yes, I I would put that. I you know, actually no, I I debate that a little bit. I I still think that Ruby and Weiss get these little tiny scenes. Even that we're, as I we're knew, watching, I knew. It was I, know, be I know. I know. Look, I will put my fucking dollar in the jar. But let me hear me out here. Even though we're keeping an eye oh purely on God. Blake and Yang. Notice how many times Weiss and Ruby have had little moments on top of the train, smiling at each other before Weiss does the ice wall thing. Like for goggles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now breathe no, in the I, copium. I'm not, I'm not even arguing. I'm not even arguing as a ship. I'm arguing purely as friends. Purely as friends. They've had more meaningful, I closer may. interaction than Blake and Yang have. I think a lot of it was volume one. A lot of volume two was plot and exposition. Yes. Ironically. Which, which does not which, do any of these French any favors. To mm -hmm. It doesn't. <laughs> no. Oh, it's just... So, they're, so yeah, they are... We can comfortably is, say is they that. are friends. They're probably in like... I, I'm trying to think of like a good video game equivalent to this. I, I guess Sims equivalent of friends. Or or yeah. for Critter Critter and our, my example, uh their heart meter would probably be in the purple or blue. Yeah, like three out of the ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I guess persona wise, they would be like I don't know. Yeah, that's like, a that's a measure that I can uh, they they'd probably be a two or three. Yeah, no, I think they'd be a two yeah, or three. They, they're they're almost yeah, to the three. they'll die for three. you level, but they're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And like that's yeah. that's in the middle of combat. That's not like you know a, that. Sure. Yeah. That was another thing. A lot of their interactions in Volume Two is just them in combat, where it's like, of course they're gonna back up yeah. their teammates. <laughs> but they don't yeah. even but here's the thing for most of the combat they don't even back up each other in any significant way which mm -hmm. always weirds me out people say that like oh blake and yang uh back each other up during battle countless times and i'm like they did this like 
two fucking times, dog. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> like, I can't... I, I, I it's ha it, it makes it very hard. This is why them getting back in sync with each other in volume six in the opening fight always fucking... Annoyed um, you? What was it? Yeah. Bothered the shit out of me? Yes. It bothered <laughs> the absolute shit out of me because they didn't... Like, we... Their relationship was fine, I guess, prior to that. But number one, um, there's all the shit that happened after Volume 3 and everything. And number two, if they're just getting back in the swing of things to how they were before, there's nothing... Like, we barely see them in that close of sync with each other consistently, mm -hmm. you know? Like, like I'm not like, talking about that th they should have as many episodes per season as, like, Teen Titans or something. But what I am saying is, they gotta establish some of this shit if you want it to be meaningful. Especially because, because we're going through, because Volume 6 hits and obviously their relationship takes a big step in during Volume 6. Oh, but yeah. we know, like, looking at this timestamp, we know Volumes 3, 4, and 5 is basically nothing. So the majority of their foundation for their relationship is the crumbs we've been talking about for volumes one and two all yep. day and we yes. dive into volume six with them being head over heels for each other <laughs> right uh oscar says hello everyone i am back i have a problem with the candle scene and how people interpret the scene as romantic also no the wink does not make sense pete part one and then number part two the reason is that yang is a jokester she makes jokes look it, mm -hmm. Oscar buddy, <laughs> she's not going to date you. <laughs> she hasn't oh called God. you back for a reason. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, the 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 interpretation that 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 scene couldn't be romantic is, I think, wrong. Mm -hmm. That scene could have easily been romantic. The problem is that that scene is a mess. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like that's yeah. that's really the In problem that underlies this. You could have these things, but like the messages you're sending all over the place are just all they're all over the place. I don't know what. Yeah, it's it's a problematic no, scene. Right. <laughs> like I always thought that scene was okay, kind of decent. Like I even say this in my video, and even said this during the last stream and everything. But looking at the moment to moment of that scene itself. Really, it's really kind of a mess and kind of a weird and shady foundation for Blake and Yang to have a close relationship from that point on. Mm -hmm. And of course, going into what I said about the teamwork, number one rival in chat, or as I like to call him, number one lawyer, um, he, he hits the nail on the head. It's a show about teamwork without teamwork in it. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, so far we are unimpressed from from what we have seen of Bumblebee in our little review here. Our uh, our, ho our, homo our homophobia levels have only increased since. This time. Yes. <laughs> in fact, scenes that I thought had been okay are now surely less okay. Also, I realize my mic has probably been blowing up this entire time. I'm bad. Oh. Oh no. And uh, also, uh. On on that the homophobia joke, I I have lost my my card, my half. I have lost the piece of my half card because I am Schrodinger. I what I call Schrodinger's LGBT. <laughs> you, you cut out Schrodinger's what? Schrodinger's LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> because depending depending on who you ask, I both am and am not part the lgbt <laughs> if you don't like blake and yang you're homophobic it's like that's a weird measure you, but you, okay girl. yeah you critter i got some things to tell you i, got I, some I stories, want man. i dare people to call me, like, like people will call me homophobic but like i dare people do you saw me fucking rant on about white rose during this we yeah. have a fucking jar for me to put money in when i do like what, <laughs> what do you people want from me you want your ship no this no. is a I, smoke screen <laughs> This is you are <laughs> gaslighting us into thinking that you're in support of the LGBT by saying all this. This is a uh, massive ruse. Uh, if it's if it's if it's somebody that I don't like talking about a ship, then it's just a fetish. But if I talk about the ship in the exact yep. same way, then it is LGBT rep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
homophobia levels rising. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is homophobic. Then this is super homophobic. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, I want to kind of wind down here. So how about you all uh, basically say where people can find you, that sort of thing. I guess we'll go uh, at least on my screen from top left to to right to bottom. So basically Critter, then Twilight, then Kaiser. So make sure. your pitches. Oh, me first? Yes. Oh, I'm on YouTube. I'm the Judgmental Critter. Uh, I just recently uploaded a video about Bumblebee, if you want more of that. I'm working on a very long script that's already 19 oh. pages long, talking about uh, everyone's fairy tale inspirations. Look forward to that. Uh, that's what I'm- that's me! I also- I'm gonna release an announcement for something fun tomorrow. I- it's gonna be an animation- like an AMV challenge! It's gonna be exciting, so... That's what I got going on. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm Twilight Guardian. I am a, a small YouTuber, uh, as well. I- I have my one big Digimon deep dive video. Uh, you should go watch that, especially if you have a, a passing interest or curiosity in Digimon. I haven't gotten to the first season of the anime yet, and the video is almost three hours long, so you can tell how much of it, how much of in depth I go with it. Other than that, I have um, animation videos, and I'm going to be releasing a rant about a book that I read last last month. Uh, it's going to be great. It's really wild it, <laughs> it it's gonna be a fun time that's that's all that i have i'm i don't have much <laughs> kaiser hi there my name is kaiser shonen i shit on bumblebee so y'all don't have to but for real though um yeah kaiser shonen's the name that i'm i have uh my own channel on youtube uh, if you go on my about page, there are links to my Twitter, my Annie list account, and also the link to Kofi in case you want to uh, support me financially. It's no big deal if you don't. Um, I have many, many videos talking about Ruby. Um, the uh, Bumblebee Too Little Too Late analysis retrospective uh, has hit 43k views as of this, um, as of this time, and it's still going strong. Uh, let's see, I, I have a new video planned to go up tomorrow, um, talking about a subject relating to Free Run Beyond Journey's End, so I'm talking about a much more popular show, uh, than what I usually do, um, so I hope y'all stay tuned for that, it's gonna be coming up at 9am tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. I also have me and my friends' uh, podcast, the New Types podcast, um, where we mainly just shoot the shit about whatever three or so anime uh, that each of us have experienced, and we just talk about it and make so many dick jokes. So, so <laughs> many dick jokes. So if that's your dealio, go jump in on there. The links to it is on the channel, as well as a playlist filled with all of the episodes in case you want to catch up with them. And just to say, this coming, th this past year has been great. Uh, I just hit 1.6K uh, subs this year. Thank you to everyone who has supported me this year. It has been a blast. And I got a bunch of new cool stuff coming up next year. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much. And uh, mm -hmm. to anyone that came from any of these three's channels, uh, I am Celtic Phoenix. I do the Fixing Ruby series. And that's recently wrapped up remastering volume one. So we're kind of in a lull period. I plan to do a lot more videos. I have short stories on the, the, the spoke to release. Uh, I have a lot basically planned for this coming year, and I feel like I'm going to be overwhelmed trying to get it all done. Uh, it's just, <laughs> it's not going to appear like, I, it, it's going to be a lot getting done in the background, and then like kind of all at once a lot's going to come out. So uh, keep an eye out. And yeah, we'll try, we'll see where our schedules go. We're going to try and aim for the same time next week, and hopefully we can get this stream going again. Uh, with less yeah. technical difficulties this time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you now, all so much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Oscar. it was it was much better than it was last time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oscar, BB has infinite shocking and horrific. I don't see it romantic, but it actually toxic, even abusive. Also, I disagree with making it 
as well romantic because it does not work because like you said um so. I'm just going to politely <laughs> nod my head and uh, say thank you everyone for joining us. It has been a fun time. I, I hope you all had a blast Best base, and we'll build. catch you all on the flip side. Bye. Bye-bye.